endurance racing. Almost 70 cars entered the largest field ever. With Shane Van Gisbergen isolating, the reigning champions have drafted in Nick Perkat to help them defend the crown. Will Davison adds more punch to the already short-priced entry of Beric Linton and Tim Lay. Grant Denyer will dance on the pedals again. Legends like John Bow lured back by an insatiable love of Bathurst. And emerging stars like Porsche Carrera Cup titleist Cameron Hill just can't get enough of the place. There's lots of names you'll be familiar with from racing in the Tasman region. Tim Slade, Tony Delberto, and TCR champion Will Brown are all on double duty at the mountain. Kiwi firebrand Madeline Stewart is here, and so is Dick Johnson Racing's Anton Di Pasquale. Speaking of the name Johnson, Dick's grandson Jet is a starter, while Nash Morris, Paul's son, is another keeping that generational connection to this special place. And in line with the family appeal of this event, the Barguanas and the Elleries a proof of that adage, race together, stay together. Around 170 drivers are here to conquer the mountain. What a crew to spend your Easter weekend with. Thank you, Rusty. Yeah, it's incredible. Molly uh, Taylor's join me. They're still coming. They're still <laughs> leaving pit lane here. It shows you how big the field is, and that's going to be one of the key components. So we've spoken about the different brands and all that kind of stuff, but traffic here can be an absolute nightmare. So it's a long race. It's six hours, probably around 130 laps, but you've got to make sure that you stay out of trouble. Normally around Mount Panorama, you say that about the circuit itself, but we're talking about traffic trouble. Oh, completely. I mean, it's busy with 20 or 30 cars. Double that is what we've got in the differential in the the speeds and the specifications of the car and it's a long uh, it's a long race and i mean everybody's we've been building up to this so long and um everyone's so raring to go and then you put in that sort of excitement and buzz and everyone wanted to come out of the gates and then you've got to kind of hold that back a bit because you've still got six hours and the most important thing is as you say get those few first laps in cleanly and set yourself up for a good race it's funny isn't it we've been here since the fog was around early this morning and we had to delay the warm-up to make sure that it was clean running yet it came down to the last couple of minutes before uh, the pit lane was open and it was a mad scramble across every garage from the most professional drivers all the way down to those that are just here having a bit of fun with their mates it was a mad scramble to make sure that everything's right and that's what mount panorama does to you and make sure that you've got to be in the right frame of mind to jump in any car around here. It doesn't even matter if you're going around here uh, during the week at 60 k's an hour. This place is frightening. So, what have we got car-wise? Well, let's do a bit of a car comparison with Stubbsy. Well, this year we had a record-breaking 84 entries for the 70 available grid spots for the six hour. We've got 15 different manufacturers with 33 different models, and they range from $150,000 BMWs to $20,000 Suzuki Swifts. Cars are battling for glory across eight different classes and they're defined by their performance level and also their price. At the bottom of the field is Class E, the compact cars, where the Suzuki Swifts will be up against the Mazda 3s. The next step up the ladder is the Class D production cars. That's the domain of the ever-popular Toyota 86s, the Mini Cooper S and the Honda Civic Type R. Class C is for the performance sports cars. Think Renault Megane, think Volkswagen Golfs and Mazda RX-8s. Class B is the high performance cars. This is the domain of the SS Commodores. Class A is extreme performance and is also divided into turbos and non-turbos. This is where the pros enter the game. A2 is home to the Mustangs, HSV Commodores, and for the first time, a Lexus RCF. Class X, the top of the tree, the ultimate performance machines. These are dominated by the BMWs, the M3 and the M4. Last year it was Shane Van Gisbergen who took the class honours and the outright honours in this car. But remember, this is the six hour. It's not just the ultimate prize. There are plenty of races within a race. It gives you a really good idea of what we're dealing with over the course of the next six or so hours. So it is approaching 25 minutes after 11 o'clock local time. The race start is at 11.45 this morning. So 
We've got these 60 plus cars now gone out and they will start to grid up here. They will sit here in a nervous wait before we get rolling at 11.45. So about 20 minutes to think about what's ahead, to make sure that everything has been ticked off, to get that strategy sorted, and then we will get ready for a rolling start. Chris Stubbs. Thanks, Matt White. That's not me in the Easter Bunny suit, but the Easter Bunny has made an appearance on the grid. I'm a little bit further away, and I've got Anton Di Pasquale with me, who's just one of our big-name supercar stars taking part in this year's Six Hour. You've been here and done it before, but how's it coming together this weekend for you and the team? Yeah, good, mate. Um, we're off the second row, so we're in a good spot. So just chilling out before the race. Um, looking forward to, to good racing. Anytime you're at Bathurst, it's a good day. So, uh, so far, so good. You're in the BMW. They're all at the front of the field. Tell us about your teammates and how the cars come together this weekend. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, the other boys have done an awesome job. I'm just going to him for the start. Um, he's looking forward to it. He's been going really well. So, yeah, we're all working together well first time as a team together. So the boys done an awesome job on the car. Um, everything's going to good. It's an awesome team and we're having heaps of fun. Can we expect to see you do a double stint at the end? That's the standard procedure for our pro drivers. Oh, is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, that's probably the most known thing that's going to happen here. So I'm not in my race suit yet, so don't expect me in the first couple, and then I'll probably appear a bit more later in the race. Mate, go well. Yeah, cheers, thanks. Sitting next to Anton is one of our family members. There's a lot of them going on here this weekend. Tristan Ellery from the Ellery Racing Team. Steve's part of the team as well, and Dalton. Yeah. Tristan, for you, this is a, an amazing opportunity, not just to race with the family, but to race at Bathurst as well, yeah. isn't it? It sure is. Um, to be able to race with Dad and Dalton is a you know bucket list thing, dream come true. So to be here at Bathurst uh, in front of everyone and to be able to do this in these awesome race cars is awesome. So credit to Bruce Linton BMW for having these cars built and uh, for having them go so quick. Shout out to everyone at home. Happy birthday, Charles, for yesterday. And I uh, hope everyone enjoys the race. Well, your old man, he's been on the podium three times before in the Bathurst 1000. This car, as you said, it's a very well-prepared machine. You're not just here making up the numbers. You can achieve something today, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're in with a good shot this weekend. Um, you know, we, we never go racing to come second, so uh, we take pride in that. But uh, this uh, this weekend, we feel like we've got a real good chance. Um, you know, there's a few real good guys on the grid, but uh, yeah, we like our chances. Dalton did a really great lap time yesterday, and we're pretty proud of him to uh, put it on P4, so... We're, we're thereabouts, and uh, it's going to be a great race between some of these uh, Goliaths. We feel like a little bit of a David this weekend, but uh, I look forward to taking it to him. Go well, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a good race, hey? <laughs> I've managed to find Will Davison and Jet Johnson having a little bit of a powwow before the race. Was Will giving you a few tips? Yeah, just told me drive fast, keep it off the walls, keep in front of them. <laughs> no, nah, but um, look, I'm excited. It's going to be a good day. And uh, you've had a little bit of trouble with Gearbox Gremlins in uh, yesterday's race. How was today for you in the Trans Am? Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, I don't think the TA2 could just keep up with me. I'm just, you know, <laughs> step ahead of it. But, you know, we got that sorted last night. The boys did an awesome job with it. Um, got it sorted, went forward. So, car's clean, ready for the bend next weekend. How different is it jumping into a production car coming out of that big uh, yeah. big muscle car into, into a little bit more nimble production car? Yeah, it's completely different. You can't drive a production car like a proper race car. You know, you've got to be real careful with them, make sure they last. So I think that's going to be the hardest thing for me today is just trying to control myself enough to make it last the whole race. Well, best of luck. And, and speaking of driving production cars, I watched some of your onboard yesterday, Will, and <laughs> I mean, it looked exciting. It's, um, you know, sometimes you watch onboard and it, it looks slower than it feels, but that looked as fast as it probably felt a bit sketchy. How was it? Yeah, pretty much doing a 226 felt faster than a 203 in the supercar, to be honest. So, um, yeah, a bit of, bit of, I need a bit more rally practice, I think. It sort of felt like uh, felt like that the way it was moving around. But it is good fun. Like, it's it's still the same same sort of um, art you want to master. So um, we had a long race today. And, uh, no, it's, it's great to be here. Very different vibe, very different event. Um, and uh, yeah, we're off a pretty good spot. So just having a little catch up with Jet. <laughs> my first, uh, my first 1000. I was with Stevie J, and I think you were born that year, Jet. So like pretty you. cool. He's here with me now. <laughs> it must be a pretty special moment because we saw you here last year on the grid, just watching it. And was that, you know, the the family vibe and and getting together with with old and new friends to go racing? Is that what you love about the Bathurst Six Hour? 
Well, this is my first one. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, just chatting to Dick and Jill before as well. And, you know, um, you know, going back back through the 80s and 90s, I mean, this production car racing was always a big part of motorsport. So we all get very serious in supercars and perfectly built, you know, race cars. And this is different. There's a lot of compromise, huge variation in cars and, and drivers. And I think it's, yeah, it's really healthy. And I'm, it's, it's cool that I'm here. I'm having to recalibrate my brain a little bit. Um, and this race is going to be insane. It's going to be a new experience for me. And I think patience is the word today. <laughs> well, Beric and Tim have won here before, so uh, you, you got a bit of pressure. Oh yeah, exactly. No, no I'm just I'm just a student here, learning off the gurus. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll all try and do our part, and hopefully, the number 23 M3 is there at the uh, end of the race when it counts. Well, best of luck, guys. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Cheers. Well, Beric and Tim have won before, but so have Rob and Shane. Shane Smolin, of course, last year's champions. The honour of the number one car. That's a pretty nice feeling to be back, right? Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple of, uh, well, one, one driver change, um, yeah. which uh, obviously Shane was crook last week, um, but he's still been a, a great, great help from the sidelines and uh, just wonderful to be back in a car with Nick after, uh, after a few seasons uh, in Carrera Cup and, of course, uh, with Rob. So, look, we're, we're in P6. We're, we're up there. We were down a little bit in power yesterday, but, uh, but uh, we, we sort of reset the tune last night and we seem to be good in the warm-up. So we, we, we found what we thought we'd lost. So... Who knows? We'll see where we are in the last hour. From Shane Smollin, we'll bounce along to Rob Rubis. Rob, you guys had the honour this week of unveiling your plaque uh, just down the road here at the National Motor Racing Museum at the Winner's Walk. That must have been a nice moment. Oh, a very special moment, incredible moment in, in terms of all the years of motor racing and so forth I've done in, in any sporting uh, category. That is an incredible thing to get some sort of recognition like that. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Bugger your time in the car so far this weekend, how have you found it? Oh, fantastic. I think Shane coined it. Last, we had a little few issues, which I think Nick certainly discussed covered it all a little bit down horsepower this morning the car felt great we're at the pointy end of the field i think it's it's a long day so i think it'll be very good go well thank you very much and nick Perkat, nick getting the call up to jump into the six hour when did you find out how much notice did you have and what your initial reactions were um was it tuesday or wednesday i'm not sure <laughs> basically um yeah shane rang me and gave me the lowdown i said I'll, I'll ring you back in an hour i'm just in the middle of a debrief at at the supercar team and then by then the Speed Cafe had announced it and he backed me into a corner and here I am. And now I've just spent the weekend getting bloody text messages from SVG telling me to go faster. No, it's, it's, a, it's a great event. It's great to be driving with Rob and Shane. And um, yeah, like they touched on, we found our little niggling issues and we're catching helmets. I'm pumped to you know, get into the race and, and, and see if we can defend this title for them because it's, um, it's very special to have you know, your own plaque at Bathurst as a race winner and uh, it'd be cool to get him another one and that would be you know, gods of Bathurst. We'll park the car in the museum and um, off we go. Well, you've done it before. You are a Bathurst 1000 winner. This is a, it's a very different event, isn't it? But it's got an amazing feel to it. It's more a motorsport community feel, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. It's um, you know, it's nice and low key, which is how it should be for this this event and the you know what everyone's doing with the you know, production car style of racing. And it's just great. Like, we've got fans here on the grid, like any other race meeting that I would go to. And um, the best thing is, you know, we have four cars in our team, and it's it's just fun. We're all just sharing information, data, whatever you know you come across. Everyone. You know, informs everyone else, and we're just enjoying it. And it's um, it's nice to you know go racing with two guys here. They're very passionate about motorsport, and um, they drag me in, and I'm um, loving every minute. Well, to Nick and to Rob and to Shane, all the very best. No, thanks. thanks very much. Thank you. Jada and Ojeda, you're no uh, stranger to Bathurst, but since six hour last year, you've had a little bit of an upgrade. Still a BMW, but a bit more grunt. Yeah, my first uh, Bathurst six hour was with Simon in a 135M, and obviously now we've upgraded to an M4, so it's a fair bit more power, and it's definitely interesting on these MRF tyres with these big, heavy cars. Um, it's a lot of fun wheeling these cars around here, so I'm looking forward to six hours today. And you've wheeled Super 2 cars around here as well. Tell us, for, for this year, how's your year looking? Yeah, good. Uh, we're still working on our pro program in the supercars world, so hopefully not too far away from penciling all that together and finding myself on the grid somewhere. All right, best of luck. And we saw uh, the Easter money there looking into your, uh, your steering wheel, so we'll go, we'll go and uh, just check that he's, um, he's behaving himself. Best of luck. Thank you. Hello, Easter Bunny. Do you have a voice? Still not getting much out of him. Where, where, do, is there any Easter eggs, though? He ate them all. Oh, well, <laughs> where's your Easter spirit? <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to get much more goss out of the Easter Bunny today. <laughs> I don't know if this guy's the Easter Bunny. I reckon he might be Superman. Tim Slade has just finished the TCR race. I think you jumped into the phone box where you didn't get changed. You had a little refresher. Now you've bolted out to pair up with Brad Carr here on the front row of the grid in the BMW. So first to you, how have you managed this juggle? 
been a struggle. <laughs> and uh, the TCR pits are down one end of pit lane and uh, and we're pitted with this thing at the other end of pit lane. So I've done plenty of laps up and back. And after qualifying yesterday, I literally got to the park from A area, put the car in neutral, parked it up against a curb, <laughs> up a hill, left the door open and, and then uh, ran down to the, the TCR pits. Well, they, they were literally out on the grid. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, been a hectic weekend, but, um, yeah, I've been loving my time in the in the M3 with Brad. And, um, yeah, it's ran faultlessly, so hopefully it stays that way. It's one thing to get that muscle memory working, isn't it, and starting to change your mindset as well. You've had a little bit of what? You've had a, a muesli bar, a bit of a power rage. You've got a banana. You've, you're ready to go. So physically and mentally, you're feeling cool? Yeah, yeah, all good. I mean, yeah, yeah. If I wasn't doing TCR, this just this would have been pretty cruisy. But um, yeah, I guess doing both and the TCR car is quite warm inside, so you you sweat a lot. So yeah, you just need to make sure that you uh, keep replenished, keep the fluids up and and, and the energy up, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be right for the day. Now your partner in crime here, Brad. Don't you go away because you were suiting up. You didn't know if this bloke was going to make it or not. So was it always the idea that Tim starts the race? Although ten minutes ago you were thinking you might start. Yeah, it was looking a bit iffy there, but I knew he was running around somewhere looking for a muesli bar and at least. He um, didn't leave the car parked on the side of the road this time, so yeah, we um, got around here and he was he was here in time. So come on, were you getting nervous? Oh, I left the helmet on just in case. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all good. No, looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, plan for today. So tell us how a six-hour race from from your perspective unfolds. About what you want to see, how you deal with the traffic. I mean, you, you guys obviously got a front row start here. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess my stint usually involves a lot of traffic. Um, I think we looked at the stats last year and we did a similar amount of time in the car and I think Tim passed 42 cars and I passed 126 or something crazy. So, yeah, it's usually pretty busy out there and just keep the car straight and, and try and get as, as consistent laps as you can in the traffic and, you know, safety cars, it's all happening in a six hour. So, yeah, just try and keep it keep it clean. All right, you can relax for the start because he's here. Oh, he's gone. He's vanished already. So he's going to get yeah, he's going to get his helmet on or do something like that. Good on you, Brad. All the very best. Yeah, Let's uh, head up to the commentary box crazy thanks Matty what a great atmosphere it looks like down there on the starting grid it is absolutely chock-a-block full of people including the Easter Bunny and sorry to Molly for being denied the uh, <laughs> pre-race chocolates there Matt Nolte is been alongside looking forward to that all day I know that was the whole reason <laughs> she got out of bed this morning uh, Nolte's alongside me we're really looking forward to this race it is one of the highlights of the calendar and it's become an endurance staple to get to this point there was a two-part qualifying session yesterday afternoon, and like all qualifying sessions at Mount Panorama, it had everything going on in a very short space of time. Had such a good buzz, didn't it, when the cars rolled out late in the afternoon. Didn't get off to a great start for the HSV car. Lucky this happened on the way back towards the pits anyway. The number 15 car would spend some time in pit lane, but then we start to see the lap times tumble. Remember, this was the bottom 50% that came out. We saw some great times across the categories. So the bottom half of the field set class C, D and E and then the big bangers came out to set the front row of the grid and gee, it was fast. Big moment for the Sharon Rentals car, one of the former winners in this race. Uh, had a crash at the top of the mountain, that was the go-karts go BMW just getting past our uh, class B pole sitting Commodore. Now the big story was young Tom Sargent, brilliant lap, second fastest ever in the history of Bathurst six-hour racing at Mount Panorama, but unfortunately there was uh, a ride height infringement with that car and they were excluded from the results. So it means that car 40, the BMW M4, was able to roll across the line thanks to the efforts of David Russell and therefore they will start on pole position, Molly Taylor. Cameron Creek, after the, the fire in the first practice sessions, a good turnaround for you guys? Yeah, no, so far so good. A little bit of a crazy start there on Friday with the fire, but the guys at DA Campbell Transport have uh, done a great job to get it all tuned up. Hopefully we stay out of trouble today and have a good one. And you're happy with how everything's going with the, with the car for the six hours? Yeah, as I said, a few little issues on Friday, but yesterday the car was pretty good. Um, had a few little issues with the front end quality, but I think we've sorted it for now. And um, as I said, big, big race. Hopefully stay out of trouble. That's the point. Good luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. We're just trying to grab Dean Campbell, who's driving with Cameron. What were the, uh, well, you probably haven't had your final talk yet, but what, what are you going to tell him? I'm not going to tell him anything. He's the man for the job. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> and how are, you, how are you enjoying sharing, uh, you know, obviously a good friendship with, with Cameron? You're yep. both good steer as well. So how important is that that good relationship when you're going into something as yeah. intense and long as this? That's right. We have a great, you know, bond together. So and to be honest, he teaches me a lot of things. So I'm taking his lead, to be honest. And strategy for this race? Uh, look, we don't really we just run it with it. We've got a bit of a plan, but who knows? You know, safety cars and, you know, accidents. We don't know. We just have to take it as it comes. So. Oh, best of luck. Thank you.
All right, we'll walk over because next to us is also the Mustang of Tony Quinn and Grant Denny, who had uh, a few problems in the uh, the warm up. So we'll just we'll just get an update on that. Hey, Grant, you're back back in the driver's seat now after uh, yeah missing out after having those issues this morning. Are we all good? Yeah, I think we are now. Yeah, we just uh, broke the, um, the the power lead off the battery terminal, which is a random one. A uh, good that's what a warm up's for to get all that stuff out of the way. So. This thing's been a bit of a handful all weekend, but I think we've sort of tuned it up now and we, we sorted some ABS issues, some power issues and some handling issues, all the issues. <laughs> so fingers crossed she's sweet to go. You're digging the whole list. You were saying that you've done some upgrades to this car, but it wasn't showing in its performance. Do you think you've now got on top of that and you're now going to make some steps forward? Yeah, it's been uh, hard to adapt to the upgrades. It just sort of made the car quite difficult to handle and we've had some power issues. But I think I think we're all right. I think we're in the window now. So it'll be just a matter of just being patient and just picking off a car here, there and wherever you can and just trying to survive. We didn't get to finish this one last year and that's, you know, that's such a special feeling to cross that, that finish line, get the checker at Mount Panorama. That's a special day. So I'd like to do that for Tony. He's been a great supporter of my career for these many years and it's been fun laughing in the garage with him all day. Well, good luck. We'll see you at the finish. Catch you then. I'm with George Gambino, CEO of our naming rights partner of this event in High Tech Oils. This is the biggest week of the year for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, it's very busy for us this time of year, so it's hard to uh, get here, but we're here. You must be super pleased and proud of the roll-up for this year's event, the amount of cars, the energy around it. It's growing year on year, George. Yeah, it's since 2016 when we started this, it's grown a lot, so we're really impressed with what's going on at the moment. We're thrilled to have you back with us. We've got to go and chat with some drivers. Enjoy today's race, and thank you very much for your ongoing support. Thank you, and good luck to everybody today. Great stuff. There he is, George Gambino. Thank you. We'll wander over here because one of the stalwarts of Australian motor racing, Wayne Russell, is going to start this car. This is a little bit of a flashback. Are you, are you OK? You are a bit emotional when you got in the car on Friday, I think, weren't you? Still am. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You've been nursing a couple of injuries too. Just just give us the, the state of those, and is the, the key here to get your stint done and then let the let the young fellas take over? Yeah, pretty much. I, I did a, a hamstring tear on... Tuesday last week, which was really stunned, but anyway, and I got uh, old age arthritis in my hand, so, but we're good, we're good to go. I mean, uh, this is another great race, isn't it? Most importantly, enjoy it. Uh, with my boys, it's all good. There you go, we're getting set to uh, to go to Chris Dubbs here. Looks like Jaden Ojeda jumping into the car, he'll share with Simon Hodges too. Just before we jump in and go, a man chasing a slice of history. He's won a 12 hour, he's won a Bathurst 1000 a couple of times. He is, of course, John Bow. Can you add a six hour to the collection today? Well, I don't know. I don't think so, mate, because we're in a class car. But it's uh, very nice to see you, Stubbs. You look very handsome in that suit. <laughs> JB, thank you. Uh, 12 months ago when we were here, you were battling. Physically, you were battling. We know the, the battles that you had with cancer. Yeah. Tw 12 months later, how are you? Everyone wants to know how you're going. No, I'm good, mate. I, I have a test uh, regularly. And last test, which was only a few weeks ago, I was doing fine. So last year I raced the Commodore and it broke down, so I thought I'd give a Falcon a go. <laughs> That's the thing. No one liked you in that car last year, but you're back in the right badge. It's yeah, a good no, look. It's good. It's love, actually a lovely car. It's the last of the Aussie muscle cars, so it's really nice. It's just not a BMW Peter, you know? Yeah. JB, we love seeing you. Go well today. Enjoy it. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Bye. There are going to be some epic class battles today, and especially among the Mitsubishi Evos. And with Tyler Mecklen, who raced with Daryl Beattie at the mountain here some years ago, my good mate, you're looking forward just to spending your Easter Sunday back here, aren't you? Yeah, 100%, mate. Jeez, you've got a good memory. Yeah, that's um, yeah, mate, just, you know, it's another another day of track. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping to circulate and try and do better than we did last year. So. You're bringing a wise head to this nowadays. You were a young man back then, and I think you're, you're kind of hoping that some of the young blokes in these Evos just, just take it a little bit easy for the first few hours. Yeah, it's not one in the first corner, as uh, we all know. So I'm just hoping they just race with their head. You know, everyone, I'll, I'll have a race as good as, as, as everyone else does, but, yeah, it's a long day, mate. So right, have, a, have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Will do, mate. Thank Stubbsy. you. Well, we've detailed the Barguana family and their rich history at this track a little bit so far this weekend. Jude is starting. Jude, how are the, uh, the emotions and the nerves at this point? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but, you know, you know, really excited to get out there and, and have a good crack in this uh, first part of this race. And you've ditched your old man. You've decided just to go with the two of you boys uh, this time around with your cousin, Ben. Yeah, look, I think it's going to be a really good pairing. We're both pretty close in speed, so it, we'll see how we go during, during the race. Of course, the uncle, Jason Barguana. All the very best of luck, Jude. Go well. Thank you.
Thanks, Dubsy. That's going to be a car to follow. What a sight this is. The Bathurst grid is absolutely full with racing cars. They go all the way around Murray's Corner and up Conrod Look at that. Straight. It How is cool. a great sight. Matt Nolte, Richard Crow with you. Greg Rust will join us shortly for the start of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour for 2022. This race is always great to watch. There's so many stories and subplots to unfold. We'll try and unpick them for you over the course of the day. But what we're looking for is 131 laps or 813 kilometres. That's the distance record in this race. It's a long way on a Sunday afternoon at Mount Panorama. BMW has never been beaten in this race. Then they lock out the first eight grid positions today. Uh, the winner has come from pole or second the last four years in a row here at Mount Panorama in this race. So qualifying is still key. But the last time a pole-sitting car got excluded from qualifying and sent down the field was 2016. They won the race. That was Nathan Morecambe and Chaz Mostert in the first running of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour. Here's how they line up. BMWs dominate the order. Keep an eye on the class leaderboards as well. We'll bring you those over the course of the day. This is going to be a wild motor race. And BMWs, as many as you like, in the first eight, the Class X cars, the high performance, the ultimate performance cars will lock out the first four rows here today. Headed by Beg, David Russell and The Flash. Nash Morris starting on the pole. Carr and Slade join them out of position number two. Down the field, you've got Linton, Lay, Will Davison. That's another one of the ones. In fact, any of these guys in the first eight, potential winners here today. I agree with you. A1 and A2 pole position winners on the fifth row of the grid. Very close between the Mercedes A45s. The Mustang GTs evenly matched. And that Campbell and Craig Evo, after the bonfire they had on Friday, they bounced back really well. That's a good car. Watch out for them. They've been leading the Mitsubishi Charge, a car that's been on the podium here before. Um, Western Alberto, the big HSV, that's an outright car, but they go from 21st. That's probably a slow burn. Watch for them over the course of the day. Uh, more of the A2 contenders there, and we'll start to see the Class C fight, the production sports cars. We love that battle. That's headed up by Jake Camilleri and Scott Nicholas. The boys from Queensland, their Grand Prix master in Caboolture entry, just in front of 1987 great race winner Peter McLeod, who'll line up alongside with Brock Giblin and Ben McLeod, his grandson. What a wonderful story. And they're the Class C pace getters. And over the page, we'll find our Class D leaderboard as well. The D Class, of course, the production cars. We get to a whole group of them towards the back of the field, the Shores. And Cox starting down there in 47th position. Uh, Mitch McGarry and Wanze from those guys changed an engine here on Friday night. It was a late night for those guys starting at position number 50 for today's race. They're around the corner here at Mount Panorama of this over 60 car field for this, this year's High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour, which stretches right up towards the High Tech Oils Bridge. It's a phenomenal sight. We're about to let him loose very soon. McMaster and Worrell on top in Class E in qualifying in the Masters 1 and 2. Uh, I've had word through, unfortunately, from Jason Symes that the big C63 AMG that did no laps in practice, they changed an engine. Unfortunately, they will not take the start. And right at the back, young Thomas Sargent and Cameron Hill, the reigning Carrera Cup Australia champion, right at the back of the field after their exclusion from qualifying. Their first hour of this race will be spent negotiating traffic and making sure they stay on the lead lap. That is absolutely critical today. Keep on the lead lap. It doesn't matter where you are in the field. If you're on the lead lap, you get to the final hour of the motor race, you are a shot at winning this. That is so important and it will be a story that we follow over the course of the day. So the clock starts ticking. Six hours from now, the chequered flag will drop and the field will run behind the safety car and then at the end of this lap they will get a green flag. And a roll-in start too so expect a big gap between the first and last cars. We'll hit lap traffic very very quickly when you think about 35 plus seconds covering first to last in qualifying yesterday. So the Class X cars, your ultimate performance cars are going to be picking their way through the Class E and Class D cars very quickly in the opening stages. The High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour they're on their formation lap Next time they come past, it's game on here on the mountain. Quick explainer of how this race will play out. Uh, no driver in any car can do more than three and a half hours of the race. And that might not seem important, but a couple of combinations remain with just two drivers. So you're dividing a six hour race in half and you've only got a 30 minute window either side to play with. That's very important. And the penalties for driving for too long are massive and is a huge, huge drama. Uh, speaking of early drama, that's the Grant and Ian Sharon Sharon Racing entry. 
former winners of this race. And just a little glitch getting that car away. Fortunately, they didn't drop right to the back of the field and they'll be able to continue on as we welcome to the commentary box, Greg Rust, who's got the race suit on. Sun shining, 19 degrees, light breeze from the northwest this morning. The back of the season, great conditions for racing. Loves a race suit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been here a couple of times with both you guys and the the feeling on the grid is not like I've experienced before. It's gone another level this year with the amount of entries that we've got, some of the big names that are permeating the grid mixed in with all those beautiful family stories that we've been covering. The, there are people here all around the country that run various automotive style businesses. So there's all those sorts of constituents in yep. the pit lane and they help each other when things don't go right. They share some common stories. It's a beautiful way to spend your Easter, particularly when you've got the, the fog has kindly cleared for us for race start. And when you've got a day like this, where else would you want to be? This is the modern way of the old days. It's great. Yeah. It's such a good feeling out there right now as they work their way across the top of the mountain, Krause. This is really special. That green flag flying is the green flag that in just over a month's time will start the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500 mile race. How cool. One of the greatest races in the world. It's been doing a world tour. It will return to Indianapolis and start the 500 on May 29. And just a reminder, you can watch that race live at Break Free and on demand afterwards on Stan Sports. We'll have all of the pre-race, all of qualifying, the Indianapolis Grand Prix before it, and then the 500. Will Power going really well. Scott McLaughlin, a race winner this year. You will see that race live on stand. The green flag, that flag, will fly at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in just over a month's time. That is really cool. What flight's that on? I need to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> you two know that flight very well, don't you? Great event. What a place. Amazing to have that here. Terrific. From Bathurst to Indianapolis, yeah. two of the most iconic home grounds of motorsport in the world. That is really, really cool. And Roger Penske, a, uh, a, a, a man who appreciates both greatly. He's done some amazing things there uh, with some upgrades at, at Indianapolis and had um, had huge respect for it when he was here as a, uh, as a supercars team owner. It really blew him away the first yeah. time he saw this place and he's seen it all over his years, the captain. Let's think about where we've come from, Krause. This all started building six months ago when we had so much demand for entries to get into this race. There was over 80 drivers and teams that wanted to get involved and say, hey, we want to be on the grid. We got 70 in the books. We still got a massive field of cars out on this track to take on the six hour. It's a great sight and they'll line up two by two. Just to touch on the pit stops for this that will play out. Six compulsory stops, 120 seconds is the minimum time for a stop from pit entry to pit exit. We'll play that out for you over the course of the race as the strategies unfold. On pole is Carl Begg in the BMW M4. Tim Slade alongside him. So that team is the only one to have elected to start their pro driver in the top group of these outright Class X BMWs. That is going to be a big story. Slady will want track position nice and early. So here they come. Settle in on Stan Sports. Settle in your favorite chair around the Mount Panorama course. Over 60 cars, they're still coming through the chase. And a whole fleet of BMWs. We've waited all weekend for this moment. Here comes the start of the high-tech oils. Bathurst six hour, they work their way up to take the green and the build up ends now we go racing here in 2021 the high tech Bathurst six hour is underway racing on Easter Sunday is a Bathurst tradition that stretches back decades and it continues in 2022 good start Slade on the outside but he'll go wheel to wheel with Carbeg the battle of the BMWs defending champions in there Beric Linton is behind the wheel of car 23 Wait for the timing to update with that. It might be Tim Lay. Their pro drivers will jump in later. Anthony Sewell, it is in the multicolored car in fourth place, just slotting in as they run up to turn two. Have a look at this field. What a sight. I think if we join them all back to back, if you have average 4.5 metres a car, it goes a third to halfway up Mountain Straight, I think, doesn't it? It's a crazy Congo line of cars. Nice, comfortable start from everybody. That reminder from a few of the, the more experienced drivers. This is not one in the opening lap. Just ease in. That was the Bagwana Audi down in 17th place. So lap traffic will start playing a role, we think, from about lap four. 
the 130 plus <laughs> potentially in this race. So uh, if you're Tim Slade and you're leading the race across the top for the first time, you don't get much opportunity to run in clear air. It's a stunning day. Someone slowing there, was it? Across the top of the mountain, we'll just keep an eye. I think that might have been Berwick Linton behind the wheel of the 23 car. It's Stephen Ellery behind the wheel of 99. That BMW is up into third. Anthony Sewell next. Shane Smollen behind the wheel of the defending champions. He's got Jaden Ojeda behind. What's that car 23? He did tumble down the order a little bit. There was a brief hesitation. We'll pick that up for you. So some 40 seconds covering the field already on the first lap. It, is it is 2019 winners. Berwick Linton, the Queenslander. Oh, no. Will Davison and Tim Lay will share this car. He can't get this. He He's got trouble, has he? So they run the DSG gearbox. It's got paddles, all the sequential shift to the driver's right. And it looks like he's just trying to bump it into the manual mode. And it looks like it's stuck in sixth, sixth gear. gear. Yeah. Bathurst drama. It starts sometimes before the green flag drops. And one of their heavy hitters has struck dramas early. I suppose if you're going to get them, get them on lap one, because you've got five hours and 50 minutes to try and bounce back. But that's a big story. One lap in the books. Tim Slade leads the race. Right. And the Sharon car as well. So two of the heavy hitting BMWs limping back to pit lane on the opening lap of this race. Now remember, they had an incident during qualifying last night too, but it didn't seem to show any gremlins during the warm-up session a couple of hours ago here at Mount Panorama. They're coming to a stop just by the High Tech Oils Bridge as Tim Slade leads us up Mountain Straight for the second time. Beg runs second, then Ellery in third, back to Saul and Jade Nojada in fifth position as the rest of the field are still coming past us on the main straight. So Berwick's in the lane. They've been able to get the 23 entry in. I'm just seeing if they've been able to limp the Sharon car in as well. It didn't, didn't look like it. So, I mean, there's some unbelievably good people that work behind the scenes. And that car of Berwick and Tim Lays and Will Davison's is such a well-sorted, beautifully prepared package. Heartbreaking stuff for that outfit on the opening lap. Here they come. We'll have Molly and Chris and our team on the, on the case there. There's Tim Lay in the centre of your screen. Rob Rubis to the left, and then Will Davison, of course. Here's Berwick, we're on board now. And straight into the garage. The reason they do that is they're allowed more people to work on the car inside the garage. They've already got the tablet plugged in. So it, it's an electronic issue of some sort, probably related to the electronic gear shift systems on these cars. Stubbsy? Just joined with Tim Linton just now, and uh, Tim, Tim Lay, sorry. What's, uh, what's the outcome here? This is uh, shocking news. Well, it's um, things run fine all weekend, so I have no idea. But um, I think what happens with production cars that aren't race cars, sometimes the computers just go, you know, boom, and they don't want to know about it. So it looks like that could be what's happened here, but um, I don't know, unless something's crapped itself, who knows. So bring it in for, for a reset, just a quick check to just try and find out what's going on. If you go a lap down, you know yourself, you've been here enough times, it's hard work getting it back. Yep, yep. But anyway, Will's, Will's right, he's my mate. I'll just drag him in the car. <laughs> Will. <Without> Superman. <laughs> That's okay. the thing, you pulled in Superman. Will's come here to do a job for you. And Will, mate, this is, you were so excited to take part in the six hour. And, and this is production car racing, isn't it? You know that. Uh, it is, it is. Hey, it's great to be here with Timmy and Beric anyway. I'm, I'm really in shock at the moment. I don't know what's just happened, but... Um that's motorsport, as they say. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Everyone's worked really hard. It's been great to be a part of it. So, let's hope we can get back out. I said I was giving him a steak sandwich. It could be a poo sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's OK, oh. folks. We're in a bit of shock down yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, the, the deflation in Tim's voice just um, underscored that for you. So, I can't believe that. So, the 2018 winners and the 2019 winners light one dramas in 2022. We've all been here enough times over the years. You can't write a script for how this race pans out. That has got to be so gut-wrenching. To happen in the first few minutes of the race, they the can fight back. There will be attrition rates here quite high today in the six hours. So they can fight back, but not the way you want to start. Meantime, the Sharon car is moving again. Makes in a pass. Molly's got some news on this car. Just speaking with Grant Sharon, they've been having an intermittent electrical problem like a few cars up and down the lane. It goes into limp mode and they're not quite sure why. They've replaced a lot of parts before the race. Uh, they've done a reset. It's going again for now. They're not 
overly confident what's, what's going to happen if they're going to get through the race, but they're going to uh, keep going and, and try as, as far as they can. Looks, looks good at the moment, Molly. It's got pace again, yeah. so that alt control delete has seemingly worked for them. They do plug modern motorsport engine management systems over the top of the road car stuff in these cars, but a lot of the production components remain, and that's part of the drama. Uh, in production car racing in this day and age with cars becoming so space age with all the various systems in it as we go back and have a look at the Ram with GWR A45 AMG uh, Shear goals behind the wheel they're second in class A1 Tyler Everingham leading the way uh, Slade out in front margin four seconds he's going to get traffic fairly soon a little bit of housekeeping as well Thomas Sargent who started this race from the back of the field I kind of thought they might have decided to start from pit lane but they elected to take the racing start the young bloke's doing a super job. He's up to 29th for a 63rd in three laps of racing. So carving his way through the field nice and early. But Slade with clear racetrack, uh, 228.3, fastest up of the race. He's got four seconds over Carl Begg and Stephen Ellery. And the 23 car back in the lane now. Now your prediction of lap four is looking really good for lap cars right now. The margin is nearly two minutes back to the last car. The Sharons have made their move all the way back up into... Uh, 52nd place from the tail of the field and then some after stopping on the first lap. Now, is that the McLeod Mustang coming in? Car three, Nick McLeod from 10th place. Class A1, they were right at the very forefront of that battle all the way throughout the weekend. They've been another team just fighting a few little gremlins with what is a new car for this squad. Ryan McLeod on the headset, he's the only McLeod I think in the world, not racing, racing. Here this weekend. <laughs> he gets the glasses and he puts them on the end of his nose, and then they, I think he can peel them apart. He so they're very the, senior. He does look very senior <laughs> when he does that. So it pulls up to the car controller, and they're putting a left front tyre on this car by the looks of things. So we'll detail the pit stop rules when we get into more of the strategy chatter a little bit later on, but you can do tyres or fuel, you can't do them at the, at the same time as part of the pit stop regulations. And there are a series of compulsory pit stops at 120 seconds that you must take throughout the course of the race. And that clock starts ticking when you drive into pit Love lane it. and stops when you cross the control line. Tim was very wide there yeah. at the Philomy Park, wasn't he? He's Remind him there's still five hours and 46 minutes of racing to go here. He's set the track on fire on the previous lap. The gap sits at 4.3 seconds. We'll share this car with Brad Carr, the Car Mods team. Carl Begg runs still back in second position. And Jaden Ojeda has moved up two spots since the start of the race. He's up into P3. This is a good strategy from the Car Mods Australia squad to start Tim Slade. They had track position. They started on the front row. Here's the first lap car. Where are we, Nods? Halfway through lap three. We're on lap Suzuki. four. There we go. Pick That's it. the first <laughs> car lap in this race. And for... The rest of the day, that will be the story for this car. So they're in a, a different sort of situation with Brad Carr and Tim Slade because they're a two-driver combination. And that's a different way of playing out the race than having three. Three drivers gives you strategic ability to adapt on the fly. You're a little bit more forced into a box when you've only got two drivers in the car because of that driving time that we talked about. And last year, when they finished second, Berwick Linton and Tim Lay, Tim Lay did three hours and 27 minutes Just over shy. the course of the race. It was three <laughs> minutes shy of Ooh. going over. And it's massive penalties if you eclipse that time. So the smoke will be coming off the keyboard at, at, and the computer at car number eight to work out their pit stop strategy. Whereas if you're this car running second, you've got Carl Begg, you've got David Russell, you've got Nash Morris. You've got that ability to be a little bit more adaptable with pit stop strategies and play the safety car game as well. And those people that are adaptable in the background that can see the way to do that on the fly, the likes of Paul Morris, the likes of one R. Dane, Roland Dane down in that garage as well. So just keep an eye on the 40 here, just in terms of the way this race shakes out and how they choose to play their three drivers that, that Richard's been talking about. Dr. Jeffrey Slater, engineering, car number one, Nick Perkatz, regular season engineer in supercar racing. He was already signed up before Nick came on board, so that was a nice little uh, set of circumstances, but he's a Bathurst winning engineer, so there's so many big oh. brains down there, and that's uh, big smoke from the back of one of the HSVs. It's the 
151 car, and that's not the place for it to be happening on the way up Mountain Street. Looks like it's that's cleared for a moment. Trav Lindorf behind the wheel, Victorian uh, champion of saloon car racing, very experienced guy, runs the Casey Accident Repair Centre down there in Melbourne. And he's got Adam Lowndes alongside him. So the car's still going quickly. Just trailing some smoke. Race control, we'll have a look at that. They're running in Class A2, their 20th outright at the moment. And in the top half a dozen in their class. And Jude Barguana has a, a bird's eye view of that. And he'll be the first one to know if that's depositing any fluids on the racetrack. Yeah. Just enjoy this magic sound of the Audi. Very unique engine notes. Let's go to pit lane. Here's Molly. Aaron Cameron, we're looking at a, a pretty decent tyre that's come off your Mustang entry. What's the story? Uh, I don't exactly know. Nick was complaining about a vibration. Uh, and then we've, we've changed the left front. And I don't know if it's still there yet. I haven't asked. But, yeah, not exactly the style we wanted. So we'll see what we can claw back and hopefully get ourselves back in contention. Still a long race and you did an awesome job in quality, so everything's really good? Yeah, exactly. The car's really fast, so yeah, if we can just yeah, get back up there. We've got six hours to do it, so yeah, if we uh, get back into that sort of podium sort of contention, we'll all be uh, happy and yeah, going home. Very happy team, so it's the first one with the auto Mustang, so yeah, looking forward to it. We've spoken to you a few times, so congratulations, by the way, on all your TCR results. But speaking of that gearbox, because we, we spoke about it a bit with uh, the George Mideke and Marcus Ambrose entry that didn't come, uh, you guys are the only ones as well running this 10-speed automatic gearbox. How are you finding it? Really good, actually. It's quite funny being a, a GRM TCR driver. I know a bit about what was going on with that Mustang. And, yeah, we're having no issues at all, so it's really good. Ryan's done a mega job building the car and making sure it's reliable so far. So, yeah, hopefully in the six hours we'll be all good. Best of luck. Thank you, Jess. We've got a dive on this. This is a big story. Another of the lead charges in the high-tech oils about the six hour has some sort of gremlin going on and has stopped near the start finish line. This is car 40, we've been following them on board. We're running in second place. Carl Beck, David Russell, Nash Morris. What on earth has happened here? And right in front pretty much of their pit garage. On pit straight here in the very early stages. This is gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Incredible already. Some of the big names are in trouble. These guys started from pole position. Nash Morris, David Russell, Carl Begg behind the wheel. And now it has stopped at the worst possible position. The stay green for now with Tim Slade. Puts Ojeda up into second position. The Ellery's running in third spot now. And Shane Smolin into fourth with Tyler Everingham in fifth. Very early days of the high-tech oils, Bathurst six hour for 2022. Might be the last time we'll see a, a yarn like that. No, Slade is making hay here. He's 6.2 seconds, as you point out, in the lead. You can tell the behavior of the car over the, the top of the mountain. And that's the Berwick Linton BMW rejoins the field, lost a lot of time. The car that he'll share with Tim Lay and with Will Davison. It's great to see it back out there, but a lot of ground lost at the very beginning of this race. All that work, Slady's done, goes to zero. Safety car is called. And this is the worst possible timing for a safety car because the window for a compulsory pit stop doesn't open until 30 minutes into the race. <laughs> so you cannot tick off one of your boxes until the 30 minute mark, Stubbsy. The fuel pressure issue seems to be the problem for car 40. So they're uh, doing a control alt delete, trying to reset, get those pumps going again. But that's the issue at the moment as they understand it. Chris for the update. So we've had BMWs with electrical issues and now one with a, a fuel pressure issue. You can take the opportunity to pit, but it will not count as one of your mandatory pit stops. So you'd basically be throwing away track position by coming into pit lane now. If this safety car lasts seven minutes and 10 seconds from now, you could come into pit lane when that pit window opens. But it's very important. This won't be a long safety car. It will be a flat toe for car 40. The print car Ranger Raptor will hopefully drag that out of the way. I think they've got to get it into neutral. Yeah, exactly. And get a flat toe back to the mountain straight gate on the hill and get it to the back of the pits. And hopefully they can get this car back out. But they're already a lap down. Running second early, Carl Begg was doing a really nice job chasing Tim Slade. 
Jade, no, Jada has found himself in second position. A handy little start in front of the rising young stars of Aussie Motorsport. Started from seventh position too, just been creeping his way up, of course, with this car stopping, promotes him up another position. They're having a little trouble getting this rolling, I yeah. think, here. He's trying to get us into neutral, but they're struggling so far. Well, they run the DSG gearbox, so they don't have a clutch pedal. It's not easy. It's not like you can just pop the thing in neutral manually and drive away. Can't do it. The other thing you don't want to do if you've got your pro driver in the car is burn time with your fast driver under safety car because it's giving away laps that he could ordinarily have at full speed. So I suspect you'll see Tim Slade run until the fuel window in this car, probably the first hour of the race, they'll pit. And then I wouldn't expect to see Tim, he'll probably do a, a lunchtime stint very briefly, and then I'd expect a double from Tim in the second half of this race to bring it home in car eight, pending, obviously, uh, everything going on. So they've got the flatbed recovery truck there now as well for car 40. They've stacked the deck there, haven't they, in the yeah. garage with, with that outfit too, Rusty? Lunchtime drive for Tim Slade. He's had, a, he's had a ripping weekend here at Bathurst, hasn't he? Sub for our, our good buddy Fabian Coulthard, who we send a cheerio to, and to Shane Van Gisbergen. And um, if you've not been with us on the coverage on Stan across the weekend, both those guys doing the right thing and observing the, the isolation rules, having picked up COVID in the past seven days or so. Oh, is this a drama? Is this a drama for the Anton Di Pasquale car? So going slowly out of the cutting, Anton Di Pasquale due to jump in. It's Anthony Sewell who owns this car, the PI store entry. Just trying to limp that car up the hill. What is going on with these BMWs? BMWs yeah. 23 minutes into the race. Apologies for the language there, folks. You can appreciate the frustrations. This is the once a year and so much effort and work goes into this for the for the teams and drivers and to have it happen richard we're not even a half hour into this race here at the mountain heartbreaking yarns unfolding with front running cars this in the incredible. very early stages yeah incredible he's just got to get the thing back to pit lane under safety car in fact he's probably got to get it 250 meters and he'll be able to coast the down rest the of the way down the hill there's Anthony. You look at the guy that's had 20 years of experience in production cars and now tries it again. You can hear it hesitating in the in-car camera here. Just get it back if you can. He's right at the top of the mountain here now. So he's got time while the safety car continues to lead the field around, headed by Tim Slade. We're recovering the Carl Begg car. Let's go to pit lane. Molly's with Madeline Stewart. Another heartbreaking story, Madeline Stewart. We've been following the efforts and the, the parts being flown in to be able to get this car out on the grid, but fortunately didn't even make the grid in the, in the first instance. What happened? Yeah, so basically the part that we did have flown in, unfortunately, we had a piece of it break. Um, so yeah, rolled out for warm-up lap, but didn't actually make the start. So the, the boys at Prime Motorsport have been working really hard to prep the car and hard, really hard to get us out on track this weekend. But unfortunately, it's motorsport and sometimes these things happen. Yeah, you're exactly right. Doesn't make it any, any easier after you've put in so much work to get there. So it's already here, but what's next for you on a positive note? Um, I'm actually jumping in a radical at Barbagallo in a few weekends time. So I'm really excited about that. And our first round of Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge is not far away. So keen to kick off that season too. Great to see you in so many different cars. Best of luck at that one. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. We talked just a few moments about the brains trust of this car, car 40 hour pole position for the sale. You've got Paul Morris down here, one of the two men to have won a 12 hour, as well as a 1,000 and a six hour. Nash Morris, the rising star. Roland Dane is over here engineering the car this weekend and it's just coming back on a flatbed now. David Russell, when we spoke to you this morning, it was all smiles, the car was going well. You inherited pole position overnight. That's racing, huh? Tell us what the problem is. Yeah, look, um, disappointingly, it, it seems like the, these cars have a, a central control unit, if you like, control so many different things, and we've already seen a couple of cars have, have issues. So for us, it's um, brought up a fuel pressure issue. Um, so cars essentially, like turning off all the computers done and all control delete and and basically turned everything off tried to restart we're not getting any sync back from the from the fuel pump so no fuel pressure no fuel no start so um 
Yeah, look, it's it's pretty disappointing because it doesn't look like um, when you go laps down on a race like this, there's no point really um, getting out and bowling around, wearing things out. We know this place is a war of attrition. Have you ever seen anything quite like this, though, in the first 30 minutes or so of a six-hour? Not really. Um, I certainly remember back in the day they used to have a 24-hour race here, so um, I remember that fondly, And um, but it's so early in the race to have, have issues like this. And, and none of them, none of them um, interestingly, have played up in practice too much, and then in the race um, we're having issues, so nothing's really changed weather or anything, so it's quite strange. You've assembled such a great team that we touched on. You'll be back, won't you? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, the, the car's obviously um, fast. Um, so, you know, for us, it's a good good crew. We all get on good and um, we haven't had a chance to properly work together yet. And, um, yeah, look, we, we quite possibly would have had a great result today. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens next year. Thanks for your time. Cool. Thanks. Lots of onboards in our field. That is not one we thought we would show you today coming in on the back of a... Uh, of a flatbed so okay half an hour in uh, much has happened already in this race some real headline stuff and Richard some A1 class cars find themselves fifth sixth and seventh outright Everingham Tyler Mecklem and Cameron Crick yeah they're creeping up on it Rusty how about the performance of this young guy started from the back Thomas Sargent in 30 minutes is up 48 positions oh, i'm not sure that's been said before at this place that's incredible what a drive from this young guy picking his way through traffic and this safety car will be a godsend for them it just buys them a little bit of breathing room they're in amongst fast cars now so it actually makes it a little bit easier because the speed differential comes down with the cars you're trying to work your way through despite the penalty they copped in the wake of qualifying cameron hill said to me this morning he's really looking forward to seeing the bright future for sergeant that is arguably one of the most dangerous missions in this race to weave your way through the, that slower traffic to have achieved that cleanly at this phase of the race brilliant performance that's a really good drive by him and this is a good sign to see the number four back in the pit so anthony Sewell did get the number four bmw back into the pit lane right now anton de Pasquale just having a conversation in there with the driver right now as they're back in there they'll go a lap down or two at least while they decipher what the issue is anthony we were announcing it as we go back to green uh, a couple of weeks ago he said I wanted to get a co-driver that could beat Shane Van Gisberg, and so I went and got a guy that's beaten him in the last couple of years. I got Anton Di Pasquale, who was really keen to put that challenge on. Uh, they, he put so much investment, time, energy, finances into this one weekend a year, and for it to basically be all over by well, eight laps in, 30 minutes into the race, is, is quite remarkable. So the first safety car of the day ends. We're back under green flag running, and Tim Slade will get a little bit of clear racetrack again having just got to the back of the lap cars now this is going to be a tricky restart here now because we've got a whole mixture of cars that have got a lap down already the speed difference and the time difference will play a big part of this as everybody settles back into a groove here Slade checked out already in the car mods number eight bmw he shares with brad carr but you're right, that talk about Rusty with the A1 cars moving their way up into 5th, 6th and 7th. That's a big talking point so early in this race. They could, you know, find themselves in contention maybe for an outright podium depending upon how this day goes. This is just so unforeseen, so unexpected. Oh! Late no ball. Way. Oh no, now I'm not coming in. That's the 10. I think he was checked up. Yeah. That's Peter McLeod behind the wheel of the HSV Astra. So he's been there, done that at this place. I think he just bailed. I think everyone was checking up. It's like everyone's slowing down for the traffic lights at an intersection and perhaps didn't quite catch it as the field checked up into Murray's. Whew. That was big. Uh, one of the big stories is the Anthony Saw car. One of the co-drivers is Anton Di Pasquale and he's chatting to Molly Taylor. That's right. Anton, not what we want to see. It sounds like similar issues to what we've seen in some of the other M4s. Um, yeah, there's a few of us dropped at the same time, so yeah, some sort of field pressure or something like that. Um, boys on it now, trying to fix it. Still, is doing an awesome job in that first stint, so uh, we we'll try and get it back out and uh, come home strong. But yeah, it's a uh, laps down early in the race, and then we can start. You got the the call up to join this team. How are you finding your first experience? Had a cracker running quality too. Yeah, yeah. It's been good, um, limited laps, but heaps of fun around here in these cars, like heaps of horsepower, um, hanging on, trying to put a good lap together. So that's been good so far. Um, but yeah, shame to be here at this point. So we'll, uh, we'll try, and, try and put it back together and try and scavenge a good result at the end.
fingers crossed you can get back out there. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, everyone. Anton, pretty philosophical as always. He's been there and done that in his glittering young career. He's certainly one of our top racing stars at this point in time. Spent some time in Europe, came back to Australia and full-time driver now for Dick Johnson Racing. It's caught me out a couple of times this weekend seeing both himself and Will Davison getting around in their <laughs> Shell V-Power racing, racing suits, suits but yeah. in different different cars. It's quite strange. Tim Slade out in front, already four seconds to the good over Jaden Ojeda. So Stephen Ellery third in car 99. Shane Smollin defending winning number one BMW is fourth. Tyler Mecklen behind the wheel of car 9 we're watching now. Leads the way in class A1 and is fifth. And Tyler Everingham is just behind him in sixth position. Cameron Creek in the Evo rounds out the top three in A1. He's seventh. Wayne Russell doing a super job. He's eighth in the Go-Karts Go BMW, back of shot. And we go back to Grant Denyer, who's up four spots and has worked his way into the top ten in the big four Mustang. With sheer gold in the AMG, 845, running out the top ten. And this is a, a pleasing sight with the BMW pushed back out into the lane. Fingers crossed it. Um it's cured it just on Richard's little update there as well. A reminder on the totem on the left of your screen there. We have colour-coded things for you. We'll follow the class battles, the races within the race as they unfold across the weekend. Wayne's under siege here from Grant Denyer, who'll get him at the top of the of the mountain. So in that A1 example, we, we saw Tyler Necklam and Everingham and, and Cameron Crick there before. Uh, battling away their fifth, sixth and seventh outright. You can see their blue, coloured blue on your, your totem on the left there. That puts Denyer up into eighth position now and leads the A2 class. Extreme performance, naturally aspirated class. One of seven we have in the field here. This year's Bathurst six hour. Another car stopped on the way up towards the top of Griffins. So they're dropping very quickly in the early stages of the high tech oils Bathurst six hour. Daniel Cliff and Ashley Heffernan, son of former touring car privateer Kevin. Yep, yeah. The Queenslander with a pinstripe price attack Commodore. Sure do. That's just on the run up to Griffin's Bend, parked on the side there. Driver's left just by that gate. Race control will look at that. It might be out of harm's way. They might be okay with it being parked there. And whenever we get the next safety car, they may well just recover it then. Give them an opportunity to try and get that car uh, recovered a little bit later on. Tom Sargent is in the top 10 now. He's up in 53 <laughs> spots. <laughs> what a drive. Just watching the little triple two there on the left of your screen as well in class A1. So VW Golf R, Semyusel and Ian Saltieri at the wheel of that car. And that's been a, one of the stories we've followed across the weekend. They, in a package sense, thought this car would be just bulletproof and then discovered on Saturday a gearbox issue. It was so unexpected. They did something like 150 phone calls to wreckers uh, in regional areas in Sydney. They called mates. Uh, the explanation this morning was a mate of a mate of a mate basically got them a gearbox. <laughs> they finished it at about 12.30 this morning, fired it up around 1am. And the great news is they're circulating, they're taking part in the six hour. Love yarns like that. Managed to manage to get it to the start line. Do, do you think some of the local panel beaters and mechanic shops here in Bathurst might be going, you know what, we're not going away for Easter next year. There's money to be made here. I hope my rental car has all its wheels when I get out <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Richard was talking about before. This Up a staggering amount of positions. I mean, he's just been basically passing cars since this race started and has now closed up on Grant Denyer. So Denyer's in ninth place. Unreal. This may have happened back in the 60s, but not in the first 36 minutes of the race. <laughs> Maybe after seven hours of competition. It's a super drive, and, and it keeps them in the race. They, they were always in it, even starting from the back. They were going to get themselves into the top ten. The, the safety car worked for them. It gave them an opportunity just to take stock of where they were. They'd done all the hard work early before that safety car came oh, out. Oh, no, is that the... That's the four. Yeah, that's Anthony Sewell buried at turn one. And that will be a safety car. That's well stuck. The Bathurst Regional Council make sure their gravel traps are very deep to restrain cars before they get to the fence. And after a really challenging start, unfortunately, Anthony Sewell, the car's just ploughed straight ahead at Hell Corner. Oh, has it carried too much speed in there and then locked that left front? Not sure. It, it looks... Approach uh, looks odd, doesn't it? And I'll, I'll give benefit of the 
of the doubt. I, I wonder if the electrical issues that they've been uh, battling have caused a, caused a drive issue. And as we touch on, immediately Tim Slade peels off into pit lane. So the pit window is open now. So I'm not surprised. Jade, no Jada follows. So this is an opportunity now to get your first compulsory pit stop out of the way under safety car. It's almost a free stop. And I suspect a lot of teams will take this opportunity. Molly? So I've just been uh, chatting to Neil Trama, who's the engineer behind that car with a, with a wealth of experience. And it was an issue with the lift pumps. They have to put a, a, a bag tank, uh, what it's called, essentially to, uh, to run the race fuel. There was an issue with the lift pumps during that lap. Um, so just got, got starved of fuel being fed to the car, uh, but they've been able to reset them. They're working now. And so that, that was fixed. Whether this issue is related to anything ongoing with that or not, we'll, uh, we'll stand by and find out. To Molly Taylor, Chris Stubbs in the line. You'll hear from Matthew White throughout the course of the day. Got a good team here on Stan Sport covering things for you. So the intriguing thing here is now those that may opt not to take service under this safety car. So Shane Smolin is your, your effective race leader on, on the road at the moment at the head of the queue. Won this race last year with Rob Rubis and Shane Van Gisbergen. So that's a replay there. And to Richard's point, maybe, maybe the Gremlins, not sure whether that's contributed to it. He was only just starting his first flying lap. He'd just come yeah. out of the pits. That was the first lap they were about to really test the car out. So Cold tyres, yep. angry, upset, frustrated. Uh, that could be the reason. This it's is a dangerous combination sometimes. Yeah, isn't it just, especially here. The Lowndes Lindorf car in. So the big HSV will get some service. Interested to see if... Tim Slade stays aboard car eight or whether there's a driver change whether they get their pro driver out keep his driver time nice and clear for later in the race give them a little bit more flexibility is the bonnet coming up on this car that's never a good sign big 6.2 litre Chev based V8 so Hyundai safety car out for the second time today Molly uh, spoke too soon. There uh, is still an issue with those lift pumps. So that off we saw was the, the car cutting out, went to uh, get the power back down and, and it's nothing there, unfortunately. Thank you for clarifying that, Molly. So that we question marked things, didn't we? So I'm glad I gave Anthony a bit yeah, of a doubt there. there. Yeah, car, car let him down. So Shane Smollen and car number one, they've stayed out. Tyler Everingham has stayed out. Tyler Mecklem has stayed out. So Class A1 cars now second, third and fourth. Cameron Crick in that fourth position and now car number one comes into pit lane. So they're going to lose a little bit of track position here. They didn't quite get to the back of the safety car with all the shuffle, so might actually be damage limitation. So car number one will end up in the lane and Everingham follows in that number 24 GWR AMG A45. I think Sargent's come in too uh, in the 147, so in fifth place uh, when he pitted. The Russell entry comes in as well. The go-karts go entry. So will Wayne hand that car over? We know that he's had a couple of injuries that he's carried into this race. Very emotional about starting a, a big race at the mountain again with his, with his family, with his sons. Brad Carr has jumped into car number eight. So Tim Slade has jumped out of that BMW that led the opening laps of this one. And a nice hop, skip and a jump. Rob Rubis slides into the car that won this race last year. Solid opening stint from Shane Smollen. Nice little steering wheel adjustment. And they're keeping their powder dry with Nick Perkat for a little bit later on, and car number four has been recovered. Is that something dragging underneath that car? Because obviously it's been in the trap, so... I can't imagine how these guys must feel after investing so oh, much yeah. Deflated. into it. Yeah, even more than that, isn't it? Just crippling disbelief that you've come this far to get to this point and within the first hour but how many stories are there over the years we've been coming to this place of that Bathurst heartbreak and this place just seems to cause it more than any other. Garth Horton Racing going to work they've got both of their A45s in. Garth has got I think more people than any other team here this weekend <laughs> with all the cars he's running and the crew so the Russell's in the lane Remember, it's 120 seconds, and we'll keep banging on about that number because it, oh, that, oh, 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 that's messy. At that line, you have to be over 120 seconds. Uh, race control won't like that. I don't think so either. No, yeah. they'll look at that. That could be worth a penalty. And I don't think 
Tom Sargent liked it particularly much either in car 147. Just confirm if he's remained in that car. Here's another look. So the one just faulted to get away, then just got out in front. So it is Cameron Hill behind the wheel, just been informed. So there's two things. Could have been a hesitation from the car, but I got a feeling it was the team counting him down to the 120 20. seconds. Do not cross that line yeah. until it's 120 seconds, point one. If it's 119.95, you will get penalised, and that's automatically timed by the computer, not by the team. But he's put himself into dangerous waters now with that release. Correct, exactly. <laughs> Un unsafe release. It's the one percenters as well. We haven't brought that up in this race yet, that in a six-hour endurance race, you cannot afford to make little mistakes like that and, and maybe pop a drive-through penalty, which, remember, you can only take under green and you throw 33 seconds away. And no doubt Cam Hill will be on the radio because he'll be un unhappy with that. No contact there, so good good piece of driving by him. But um, is this congestion or is this an issue? I'm just trying to... Uh, I think, think it's struggling to get away, is it? So, Krause, question without notice. If the cars are coming down the lane there like that, for example, and they're trying to hold back to get to 120 seconds, but what is the, the rolling with the pit lane speed limit? Well, if, if you impede anyone else, you're going to get nobbled. Um, the idea is, is that it's your stationary time that fills the majority of that 120 second windows. You know that it's about 31 seconds from pit entry to pit exit. So 120 take 31, that's the amount of time you need to be stopped. Speaking of stopping, I think they've got a fuel leak on the back of that car. The fire marshals who have been reasonably busy this weekend have gone straight on to the rear of that car and dousing it in foam. Should say a big shout out to them as well for giving up their Easter long weekend. Of course, the recovery crews that help us in each and every round of the speed series and part of this high tech oils bath of six hour. All these people get up here earlier in the week. They're here from dawn till dusk each day and they're put to work in these situations. It won't be the first the last time we see that happen here today on the mountains. We're still under the safety car, 43 minutes into this year's High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour. Let's go down to pit lane, Stubbsy. Drive of the day already without doubt, Thomas Sargent from the rear of the grid came in and changed over to Cam Hill in fifth position, mate. Speed differential, people might think that's easy, but that's a dangerous job with some of those slower cars around. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was really mind-blowing to see the speed difference we actually had. So you've got to have your eyes up so much, just making sure that you're looking over the crest of the next hill, seeing what's up there and uh, picking your line and just, you know, just being a little bit careful and just being uh, on the side of caution. Have you had a look at the timing monitors? Because there was plenty going on and some of the biggest names, including some of our recent champions, are out of this race. What have you made of the, the way that's all played out? Yeah, I haven't had a good look yet. I've only just got back, but I did see a, yeah, a couple of those BMWs stop. So, you know, it's unfortunate for them. We never like to see that. Uh, but, um, you know, we've got to take those positions when we can get it. And uh, they, so hopefully that can help us and we can, um, you know, get a bit higher. Now, Tom, you did see on the monitor the, the rejoin there with the defending champions. What was your take on that? I saw an email being fired off from the team, so it has uh, been already noted, I'm sure, by the stewards. But just to make sure, they have been alerted to it. Your take? Yeah, for sure. I only saw it once. Um, it did look like Cameron was balked when he was trying to get out. So, um, you know, whether or not that's just the perspective of the TV, we'll find out. But, uh, yeah, it looked very close, that's for sure. Well, you've got yourself in a good position. Go well. We'll catch up later on. We do. Thanks, Dubsy. Thank you. Respect to both of them in the way that they are playing things, OK? So the, the, the drama, the embarrassment, if you will, of losing that pole position. Cameron put his hand up this morning, owned it. They've moved on. And Tom's been very, very good there in his answer to Chris. Just while that's all been playing out, and no doubt will be continuing to be looked at at race control, we're hearing that the lights will go out on the... Shannon's Hyundai Motorsport Australia safety car this time around. What about the fact that the name Jay Bow is currently sixth in the order here in the high tech oils about the six hour? Johnny Bow, great stuff. He just gets faster and faster with age, I think. JB, one of the all time legends of Australian motor racing, leads the Gulf Western World Touring Car Masters season in his. Holden's run, we're going to smoke one of the cars and we will be back to green this lap, it's just been confirmed. So he's still a race winner in TCM. He won the championship here last year, record number of titles, more than 100 race wins in that category. Still going on, celebrated a birthday yesterday and we do need to say a big happy birthday today 
for his co-driver, Aaron McGill, awesome. who has worked so hard to put that program together in the last of the GT Falcons, they're calling it, and the Ranger Ford is going along really nicely up into sixth place. Talking about Bathurst experience for your opening stint, that's the guy you want, isn't it, JB? Lights out, go back to racing, and Tyler Mecklen will lead the field. And Evo Lancers one and two with Grant Denyer third. So these cars yet to make their first compulsory pit stop. So they've gone off sync in terms of strategy. They can go about an hour on green flag running the Evos based on history. So there's already been quite a few safety car laps. So they'll punch on, they'll keep pushing and just run the thing dry and then get into pit lane for their first pit stop. It's a change of car for Hadrian Morale and uh, Tyler Mecklen this year. They ran an older spec Evo. They brought an Evo 10 to the mountain this year. Remember they had some issues with a, uh, uh, a fuel tank problem in last year's race and they were looking a little bit like now in just a, a very solid, comfortable position in the way that they were attacking the race. So nice start there. Good job by Cameron Crick. And here comes Grant Denyer eyeing up second in this race. There's a few ponies in that pony car. <laughs> Has the most appropriate sponsor ever, the local legends car for the local legend, Grant Denyer. If you follow him on social media, he's here almost every day of the week, cutting laps on foot or on the push bike. It's rare you meet someone as passionate about this place as G Denyer. Brought the family too yes, yesterday. Yep. Talked about it being like, you know, come, come to work with Dad for the day, and they loved it. So. And, and the crazy grandfather, Tony Quinn, as well, just watching <laughs> on. <laughs> Tony's been quite quick, actually, in that car over the weekend. He loves driving the Mustang. Bit of banter between he and Gil Slade this morning with a reference to him yesterday afternoon. So they do love their racing. They don't take it as serious as what you think they do. But right now, Denya running in second place. In fact, if he looks to the right-hand side somewhere about now, he'll be able to see his house. He literally <laughs> lives behind the other side of the mountain. You can see the distance, the right-hand side where the Pertex sign is. A great big housing estate that's popped up that both myself and Krause will be eyeing off in the future when we <laughs> retire at an old age. Is that where the after party is tonight? Yeah. Nice place. <laughs> if, it, if it wasn't before, it is now. I saw some smoke from this car, didn't we, while it was under safety car before the race restarted. This machine actually graces the front cover, I think, of uh, a Australian muscle car magazine at the moment. Great story. And they have, with that livery, shone a light on, on family history and involvement with our armed forces and World War II, but this is not uh, this is not going to plan at the moment for them. Darren Forrest behind the wheel of car 29 and actually up inside the top 20. This thing now uh, trailing some smoke, the VF HSV GTF, uh, GTS I should say, GTF is the Ford. So they'll link that car back to pit lane as we approach the first hour, remarkably, in the high tech world, that's a six hour. Tyler Mecklen with a second up his sleeve over Grant Denyer. This is always hairy when a car's limping down towards the fastest corner in Aussie motorsport. Just thought I'd get that one out the way early. <laughs> it's, it's mandatory we say that at least Look once at a race. Look at this. It'll happen again. Look at this. This is the battle for the net lead when everyone's shuffled through with the pit stops. These are the first two cars to have completed their stops. And Cameron Hill against Bradley Carr. 10th and 11th on the track right now while the guys ahead are out of sync headed by Tyler Mecklen who's here in the new Evo spec car of course they led laps here last year They're leading the A1 class outright before going out three hours into the race BMW M3 versus the M2 there's the smaller the baby version up in front there HSV into pit lane, so they've got themselves to where they can get some service and find out what that drama was. And look at them holding their breath on the way into the worth cutting, trying to negotiate the slower cars. These are two outright machines and they're working their way through two cars battling for position as they go to Reed Park. It really is hold your breath stuff there. And they emphasise in the driver's briefing that the slower cars really just need to hold their line. The thing that causes the accidents is when the slower cars try to take evasive action or jump out of the way. You let the faster cars do all the work because they're faster. They can do it. But look how much lap time they've lost being caught up behind these lap cars as they run over the top of the hill. 
O'Brien in the 26 are technically not in the same race. It is actually for position, but he's out of sequence in terms of the running order because he's yet to make a pit stop in that uh, earlier spec BMW. It's actually a good little story that we mentioned it in the in the qualifying coverage yesterday. They had a bit of assistance in tracking down that car from none other than Barry Graham, Speedway star in this country, who went on to run the Richard Petty Racing School or Driving School in the States, and uh, has had some form with cars like this here at the mountain before. So they found one just like it for them. Side by side down the mountain, he's going to get it done. Oh, makes the move. That's brave stuff into the chase at this early part of the race. Almost at the conclusion of the first hour. Now remember, from the back, yeah. to the effective race lead. We put an asterisk next to these guys' name before the weekend started, and they are steaming their way inside the top 10 right now, but we'll lead the race when we get through the first round of pit stops. That is a key moment right there. The Colin Hill prepared team. In time the big HSV VF back in the pits. They've got the incompressible jack stands under there, so for safety reasons, you have to run those under the car if you've got people under it. They're looking gearbox end of the car, aren't they? I don't want to get too near to those exhausts either. Be particularly toast under there. Go back to the battle for the lead. Tyler Mecklem and Grant Denier going at it. Two completely different philosophies of car. Turbocharged, two litre, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, Evo 10. The last of the breed, really, for the famous rally spec Mitsubishis being chased down by a brand new Ford Mustang GT, five litre V8. Big V8 in the front, drive goes to the rear, four wheel drive, of course, in the Evo that leads the way. They produce their speed differently but overall their lap times very much the same. Both of them being driven very, very well by Tyler and Grant respectively. With Cameron Crick not that far behind, still running in third place in car double one eight. Nice bit of driving too. They cleared the, uh, the Class C entry, car 13, the Renault Megane, the Osborne Motorsport entry of Colin Osborne and Rick Bates. You'll know Rick, he's been around motorsport for quite some time. His son, Zach, is doing some amazing things in the Toyota 86 series and will contest Trans Am at Sydney Motorsport Park. Really looking forward to him joining the field there. Oh, the little Honda is a little wide. Oh, just got away with it, right on the edge of that gravel trap. This car has been in contention for class honours throughout the course of the race. They're the kind of mistakes that just make you wake up and realise there's a long way to go in this race. As our leaders make their way around to finish another lap here, headed by Tyler Mecklen. Let's go to pit lane. And I have the co-driver of Tyler Mecklen, Hadrian Morrell. Hadrian, deja vu. We've been here before leading this race last year. We hope it doesn't end the same way as it did last year. But so far, so good. Talk us through it. Yes, well, we've uh, updated. This car's only 14 years old as opposed to our 17-year-old car last year. Um, we've been slowly, slow. We've, we've got working to a race pace that we believe we can maintain. The BMWs, of course, will be hard to beat uh, for outright positions, but uh, we're shooting for a class win and hopefully a podium. Uh, we proved that last year, um, providing we can finish. Uh, Tyler's doing a magnificent job. He's actually going faster than what he qualified, so I don't know what he had for breakfast this morning, but <laughs> I'll have to find out the secret formula. Well, like you, he's got plenty of experience. He's been here before in the Bathurst 1000 with Daryl Beattie as well, mind you. But he's got old twinkle toes, Grant Denyer chasing him down. So, pretty good battle, hey? Yeah, yeah. Just passed him, I think, while we're talking, oh, actually. Sorry. So. Oh, right. I, had a, well, I took a photo with Grant this morning from my mother-in-law. She's in love with him. So, I don't know, maybe I'll have to put some snide mark on it. I've got to. <laughs> oh, good job, mate. We're having a lot of fun down here. Enjoy the rest yeah, of the day. Brilliant. It's a brilliant race. Thanks to all the organisers and all the volunteers and the officials and so forth. Uh, great event. And, uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a happy and safe day and a lovely Easter. Adrian Wilson. Thank you. Bye -bye. One of the great characters, isn't he? Adrian Morale. He's been around for a long, long time. He was so good back in the 80s in hill climb competition as well. He's done this event on more than five occasions. And as deserts are the dry, then his sense of humour is drier. I'm glad he got the photo for the mother-in-law. That's yeah. good to know. Keep the family happy. Forget the trophy <laughs> or the picture. Yeah. This is a good example of what we were talking about, Nolts, about the way these cars produce their speed differently. So the Mustang pretty good up the hill. Lots of torque in the big 5-litre V8. Uh, and it'll be good down the chute, but across the top, that Evo is the car to beat. And they're not far off the BMWs in that middle sector of the 6.2k lap. 
That was the lead change that happened while the interview was happening with Adrian Morell. Down in the pits, Tyler Mecklem sharing that car this year. Of course, Tyler was around in that era with the likes of Tim Lay back in the early 2000s. He's had a run here in the 1000 on a couple of occasions as well. So good to see some names from the past joining names of the future in this year's High Tech Oils Bath of Six Hour. So the seven local legends Mustang leads the race by half a second here as we about to tick over one hour of competition. A long way to play out. If you just joined our coverage, our pole sitting car did come to a stop early in the race. It's back in the pits. Hopefully we'll see that back out, but we've seen some big names drop in the early stages of this race. There's the Tegra Australia car of Cameron Hill. He's just punched out the car's personal best lap of the motor race, up to seventh, correction, sixth, just past Rod Salmon for position. And remember, this is the first of the cars to have completed their first mandatory pit stop, compulsory pit stop. Six the Class X cars have to complete in this race. So they work their way backwards, work out when they need to get the final one done for the push to the flag. The beauty of this combination is, is that you are pretty evenly matched between Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent. You're only allowed one pro-ranked driver in the car, but Tom Sargent's so young and relatively inexperienced coming out of Formula Ford and open wheel racing that Cameron, being the reigning Carrera Cup Australia champion and now running in Super 2 with Triple Eight Race Engineering, he's the pro out of the two of them. But they've turned out to be very evenly matched uh, in terms of the combination. So they are an outstanding shot at a good result today. All going well, they're up 57 spots. And the next target will be John Bow. Class D winners here last year. A run down the field just inside the top 10. They will be your effective race leaders as we put you further back into the field. Of this high tech oils back to six hour. We're on board with the number 10 HSV Astra. And this has been one of the great stories leading into the race. It's young Benjamin McLeod. Uh, that famous Bathurst surname, one of many behind the wheel. And they're doing a really good job up inside the top 30. They're in Class C, so it's a race within a race. They're chasing down Hay and Camilleri. So third in Class C at the moment and going along nicely. And we can get more of the family angle here because Chris Stubbs has found the 87 great race winner, Peter McLeod. Racing royalty, the man responsible for all the McLeods that are out there on the grid today is Peter McLeod. Peter, great to see you here. What's it mean to you to be back here at Bathurst and part of the six hour with everyone from the family? Yeah, it's always great to come to Bathurst and uh, the six hours are pretty, pretty, pretty uh, important, uh, particularly this year because I'm driving with my grandson. And Ryan's sitting out, so the middle generation is stepping back and just watching on. What does it mean to you? It must be super special to, to have the grandsons there. It is. The, the, the three boys are all terrific guys and they drive very well. They're very enthusiastic. They're uh, led by Ryan, who's, you know, over the top with everything and does a magnificent job. Probably one of the most important people in motorsport in Australia because the cars that he's designed, the way he's built them and the wrecks that... Uh, regulations that he's got involved in, in uh, having installed and that are uh, really first class and he knows everything so he's got the person to ex ex extend to the grandkids all that knowledge and they're learning and they're really promising and I think they'll be very effective as time goes on. Speaking of time going on, the memories must be still so fresh for you of conquering the mountain here with Peter Brock. Yes, it was great. I, I've been here I don't know, 30 times I think and uh, it's my, my home away from home. Uh, and, and really, if it wasn't at Bathurst, I wouldn't come back racing. It's only because it's Bathurst. Bathurst just has that absolute magic that uh, it has. And yes, all the, mo all the memories are fresh. Uh, when I come over the hill there, at, uh, coming into, into Bathurst from, from uh, Sydney, it's like driving home, you know, and uh, the hair still stands up on the back of my neck. It's just a a place of absolute magic and I've had a lot of success here uh, and I'm now it's being passed on to the other boys. Well, you're still in the race and you're in a pretty good position. We're battling for class honours as always, so we wish you all the best of luck that you might get a little bit more success before the end of the day. Well, let's hope so. We're looking good in the Class C and uh, unfortunately we had a flat tyre in the Class A car, but we'll catch up. Um, there'll be other things. There's five hours to go and a lot happens in the next five hours. Great to see you here and all the best for the rest of the race. Thanks very much, Chris. Good man.
cars in the lane. It's actually quite nice to see a stick shift again too. <laughs> it's not something we see too often at the moment in terms or anymore in terms of road cars. Nice to see the 29 out and circulating again. Let's take you back to uh, to pit lane. Here's Molly. Paul Rosen, we're watching your car circulate out there. They came in with a, a lot of gearbox oil everywhere. What happened? Uh, the gearbox breather has come out of the top of the gearbox. It lost about a litre of oil, but we've pushed it back in. It's not the best, but hopefully it stays in for a little bit now. Fingers crossed, and I hear you've got the best in the business that was doing uh, that Jack work. <laughs> Jack, hey, Jack, Jack, can we grab a word? Yes. You're the mechanic, you're the one responsible for keeping this thing together right here. Yeah, so had a drama, we had a breather come out the gearbox and obviously lost a lot of oil, as you could see on TV, but we tried our hardest to get it back on and it looks like it's worked all right so far. But time will tell, it's a bit of a hit and miss at the moment, so just keep monitoring it. And, and from what I understand, it, it's not something you can bolt into place as such, it's more of a push fit. So how do you go about fixing... Oh, how do you go about fixing that? Yeah, but um, so it's a real hard fix, it's a re in a real bad spot. But... All right, sorry, we're going to have to... Uh, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to you, but we'll just uh, see what's going on. Thank you. So this is at the Worth Cutting, it's the Rickshaw RX-8 and the Lexus RCF this is such a tricky position here, so not sure what's caused the RX-8 to stop there, but it's blind through that corner, as you know, Nolts. Teams will be on the radios to their, to their drivers. I think Rickshaw was very lucky then to not get stuck in between the car and the wall, but it's a blind approach up there. The Lexus try, looks like it's trying to do a restart here. Here's the replay at the Worth cutting. So it's shut down. Rickshaw will come into the scene. He's committed to the turn. And he's trying to go around the outside and oh, not enough room. He just glanced the wall and maybe the back of the Lexus as well. So he shares this car with Tom Shaw and with David Cox. They've got that RX-8 going again. David's actually at the wheel down in 47. And these guys have done some endurance racing together, things like Nürburgring 24 hours and so on. And Rick was very excited to get that partnership back together. Yeah, David from the UK, one of our international imports, now that we can do that again, which is tremendous. Yeah, they've raced at Dubai, Nürburgring. Uh, he's raced in the GT2 class in the Le Mans series. So very experienced guy. Unfortunately, where that car shut down was such an awkward part of the road, blind and steep on the exit of the Worth Cutting and the Lexus RCF, brand new car this year, unfortunately unable to squeak by. Nice to see the RX-8, something a little bit different, a road trip in the field, and Rick has been just a, uh, a proud runner of those cars for so many years, not just RX-8s, but all sorts of uh, Mazda rotary iterations over time, and he runs the RX-8 Cup, doesn't he? Uh, I was just about to say, loves it so much, he started a one-make series <laughs> with him, so uh, rotaries. A distinctive sound, of course. Bathurst history with the Mazda brands back in the Group C days with Alan Moffat and Greg Hansford and those incredible cars that were fast but fragile, got on the podium a couple of times. So it's cool to see the Mazda brand back here and uh, Mazda with the RX-7 won the Bathurst 12-hour in the 90s. And they were hard to beat there. They beat the Porsches with Neil Crompton and Greg Hansford with a victory there as well. So they're a brand with Bathurst history and synergy, so it's cool to see Rick running with his boy Tom and Darren from the UK as well. Those cars have actually gone up a little bit in value, I think, for people looking for <laughs> yes. something in the rotary range for, with, you know, for value. They've gone from in the order of about 20 grand to about 32, I think now, isn't it, for an RX-8, if you're looking, shopping around for one in that sort of range. Rob Rubis, now we're seeing a plus five second penalty attached to car number one. So maybe in the wake of the review of that that uh, that pit lane exit before, which Tom Sargent so beautifully, uh, you know, articulated, he, he felt he was balked when Cameron Hill was, was leaving the lane. Maybe race control have reacted here. Five second penalty for Rob Rubis and car one. So that will be, should be able to be taken at the next pit stop, but it's difficult with the timed compulsory stop to that 120 seconds. So do you make it 125? We'll, we'll reach out to race control and find out about that. Otherwise it will be added to their race time at the end of the race, which will give us gray hairs trying to work it out if they're <laughs> leading by 4.9 seconds when they cross the line. Uh, we'll worry about that when we get to it. I'm very busy with the podium. Yeah, I'm sure you are, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the abacus out, don't worry. So yeah, clearly they've reached a determination. To be fair, and, and to give race control their dues, and 
race control has been a topic of discussion in global motorsport in the last six months yeah. but um massive props for them keeping the race green there with that rx8 they gave them time to fix their problem gave them time to reboot the car get it fired up get out of the way without instantly going to a safety car which could have been a default option given where that car was parked so well done race control i think that's a a really great decision and they're letting the race play out giving them an opportunity to manually recover and then if they can't go anywhere obviously they'll throw a safety car i think they've learned from the last couple of stoppages we have had the cars have dropped in with either electrical issues give that opportunity rather than just panic pushing the button which we have seen on occasions it does take a long time just to get the field gathered up behind the safety car so well done this is the number 27 car in the pits now the sharon's their second stop of the day meantime cameron hill is up to third out right now and he's six seconds away from the cars ahead remember they're out of sync though but he's literally going to catch these guys in the next few laps I don't think they're too far away from a stop now, two litres. They've been going an hour and six. They've had 18 and a half minutes of safety car so far. So there's some fuel saving that comes with that. But I don't think they're that far away from their first pit stop. So there's a very good chance as the cycle shuffles through that Cameron Hill's going to end up leading this motor race within an hour and a half of starting last. <laughs> just extraordinary performance by then. He's just passed Cameron Crick to get himself into the top three. Does that surprise you they made that many places up so quick? Not with the raw speed they've got, no. No, car speed generally conquers all. If you've got a fast race car, you can do stuff with it and fast racing cars and get your way up the order. Shout out to the 58 as well. Drew Russell at the wheel of that Go-Karts Go BMW at the moment. They find themselves in sixth outright. So Dad Wayne, as we have a look here at the replay for Tim Slade, just a little moment wide at the final corner. Be Brad Carr behind the wheel Brad now Carr, yep. in the number eight. They swapped over early in the race, so. I was wondering where the time was lost there. I was just looking on the screen where he did lose. That was in the final turn. So the Car Mods Australia entry continues on. They're running back in fifth position outright, second in Class X, as we're just over one hour into the High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour. Boys, the other thing that we do need to touch on is that the pit stop rules differ throughout the field. So the further down the classes to go, the less compulsory pit stops you have to make. So Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent have to make six 120 second mandatory pit stops in this race now you might take more than that if you need a splash and go with fuel or you need another tire whatever it may be grant denyer and tyler mecklen those cars that currently run first and second they're in class a2 and a1 respectively they only need to make four compulsory pit stops so instantly they're 240 seconds to the better than the BMWs around them. And that's important over the course of a race. Now, generally, safety cars will mean that it doesn't actually change that too much. But they can go longer into the race and they have to make less pit stops than the BMWs. So they don't have the outright lap speed, but they can run longer and make less pit lane stops. I was crook with numbers when I was at, uh, at high school. The other little factor to weave into that, you talked before about not exceeding maximum three and a half hours at the wheel for the driver. So in the shuffle, in the juggle of those stops, you've got to balance out your drivers as well. So let's get uh, some news from the lane. Here's Molly. Yeah, I found Rick Shaw with the RX-8 that we saw stopped at the cutting. A battery issue or cutout issue? Well, it's, it's only a small problem. You can come here to Bathurst, you can build a brand new race car and every single component is brand new and the isolator switch is dodgy. So as David went up into the cutting, the car just turned itself off. And uh, another car nearly ran to the back of us. I think it actually might have just touched him, but he's found a position where the isolator switch works. The car started back up, but it's going like a dream again. And with that, that impact that we saw, is he reporting any damage or the car's still driving okay? No, I think it was just a slight love kiss on the back quarter panel. Car's driving like a dream, trucking along and happy days. We'll keep going to the end, I hope. And when you're coming for the next driver change, is trying to secure that isolator switch to stop it maybe wriggling around something you can do? Well, it hasn't fallen off the dash yet, so it doesn't need securing. But, if, you know, if it's not broke, leave it alone. So I think we'll just tell the drivers, don't touch it, and we'll see how we go. My son Tom's in the car next to you. He's done an excellent job here last year, so hopefully he'll do another good job this year. And just got to touch on that rotary engine. Great to have that uh, in the mix. Just tell us, tell us a little about the RX-8, the RX-8 Cup, and, and why they're so cool. I'm glad you asked. We are every year the only rotary powered engine here in the class. We're a non-turbo. We're in class C, which is against all these turbo cars. It's not fair. We complain, but we put up with it and we pedal as hard as we can. We just rev it harder. So the rotary is going great. RX-8 Cup is a category I started for uh, grassroots motorsport four years ago. It's going great. This car we're running here this weekend is an RX-8 Cup 
But all we did was change the uh, brake material for endurance and put a fuel system in it. That's it. And extra points for the sound you're making going around the mountain. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. It's a real family affair too. His wife Lisa is here. He talked about Tom, who will take the wheel of that car very soon. And Class C latest. Yeah, is that a problem for that car coming out of the chase? This is the Grand Prix Mazda entry, Jake Camilleri. Oh, no, they had contact. The wheel. Oh, wow. That's awkward. Yes. Touched on the 1% is earlier, Nolts. It's the second time the Forbes Wilson car has been caught up in an incident down there yesterday in qualifying with Matty Forbes Wilson and Mitch Madrin driving that car this weekend. So the Grand Prix Mazda gets back on the track as we are now officially one hour and ten minutes into this race. And so much to talk about already in today's High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. Some highlights for you of hour one here at the mountain. A ripper start by Tim Slade, but it was an hour that would be punctuated by dramas for some of the front-running BMWs. Some heartbreaking stuff. They got away, and they got away cleanly. Amazing sight. As more than 60 cars ran up the mountain for the first time. Terrific stuff. Well driven by everybody. This was the first big story. The pole sitter coming to a stop here, right in front of the pit straight here. And would bring out the tilt tray. They couldn't get the car into neutral, and Carl Begg was ushering, get me off the track, I need to get this back into the pits then. Anthony Stahl came to a stop. The car slipped into limp mode then. On the return out to the track, found the beach, which brought out the second safety car. Five seconds added to car number one at some point in the race, whether it's in a pit stop or in their race ending time for that unsafe release. And then this most recent incident, little nudge of the wall for the Lexus RCF. This has been the story of the day. Tom Sargent and Cameron Hill have blazed their way from the very back of the field and they are now second outright with a pit stop up their sleeve as well. Take a look for you at the leaderboard. As things stand, heading into our second hour, it's Grant uh, Denya and Tony Quinn who find themselves at the top. Now, just keep an eye on those colours, those coatings on the left of your screen there. They are in a different class to the X-Class cars, which were our outright uh, runners, if you will, in qualifying. So, as Richard Crail detailed before, they don't have as many compulsory stops to do in this race. This will be a fascinating final five hours, gentlemen, with some of those cars mixing it with those outright X-Class runners. So, James Hay leads the way in the VW Scirocco in Class C. Mitch Wooler behind the wheel of the B-Pro Racing Toyota 86 leads Class D. Matt Forbes Wilson in the SSB Commodore, the one we just saw uh, with contact at the chase on top in Class B in the big SSV. And Dave Worrell currently leads Class E. So that race within a race, and they're up inside the top 50, so they've made plenty of ground already. And we'll confirm those class leaderboards for you. The race within a race. And if you win Class C, D or E, it doesn't matter. You're a class winner. You'll stand on that podium this afternoon. You'll get a Bathurst winner's trophy. And for a lot of them, it will mean as much, if not more, than winning the Bathurst 1000 or the 12 hour. This Bathurst, is, yeah. Oh, what a part of the world, Rusty. We love coming here, don't we? Yeah, we certainly do. You it's... filmed that earlier this week. Bit of a, a was free race it? workout. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Matthew Nolte at his best, wasn't it? <laughs> we are, I mean, we, we're having a little giggle here. We want to have fun on our Easter Sunday. We are welcomed back wonderfully by the people of Bathurst every year for all of the events. Dramas to the right front of this car. It's a tyre. Torn away from the, the sheer gold entry down in the pits. We're just staying into that point, aren't we? We'll start to see these little niggling issues start to show their head with one hour and 15 minutes into the great race. How much did I see it just a few moments ago? Oh, look at that tyre. Yeah, just come in on the rim just a few moments ago for car 24. They've been off the road somewhere with that, with uh, all the debris caught up in there. Just a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Tyler Mecklem has just pitted, uh, former leader. So first of four mandatory stops for the Evo Lancer, which elevates Cameron Hill to the race lead. Uh, and the champ motorsport, Suzuki Swift, is off the road. Do we connect the dots here and wonder if there were between the two a, a lap traffic incident? Is this a drama for the Tyler Mecklen car? Bonnet is up. No, they were leading the race. Wow. Have we got that? That is that car, yep. is it not? Yep. 
That's car nine. Nick McLeod in two in car three. That's the big Ford Mustang. It's got some fluid over the, the guard there, hasn't it? So, and that doesn't look like a good colour either, does it? What's happened there? Down the bonnet as well. Going so well. They were just trucking along beautifully, weren't they? You don't want to be a key contender in this race. You don't want to lead, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm oh, worried man. for the 147. Cameron Hill's out in front now. It's only seven tenths of a second, but they've got 20 seconds back to the car mods BMW running back in third. Then the Russells, fourth outright, third in Class X. The safety car has been called once again here during the High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour. Another key contender in trouble here. And the 155, the Suzuki Swift with Steve McHugh, Michael Hopper, and Daniel Natoli has got away from the wall, but has stopped on top of the kerb, just on the exit of the DBA chase. It's by the High Tech Oils Bridge. Now comes the safety car once again. It's Michael Hopp behind the wheel. So they'll pick up Cameron Hill in car 147, who is the race leader. He's still at the top of the hill and Brent. diving into pit lane. Yeah, this is a smart call. Time to perfection to get their stop out of the way under safety car. Well, they, they've been making jokes and into pit lane as well for Cameron Hill. So this is smart stuff from these race teams. We've been joking about how much fun Quinny and Grant have been having all weekend, but deep down lies the heart of a serious race team, and they do know how to call a good strategy, and they've absolutely nailed this one. A couple of blokes who, who genuinely love their racing as well. We know how hard Grant did it in the early days of, of stitching together deals off the back of you know, television work and things like that. Tony Quinn getting set to jump behind the wheel. He's got a very big presence in this part of the world now as a circuit owner recently acquired Queensland Raceway as those of you who are close to the sport will know and in New Zealand owns the Hampton Downs and Highlands facilities which are just world class and recently acquired uh, what Aussies would probably say as Taupo uh, the correct pronunciation is Taupo which is um, sort of in central North Island and that's a beautiful track they'll do some great things with as well thank you to the Australian ambassador to New Zealand for <laughs> I try, I, try to learn. I try to learn the correct <laughs> pronunciation. Thank you. The field rolls into pit lane. So almost all of the leading contenders have dived into the lane. Grant Denny's in. Cameron Hill's in. Brad Carr stops. Uh, Drew Russell stops in the go-karts go-car. It's busy in pit lane. Jack Winks is in, in the Evo. Car number 77. John Bow has stopped. And that's... Uh, that's Craig, dad. Craig Denny. How good's that? Great to see Craig here. Grant's father and... A well-known motorsport luminary has been around the sport for a long time. One of the great broadcasters in our game as well. Worked with him back in the day on things like GTP production, was heavily involved in things like the V8 Ute series, wasn't he? And then series like TA2 he still has an involvement with. So here we go. So cars leaving the lane. It looks like they've got the Russell entry out just a fraction quicker. Now did, was there a driver change in this? I think car has stayed at the wheel. That would, right there. That would make sense to me, Rusty. I think you keep Brad in that car, Brad car, uh, for as long as you can in the first half of the race, especially under safety car. With all due respect to Brad, and he has been going very quickly this weekend, you, you want to keep your powder dry with a two-car combo, two-driver combo. You want to keep your pro driver uh, just put aside, tucked away on ice for the last double stint of the race. So you can expect to see Tim Slade in that car for the final two hours. And remember, he only did 30 minutes behind the wheel at the start of the race. So Tim still got three hours of driving time, give or take, uh, up his sleeve. So the Tom Sargent Cameron Hill entry makes its way back onto circuit. And I don't reckon I spotted a driver change there either. Looks like Cameron has stayed at the wheel of that car. And again, that makes sense given the relatively recent changeover in drivers there. Let's go, uh, let's go to pit lane. Here's Chris. Just bump in on a little family moment there and see if we can grab Grant Denya. Grant, you said yesterday that that car was a pig. I think it's not a pig anymore, right? I was lying. <laughs> I was foxing you all. Ah, got you got us. Suckers. Uh, no, it was a pig. <laughs> we just managed to tune it, but um, that was really good fun. I was pedaling that hard. Like, we got the old school manual gearbox while some of those, like, half strength soy vanilla latte Mustangs have got the old. Oh, paddle shift, Doug. I'm not strong enough to use a manual gearbox. So we're working hard out there, but it was awesome. 
And the performance in terms of the BMWs are dropping like flies in that first hour or so. I don't know if you've had a chance to really have a look at a timing monitor yet, but you guys are right in the mix here. Yeah, I didn't expect that, to be honest, but the car's flowing well, and all the gremlins we saw had at the start of the weekend are mostly going away, but we're having an overheating issue. So the moment I get up in the back of someone, uh, I lose a lot of power. It goes to instantly over overheat mode and takes a lot of power out of the engine, so I've got to have one shot at everyone. Otherwise, I've got to play it cool and just sort of find clear air on the road. So it's a bit sort of like a game of chess rather than just a flat-out race. But that's what production car racing is, and that's why I love it. Grab your old man. We'll get him to come in as well. Craig Denyer, you're responsible for his passion for motorsport, I'm sure. He'd be pretty proud of old Twinkle Toes, right? Mate, he's uh, he finished second in the 12-hour. He's been here in the 24-hour. He's done a lot of big races. And, you know, we just want we want a break. We want him to finish one, and we want a podium. <laughs> and the second with Tony all those years ago in the 12-hour was a great result, his best result. But, see, he cut his teeth on Massey Ferguson's, on John Deere's, <laughs> old international trucks at the farm. So it's all come together in this one event so this is the result we're after all right game on let's see how we go by then go well guys no pressure <laughs> early days early days i love the fact they brought up the farm i think it it's uh, it's more than a hundred years the the generational connection to the Denya farm. Awesome stuff. I'm getting cheeky little text messages from people saying, thank you for helping bolster the prices of Mazda RX-8s. I think I was referring to higher end, more race spec versions before, but people are screenshotting eBay and even in New Zealand, what they call trade me over there. I'm getting messages about RX-8 prices. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So with Denya jumping out, puts Tony Quinn into the car. They're leading the A2 naturally aspirated class right now. I think I did notice in the pit stops too was the Russell car, car 58, got out in front of the number eight. They were four spots behind when they came into the pit. So a key little moment there. They're running in position five right now. The safety car continues to lead the field around. More replays. Oh, oh, oh. oh no way. At the top of Mount Panorama. So wow. Some, some damage to the right rear there, but honestly, when you look back and you saw what happened to the likes of Kevin Bartlett years ago, that could have been way worse. Could have gone seriously pear-shaped by comparison to how the, how is the luck there. And unfortunately this, the right front. So Nick McLeod was behind the wheel of car three. He's been in since the start of the race. And then Garth Walden Racing going to work on car 24. Again, help with this safety car coming out so they've basically got this stop out of the way relatively pain free they did give up a lot of track position and this is what happened to oh, bring out the, the safety car no the teammates champ motorsport three car suzuki swift team i think that was friendly fire oh that'll be a good post-race barbecue Ooh. when we go down there and it's punched the radiator in that car so it's dropped all the coolant the Suzuki Swift has an enormous amount of it. <laughs> Here it is again. Just a slight hesitation coming out of the right-hander, and that was front-to-rear contact between the teammates. That gets awkward. Michael Hopp was behind the wheel of 155. He's the guy that's put this whole thing together and has worked so hard and so passionately to build this program. They got Daniel Natoli on board, who's been in production car racing for years and years. Uh, they were really confident about their ability to go and win the class. That was what they wanted to do. Um, it, they joked before it, we'd love to lock the podium out, but that might be a little bit ambitious. But uh, it was a really well-presented three-car outfit. Uh, unfortunately, they're down a car, and it could have been friendly fire that did it. And they've had a, a busy sort of few hours across Friday practice and so on. Some um, some gearbox issues for one of the cars. I think they've had two gearbox changes in one car. But you're right, expanding the operation from two to three cars for for this year's race. What a magic day at the mountain. Had a little message before as well from Justin Murray from Super Cheap Auto. It does look amazing from on high going down through there, doesn't it? Let's go back, we saw the scenic shots just before of how good this place is when you come here later in the year, but to see how green it is. I mean, it's been a lot of waterfall in this region in the last five to six months, but Bathurst looking resplendent as ever. As the safety car is out here, High Tech Oils Bathurst, six hour, one hour, 25 minutes into the race. If you've just joined our coverage, a later start due to heavy fog in the Bathurst area earlier today as the number four BMW returns to the track. Just on 21.5 degrees at the moment, light breeze coming across from the west. But it is picture perfect here on an Easter Sunday and, and great to see loads of families out around the precinct. 
which does look a million bucks. The Bathurst Regional Council spend so much time making this place look fantastic and it really does look a treat. Let's have another look at this. We're on board with the defending winners. So it was Rob Rubis behind the wheel and he was coming up on the scene of those two cars. So it was confirming the theory, a bit of friendly fight. Two Class E contenders involved and they were able to thread the eye of the needle and get through. So they did stop and Nick Perkat has jumped behind the wheel of car number one. So they're ninth outright. They remain on the lead lap of the race and he gets his first racing laps behind the wheel of the BMW in six hour spec. The last minute call up. Sort of been there and done that when it comes to Nick's career, hasn't he? We've all followed it so closely since he burst onto the scene. Australian Formula Ford champion, uh, raced in Porsche Carrera Cup, a Bathurst winner on debut with the Holden Racing Team. So famously, that incredible win at the Adelaide 500 for Lucas Dumbrell's team in the pouring rain. And the reason he's part of this is because uh, his mates were Shane Smollin and got the last minute call up. They were Carrera Cup race winners a couple of times in their pro-am races. One of the big stories was the Mitsubishi Lancer that came into pit lane and had a world of dramas after leading the race. And I think Molly Taylor's got more on that story. Tyler Mecklem was going so well. What happened? Uh, power steering line blue. Uh, it came out of the back of the fitting, which is one of those things that never happens. Happens just like last year. We we're doing well and just silly things that you you can't predict, to be honest. So yeah, we're going to try and fix it and get it back out and get uh, so Hadrian could do a few laps. But yeah, just a bummer. We were going really well and the car was the car was pretty good. So yeah, about mountain bites again. So the pump yourself, the itself you think is fine, might have run with a bit of fluid, but it's, it's just the getting the lines and obviously getting the clean up as well. Yeah, that's it. So it's just pop the, the line, we'll clean it up, but uh, we've got to see if the tape boys can do a weld on it and get us back out there. But um, yeah, it's just a bummer. Nothing like a bit of welding on the fly. Best of luck, we hope to see you back out there. And congratulations on the, the first part of the run. No worries, thanks Molly. Uh, I can also see Cameron over here in the, the McLeods. There was a bit of a moment, you can see the, the Mustangs getting uh, a bit of a, a wheel alignment here. We saw that massive moment uh, off the top. Sorry to interrupt your, your lunch, what do you got there? Uh, roast beef and cheese, it's actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> it does look really good, a bit of fresh bread. Yeah, yeah, no, the team's done a really good job with the catering. Um, just our race car's not going as, as good as we planned, but I mean the food's good, so I'm still happy. <laughs> I see you're just, just standing back, just keeping an eye on, on everything. So. How mad bad was the damage, and how long do you think you can get back out there? Uh, the damage actually isn't that bad. Like, the toes are in, in the rear, uh, from when he's nicked both walls. But, uh, yeah, well, I don't know. It depends how long it takes him to do a wheel on it. But as soon as that's done, we should be back out there and doing some more laps, getting some more laps for, for Nick and Cameron for future events. But, but not replacing the arms, just just resetting everything. Just resetting Pretty lucky. everything. Yeah, very lucky, actually. When you look at it like that, it's very lucky. Like. They went under the car, checked all the arms, so it looks all good, and hopefully it's all okay when we get back out. <laughs> the, the, the guys want to know if there's any Easter eggs in the catering. Oh, actually, that was in the GRM catering. We got all got an Easter money this morning. I haven't seen any hanging around here, but I'll go I'll sort of sniff that out now. Yeah, all right, well, let me know, because the Easter bunny was a bit stingy on the grid, so I'm still on the hunt. <laughs> I will let you know, yes, for sure. All right, well, good. Hope to see you back out there soon. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Trust Aaron Cameron to know where all the good food <laughs> options are. <laughs> Love it. It's a well-balanced diet. Roast beef roll, Easter eggs. Chocolate. Great yeah. combination. Fantastic. That's what we're living up here, <laughs> let's be honest. So, four hours and 30 minutes to go in the batter six out, an hour and 30 in the clock. So, well into the second hour of this race, and... We will go back to green flag running this time by the third safety oh. car will come in. That has got to be the best place to be. Who got into your room? Uh, that's just to be, let's just clarify here. Did you or I get to stay there this year? No. No, I wouldn't did, know did what the just looks like. Did left get to stay there this year? It's the Crail Suite. <laughs> the Crail Suite. I'm going to give you the hot tip, Greg Russ. <laughs> and about 400 of his best mates in there as well now by the look of it. <laughs> Who he didn't know were coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the hot tip. I'm definitely not on level seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love it. He's done a, done a super job over the past week, our mate. We don't mind giving him a bit of a wind-up, though. All right, we've got to reset here, recalibrate, get ready to go racing once again. Hope you're enjoying the live, uninterrupted coverage here on Stan. High-tech oils, Bathurst, six hour. One of our biggest years ever in terms of lineup. And at this phase or stage of the game, only an hour and a half in, man, we have had some headlines, some moments that we did not predict or see coming for some of the front-running cars. 
And I don't think it'll be the last time that the safety car, we will probably need a safety car refuel at some point, <laughs> will be on track today, gentlemen. I don't want that, to be fair, but I think it's going to be a busy day at the office. How are we going to do the highlights at the end of this race? We're going to get a short amount of time to do it. There's enough just in the first hour to cover it. Well, Rusty's going to be here doing podiums <laughs> until about midnight, so we'll just roll them in there. Yeah. So... Four hours and 28 minutes to go. It's a sprint race by Bathurst comparison, but there's still so much to play out, and it's Tristan Ellery who will lead the field back to green. So this team, the 99 BMW, elected not to stop during that sequence. They're only one pit stop into the race. So too Dylan O'Keefe in the AMG A45 that is second, the green and black car, and so too Jude Barguana, who's behind the wheel of the Burson TTRS that currently runs third. They're a little bit further down in the queue. There you go, down the inside of the McLeod Astra, or at least thinking about it. Behind that is Drew Russell in the Go-Karts Go BMW. He's fourth, Bradley Carr in car number eight is fifth on the road. And then you go back to Tony Quinn and Cameron Hill in car one, four, seven. So two stops in for Russell, two stops for Carr, the entry that he shares with Tim Slade and Cameron Hill got a, a second pit stop away in car 147 under the safety car, playing the smart strategy game. So they're already two of their six stops ticked off in the race, and that will be very pleasing to them. Busy pack of cars making their way up to the Worth Cutting here in our latest restart, the High Tech Oils Bathurst six hour. But a, bit, a bit of smarts kicking in though, Matt. Like it's busier than Pitt Street, you can see that. But everyone, you know, it's just a safety car restart. Let's have a little, you know, quiet think about how we go about this and they're just gradually you can see the Barguana car trying to make its way past the the VW Scirocco there it's about picking the moment and that's the perfect example because the Scirocco was picking its way through a, a slower class car so you get that massive speed differential but sometimes it's better just to wait wait till you get to Conrad straight you've got a couple of k's to deal with it all there's the McLeod Astra just bailing out of the way. They've got Brock Giblin in that car as well, sharing the driving duties. Jason Barguana, I think that is centre of screen on, on your yeah, right. Yeah, we could yeah, timely. Yeah. Timely, well done. <laughs> Our 2000 Bathurst winner. In fact, I think his car and Garth Tander's winning car on display here at the Bathurst Museum, which you must, what well, we were raving about Bathurst before, you must come and have a look at when you make your visit to Mount Panorama at some stage, just off the edge of the, of the final corner. Brad Owen, who is the curator there and runs the show over at the museum, was talking to Shane Smollin earlier in the week and said, if you win again, you'll just have to drive the car straight in. We'll, we'll clear a space for you. Double Bathurst winner, potentially. And this is the car 10 Astra going slowly. So the car we profiled earlier on, one of our Class C contenders, talking to Peter McLeod and how proud he was driving with his son. It's still Benjamin behind the wheel of that car. Now, on the, on the restart, it looked awkward going through Griffin's, that 10 car, so see something more to go with it as we've got the 86 car running Class D in the pits. Fuel stop, bit of a splash at the end there. So yep. keep an eye on what goes on with car 10. will make its way back to the pits as we get one lap in the books under the restart procedure here now. Couple of five-second penalties popping up on our timing screen. Two knots. We've got race control on the job to work out when we can actually take those. But Tristan Ellery's being given one as well, the race leader in car number 99. So five seconds additional handed over their uh, race time. But we're just trying to get word and confirmation for you whether they can serve that in a pit stop or whether it does actually get added to the race time because the pit stops are a, a time situation from pit entry to exit. Flames from the back of the local legends Mustang. Tony Quinn running seventh and leading the way in class A2. And the little Astra pulled off to the side of the road on Conrod Strait. I thought we might be able to still ease running. drop there. Yeah, still running. And I think he, he had clutch and gear shift movement all seemed to be working, so... Look how easy this is. That was the Cavich boys, Michael Cavich, behind the wheel of that bright yellow BMW M2 with the National Breast Cancer Trials support on that car, the yellow... Sponsored entry, there it is, heading up into the Worth Cutting. They have raised some terrific money, those guys, over time, in excess of $100,000 and continuing to do so. Currently, uh, is that 16th outright? 17th, 17th yeah. outright. And the association with Yellow 
yellow pages as we used to know it in, in back in the day goes uh, it's, it's a connection for them that goes quite a way back their dad ran a yellow pages sponsored vk commodore i think 86 great race from memory so it's a great family association and yeah they're very passionate about raising money for breast cancer research and car four who's been in the wars since well, basically the start of this race anthony Sewell has battled hard unfortunately they got it back onto the racetrack Sully is behind the wheel of this entry, but they're limping again and hopefully get it back to the plane. The frustration this has been after so much promise in the lead up. And Anton Di Pasquale still yet to drive today. So the McLeod team will get car number three back into the race. See you up to Aaron Cameron on the tools. But oh, oh. He's got the East Rigs. <laughs> yes. Yes. Should have known. The Easter Bunny delivers. <laughs> what a dream weekend he's had. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> he can drive a bit, that bloke. Can't he? Uh, amazing in super cheap auto TCR. He was in the S5000 last weekend at Albert Park and very, very fast. Well, in the Tasman series last year here, actually, at that panorama. And we're watching the Mustang pull away from Tube Park Rider. How's the horsepower from the 5-litre V8? The drag race up the hill. It's the all-wheel drive 5-cylinder turbo that they ran at Sydney last year to get their head around it in November before bringing it here for the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hours, prepared by Scott Barguada in the family workshop here in Sydney. Of course, Harry and Alf raced for over 50 years here. There's so much history and success in the Barguana family here at Mount Panorama, of course. Jace won the 2000 race here in the 1000, two-time New Zealand V8 Touring Car Champion. Of course, Scott was a 8-2 class winner in about the six hour. A lot of hype about this car. As far back as 12 months ago, when they announced they were gonna bring the Burst Auto parts out in TT and take on some of the big names here at the six hour. Now, Richard has been rightly in contact with Motorsport Australia Race Control as we get some clarity around that, that five second penalty rule. And our, our colleague, Shane Van Gisbergen, who would love to be here to defend this crown, has, um, has just messaged and reminded me about the fact that I think he got a five, a five second penalty yeah. last year and there's no real way to clear it. And so Shane's, you know, in his opinion, rightly pointed out that you know, he doesn't necessarily like that rule fair yeah that. so this is the class d leader in the b pro racing number 54 toyota 86 gts brett parish is behind the wheel and be a vastly experienced racer in queensland uh, plies his trade mostly in the hyundai xl scene at the moment which is some of the most brutally competitive motor racing you'll ever see and this is a good fight they lead the class at the moment the dive bomb over the top is uh, a fairly aggressive sort of move They've had a really solid weekend. They've got Jay Robotham as one of the drivers of all car 54 in Class D. They've been chipping away. Mitch Wooler was in the car earlier today. So really competitive class battle all the way through in Class D. It's the home of the Toyota 86s, but the MWM Racing outfit, the Mini Cooper from Midwest Multimedia up in Orange. Just a bit of dust there, Parrish. Just trying to get out of the way of some of the fastest cars. They've been very competitive all weekend as well. So that's going to be a really good fight that will evolve. We'll keep you up to speed with where your favourite team or drivers might be going. James Keane uh, shown down in 50th position at the moment in Class D. So they were leading it early on, but a few dramas for the Mini. As we jump back on board with Barry Linton and cast your mind back to the start of the race. This car with the fueling issues that they had has gone a long way down the field there 11 laps behind from what I can tell from where Tristan Ellery the race leader is at the moment so this is just a, a pride gaining exercise now for Berwick and his amazing Queensland team that have a, a huge track record here still never qualified outside the top six in every edition of the high tech horse Bathurst six hour Tim Lay remains remarkably competitive and let's perhaps just ride for a bit with the Queenslander and the BMW is negotiating some traffic and take us for a tour of Mount Panorama.
enjoying the clarity of the onboard sound as well. You can even hear the big V8 up the road ahead of it. You can hear the tyres protesting as Berwick hustles this car. And if you were eagle-eyed and you watched the data in that centre screen there, in excess of 250 kilometres an hour, going down Conrod Strait. Now, the Macell entry, I think, Scott, a drama and is slowing on the run down Conrod Strait, so we'll try and we'll just keep an eye on that. In the meantime, I think Molly has an update from the lane. I do. I'm with the 155 Suzuki Swift. We saw have a tangle with its teammate. The car's now back getting repaired. It's had some damage to the radiator and around the front corner. If we come around the corner, we can see uh, where it's tagged the wall. Uh, it's been a control arm, so of what could have been a problem, it's uh, all, all fixable damage. So they're working really, really hard to get that back out there. They will be back out there. We'll have a, a quick chat to Michael, who's driving the car. Still in, still in. Thank you. Thanks for having a chat. Tell, tell us what happened. Oh, mate, I was just uh, coming down the chase and uh Slipstreaming uh, Dave Bailey, he just got in the car, that was his outlap, and uh, we were coming both together out of the chase quite nicely, and yeah, all of a sudden he just slowed down, so I'm not sure if it was uh, maybe a missed gear or just not getting traction through that corner there, and unfortunately I, I punted our own car, I'm very, very disappointed. So you haven't had any words with, with them yet to, to know what happened from their side? No, not yet, no, I haven't had a chance to talk to Dave yet, he's in the car, not with the radio comms of course, but yeah, I'm just, just absolutely gutted for the team, you know, we just put so much effort to get here, and and you know, go out and then tag your own, you know, your own car. It's just you know, crazy. Well, we look forward to seeing you back out there. Cheers, thanks. We'll get it fixed. Sounds good. And if we just uh, spin the camera around, uh, we can see in the background over here the number four BMW entry that are really not, not having a good day. They've been backwards in and out of the pits. Uh, speaking with the guys, they had the issue with the lift pumps. They brought it back in and then they have changed the wiring for those lift pumps. So rather than going through the power distrib distribution module, uh, the PDM, they've gone straight to the ECU. So it's always getting power. Thought that would fix it. Come back in. That's not fixing it. And now they're doing a bit of a process of elimination to try and uh, to see what's causing that uh, that power loss um, to those lift pumps. Well done, Molly. Thank you. I'm intrigued about if there's a little element of commonality in some of these BMW issues here today. You can see that left rear kicking up off the deck. That's as about as quick as the Swift will go through turn one, and even using a little bit of a bit of rally style, two wheels off in the um, in the grass. The reason I flag that is because it's obviously taken a little bit of time, Richard, but but the Linton crew seem like they've been able to get on top of it. That car's going again, so I'd just I'd love to know what it is, how they resolved it. I agree. I think they will too. Yeah, absolutely. So that will filter down the lane, I'm sure. I've just been in conversation with Race Control, just about the penalties that have been applied, and we've been talking about them popping up on our timing monitor. So uh, five-second time penalties, and a lot of them are for passing under safety car boards and flags, and that will be, for the most part, fast cars passing slower cars, even when the safety car's out. And there's been a bunch of safety car restart procedures. None of our main contenders have been nobbled there, but a lot of restart procedure breaches. So that will be relating to weaving when the safety car lights are out or potentially overlapping before the control line uh, underneath the high tech bridge here on Pit Straight at Mount Panorama. Lots of people. And you often find that in this race, a lot of people, this is the only race they'll do a year. So they're not up to speed necessarily with all of the minutia of the rules and regulations around it. So it's easy to trip yourself up and make an error under a safety car and uh, running to the rule of those laws and the penalties will be applied. Lots of 86s slash Subaru BRZs in the field, and I've probably pronounced that wrong for those watching via Motorsport TV in uh, .TV in New Zealand. You guys say Subaru. <laughs> and these guys have had a little bit of a battle on their hands in uh, Class D in Car 11 on the back foot this weekend, but great work by the TAFE crew here, among others, to, to get them back in the, in the game. Well, here's our Group X leader. The Chelgrave entry, the 99. Go-karts, go entry, putting a bit of pressure on there too. Well, this Continuing. is a battle for the lead. They'd, yeah. swap, they'd swap positions twice on the previous lap while we had the updates going on there. So battle for the lead here, climbing mountain straight. So Tristan Ellery and Drew Russell. Drew's a massively underrated young driver. Spent some time in supercars, long time in Super 2 with the family team. Be absolutely thriving on this opportunity. Go-karts goes the family firm in... Newcastle, long links to there, and we heard from Wayne Russell at the start of the show, 
so proud to be racing with his boys. Did the opening stint of this race, and they are very much in contention. And this is the Jade No Jada BMW in the lane. Hodges behind the wheel at the moment. They were in the top five or six early on. They're a long way down the order now. Bonnet up on another BMW, but we've got a really good fight for the lead. Underway, Tristan Ellery and Drew Russell. Some well-known Bathurst surnames negotiating traffic at the top of the mountain. And this is a big issue for the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10. Lots of extinguisher foam down. Was this the car with issues at pit lane earlier in the race? I think it was. So this is not the first time that they've had some fueling issues. So there must be a dry brake coupling issue on the 55. Frankie Mamarella, who's been a, a long time supporter of the High Tech Girls Bath the six hour. But regardless, they're going to be okay and they'll continue onwards. And looking behind, uh, Cameron Hill has joined this fight. So this is now a three car battle for the lead, outright lead and class. And Cameron Hill has decided to fight into this. And Russell's gone through on Ellery Nolts. The fact it's four cars with O'Keefe, they're covered by a second heading down there. He's leading the A1 class, of course. He's the fourth car in your shot. And Cameron Hill goes through. Two cars, one straight race lead. He's back in front. And remember, has got that pit stop up his sleeve. The Ellery's have only had one pit stop in this race so far. Probably just need to highlight that performance too of Dylan O'Keefe in fourth place relative to the cars in front of him. They're doing a great job there at the moment in that, uh, that 8.45. And while we talk up this 147 car, if you just joined the coverage here today on Stan Sport, 61st on the grid yes. he started. And within 32 minutes of this race was inside the top 10. It was a remarkable drive from Tom Sargent from the back of the field. The safety cars have fallen well for their pit stop strategy to get those two stops out the way. So the first two cars on the road have stopped twice. Tristan Ellery only the one stop, so he jumped into that car at their first pit stop. Dylan O'Keefe just the one stop in the A45, but they're a class A1 car, forced induction, high performance, uh, extreme performance I should say, and they have only four mandatory pit stops to make in this race. So uh, they've the, got some time rusty up their sleeve. It, just to make your point, one of the, the great cars run by Garth Morgan Racing GWR, and they're punching well at the moment with Mike Sheargold. Ollie Shannon, fourth outright. Back to Drew Russell, second place. Proud, proud from Newcastle, Nova Castrians. They have a sensational day. Quickest lap of the race so far too. One minute, uh, sorry, big your pardon, two minutes, 27.33. They are having a good day. It's about the only thing the 147s what haven't got so far today, isn't it? Fastest lap. It's quick. It's not far off lap record pace, actually, in Bathurst's six-hour history. Set in the early running. So Hill, Russell, Ellery, O'Keefe, top four. Brad Carr still runs fifth. And the operation here in what we hope is an extended green flag run, stay on the lead lap. It's all you need to do. Make sure you stay on the lead lap and keep yourself running. It's the 99 losing ground here. Ground, yeah. They've just been passed by O'Keefe. A hesitation out of the Ford Ranger elbow. For Tristan Ellery, I wonder if they'll look to bring this car into the lane. And hauling them in as well is Nick Perkat, who's going along very nicely in car number one. He's fifth on the road and has just set that car's best lap of the race. A couple of laps to go on lap 33. Leaders on lap 36 as we speak. Last year, in fact, set a record with the number of cars on the lead lap at the finish of the race, which was 11. And into the lane comes car number 99. So they last stopped on lap 11. Ooh, had some trouble getting into the lane there and just grazed the, the sand trap there. So. He lost nearly 13 seconds on that lap alone to the guys ahead. Remember, he was leading this race just a couple of laps ago. It doesn't look entirely happy. It didn't look like it was tracking. Like right. It was no, crabbing, doesn't crabbing, it? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they've got broken toe link or bent, susp bent suspension arm, perhaps. Maybe a little bit of contact. And, and look at yeah, it. It's not tracking straight. That car's got a massive, massive issue with the suspension. Yeah, the, the right rear corner's towed out. That is not BMW factory standard. 
wonder if contact with a lap car or a brush of the fence across the top of the mountain would be the two obvious candidates. So they'll get the driver change out the way first. So the pit stop rules are that you can refuel and driver change at the same time and then any other work goes into the racing car. Now he's got his he's hands furious. Yeah, he's furious. And let's, let's go to the lane, Molly. I managed to track down Vivek from MRF Tyres. You are the tyre supplier for every car at the Bathurst Six Hour, so big weekend for you. How many tyres have you bought and fitted for this weekend? Uh, Molly, thanks uh, Thanks to talk to you first. And uh, this has been an unbelievable weekend this year. The ARG has put up a very, very good show. Uh, we have about close to about 65 cars on the grid. Uh, to answer to your question, we bought in about 1,200 tyres. And I think we take home about 100, I think, 100 or 150 back home, yeah. And I have to shout out to my boys who, who did a really, really a good job pumping them up from Wednesday morning, 8 o'clock, and still working, So, which, which is very good. Unreal. No, no rest, and I, I don't want to be the one taking stock of all those numbers and trying to keep, keep uh, record of all of that, but how important it is for MRF to be involved, you know, at the grassroots level of motorsport, but then also all, all the way up the top? Uh, th this is a very, very important uh, uh, race for us, you know, where we so showcase the exact product what we manufacture for a normal car, you know, um, for people who are driving a BMW M4 or a Suzuki Swift. So this is our target market for us, for MRF. This is our philosophy where we want to supply tires to the production cars rather than a Formula One cars. And the rally cars. And the rally cars. <laughs> Our, our, our motto is the tires you race are the tires you buy you know what I mean so it's like what we say you know you race on Monday sorry Sunday and you buy on Monday you know similar to that this is our focus category and that is why we are putting in a lot of effort a lot of investment and uh, it's been awesome working with the ARG as well uh, and we are very very pleased very very pleased great to see you and congratulations and thank you for all your support yeah absolutely and also i want to shout out to all the people in mrf there are people watching in india as well you know we have a very limited population 1.3 million so you know it's fantastic uh, thank you very much thanks for being Cheers. often seen around rally events and all sorts vivek we go back and have a look at our a1 class leader there in Dylan O'Keefe. Meantime, here in the lane, car one. Driver change time. Nick Perkout jumping out. You could tell that by the, the trademark helmet. We've been riding with Nick in car. Prestige Connects driving suit. That lets you know it's Shane Smolin who started the race for these guys. Shane's been a, a guy that's been around things like Carrera Cup for many years. Very proud to have won this race last year. Very, very you know, special moment in uh, in his career. And in business terms, he and Rob Rubis have done some great things. Rob on the, the more or less the restaurant side, this is his game of golf, if you will. And Shane's had a, a, a very strong presence in real estate and things around Northwest Sydney over the years. What we're seeing here with this team is a situation of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, because they are almost identically mirroring the strategy they used last year to win the race. So last year, Shane Smolin started went to lap 14, they plugged Rob Rubis in, he went to lap 32. SV jumped, SVG jumped in for a brief stint from lap 33 to 41 last year. It was only about 25 minutes. And then Smolin and Rubis did the bulk of the midday stuff and Shane jumped in for what sort of worked out to be a triple stint really uh, for the run to the end to get all of his driving time out of the way. So right now they're mirroring that. Nick Perkat's just done a short stint in the early phases of the race. I don't think we'll see Nick now until the last driver change they do in this car. But it worked for them last year, so why not again? We should just uh, quickly say that we were we were gutted that Shane Van Gisbergen couldn't be here with us this weekend to defend that crown. And on a on a kind of selfish note, we were really looking forward to seeing him at the wheel of a Trans Am too. So. He's on the mend and doing all the right things as far as ISO is concerned and regularly messaging us here. So he's clearly watching the, the coverage. And uh, thank you, mate. We know you'd love to be at the wheel. That's that's what you uh, that's what your preference would be. Right. Kind, of, kind of form he's in. Every other driver in the paddock went, oh, we'd love to see him here. But gives us a shot. He's in amazing touch. Isn't it's he? A joy to watch his driving. This is the Kavich BMW M2 competition. So this car turned its first competition laps on Tuesday night at Sydney Motorsport Park last week. It's first laps at speed. They just got this build finish at GWR 
shook the car down and it's been a, a learning process for Ben and Michael Kavic over the course of the weekend. It is in theory the same spec as the car that currently leads the race as the 23 BMW peels off into pit lane. Remember, they are a long way down. Just circulating the car. Pride. Yeah. So we saw Will Davison on standby there before for the changeover. So obviously diving in once Berwick jumps out of the other car. In terms of the Linton garage, this is the the Ellery entry and rightly the attention is on that right rear where we thought the car was crabbing before now they released it from its stop which we sort of did a double take because we weren't sure that the problem had been addressed I didn't recall them seeing looking at the actual right rear of that car when it initially came into the pits in time the 23 is in so we're approaching the two hour mark of this year's high tech oils Bathurst six hour and loads to talk about, isn't there? This will shock you. Shane Van Gisbergen has the full setup at home. <laughs> Timing, everything going. I know there'll be magic. Awesome. They're looking good so far. They've got that five-second penalty for an unsafe release hanging over their head, but they encountered that penalty situation last year and managed to deal with it. No worries. So Will Davison will get some laps aboard car 23. So at least he'll get some seat time and experience this with Barrick Linton and Tim Lape. It was an interesting move for this team. This is the first time they've run three drivers in their car. It's It's been Linton and Lay since the start of this race, but elected the to go the three driver option just for that strategic flexibility that they saw with the sister car run out of the same stable and Carnival One that won the race last year. So we will get some seat time now. Remember 120 seconds pit stop time. So on the clock drives out of pit lane and the vastly experienced man will get some miles in the Bathurst six hour. Of course, a two-time winner of the great race in October and a massively successful supercars career. It's been a while between wins and a frustrating start to the season this year with lots of pace, lots of poles. Uh, still looking for that first win since the 2016 Bathurst 1000, but it doesn't feel far away. He's been driving really, really well. Unfortunately, I don't think it'll be today. So that's the scene at Mount Panorama. The high-tech oils back the six hour. We're two hours into the motor race now. And it's been dramatic as always at Mount Panorama. Here's how it's played out if you're just joining us. A wild moment at Reed Park for the McLeod Mustang. How and lucky were they? Very is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> this was the view from Rob Rubis, wasn't it? Behind the wheel of the two little Suzuki's, the teammates taking each other out and you heard the Mia Culpa from Pit Lane about that one. And then this, a four car battle for the race lead. And Cameron Hill charged his way from fourth to first in the space of a couple of laps and now leads the race by almost seven seconds. And if you're only just joining us, this car after qualifying fastest was excluded from qualifying for a ride height infringement. Started last, they've made up 62 positions and they now lead the high-tech oils back to six hour. <laughs> That's unbelievable <laughs> to say that. It's made up 62 positions and they lead the race. Had some trouble with that uh, that Subaru BRZ, the Kiwi oh. entry and a bit of dramas for those behind them as well. Trying to find a way past at the final turn after two hours on Easter Sunday. This is how things look in terms of our leaderboard for the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour from the rear of the grid. Tom Sargent, Cameron Hill lead the way in Class X. Great job being done by Dylan O'Keefe, Sheargold and Shannon there to be not only leading Class A1, but third outright. Jake Camilleri and Scott Nicholas, 14th outright in the Mazda 3 MPS and leading the way in Class C. That is a giant killing proportions of uh, a performance of Bathurst proportions there. Uh, work your way down to 29th is the leader in Class D, that's the Honda Integra Type R, and it's Ben Crossland behind the wheel of that car. And you can see the leader in Class E, McMaster and Worrell, in the Mazda 3 SP25. So they're 38th outright in the high-tech oils back to six hour of 2022. And the class leaders, which is always a story in this race, fight for the various podium finishes in X-Class. It's Cameron Hill that leads the way. Dylan O'Keefe remains behind the wheel of the A45 AMG and third outright PS, uh, Tony Quinn in A2 in the Ford Mustang. Matt Forbes-Wilson and Mallard Class B leads the way in Class B. 
and we touched on the Camilleri Nicholas car, that Mazda 3 MPS. Huge performance from that very experienced production car team. The destination is New South Wales, the beautiful Central West Bathurst, three hours drive west of Sydney. So much history in this part of the world. It's a beautiful place to visit over Easter. Come in and take the sights, take in the sights, enjoy some beautiful food, wonderful hospitality. And while you are here, come to the six hour, the Easter races. This car had some gearbox issues with a, he's got a bumper issue at the moment. A rear bumper issue. Oh, race control won't like that. No. They will look at that very quickly and say, no, bad sportsmanship flag will need to come out and get that car into pit lane. Rusty, I'm delighted to tell you that uh, a lot of people will have grown up watching Bathurst coverages with not just your voice, but the man who's rotated in to join us for this middle stint in the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour. It's a very good afternoon to our host with the most here on Stan Sports <laughs> Speed Series coverage, Matty White. Good afternoon, Matty. Crowsey, Rusty, great to be with you. Is there any better place than to be sitting here on Easter Sunday watching six hours of this incredible race around this amazing racetrack? It's been an incredible start too. Uh, so much drama as we thought. Um, normally we say just add water to motorsport and it all falls apart, <laughs> but we haven't needed any this time around. I've been sitting back over the last couple of hours that thing needs a uh, little bit of a jig up before they get it back in but I've been sitting around the last couple of hours and making some observations some observations of the first two hours of the six hours so as you've spoken about uh, the car in the lead at the moment what now 62 places they've made up since the starting car 147 so Thomas Sargent 50 plus places for his first stint from rear of the grid up to fifth I'm voting Thomas Sargent as my Uber driver who's going to get me through <laughs> peak hour traffic. <laughs> peak hour traffic, Tom, I, I need you to just weave your way through this. Can you get me to work on time and maybe pick up 50-odd places along the way? It's the run over the Blue Mountains on Easter Monday that you need him to get you to the airport on time. Uh, yeah, it was a magic drive, wasn't it? Uh, with more on a really impressive performance, the Ellery's have been going well, and Chris Stubbs can tell us more about that. Thanks, Richard. How quickly things change. We know that in production car racing. Tristan Ellery, 15 minutes ago, you were leading the race car, and now you're here with me, and you're pretty dejected. Tell us yeah. what happened. We could see it looked like there was a problem with the rear of the car when you handed over. Yeah, I just uh, lost the rear of the car coming into the dipper there, and just uh, the rear broke out. There's too much going on. Couldn't catch it, but uh, just a driver error. Um, you know, the mountain bites hard, and we just got a, we've got a somewhat straight race car. Dad's in the car now, so got a bit of a job to do we don't like to make it easy so um yeah look safety car will get us back in it we'll get a lap back and uh we'll just keep on keeping on and hopefully uh, by the end of the race we're able to make up the time that i've just lost so yeah. we're loving watching the family compete fair to say you were disappointed with yourself the hands on the head when you got out i think you went to speak to your brother and he's like not now time will heal wounds but it's it's disappointing isn't it how bad's the damage to the car and then you copped a penalty while we're setting up for the interview yeah so i didn't realize the penalty i'm not sure if it was me that sped through pit lane or dad but um yeah we've got a five second penalty as well to add salt to the wound but um look yeah it's you know the highs in motorsport are very high you feel great you're on top of a cloud and the lows are really low so uh, we're gutted, we're dejected, you know, we had a real shot of winning this. We still do, but um, we just have to make it a little bit harder for ourselves. Um, we've got a, a lot of ground to cover, so, you know, Dalton's going to be all right. He's just got to reset and he'll jump back in the car hopefully soon. Um, yeah, and hopefully there's not too much damage to the car. Felt like a little bit right hand down. A little bit of a gear miss issue as well some, through some of my stints, but um, just got to manage it and bring the car home. Plenty of people not in the race at this point already. You still are, so all the best for the rest of the day. Thank you, Subsea. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Tristan Ellery, who is unmistakably a chip off the old block, <laughs> isn't he, in terms of his dad, Stephen, who's driving the car. Dalton is a part of that team, Tristan's brother. And Dalton's been on double duty this weekend, racing in Trans Am as well, although had some gearbox issues with that car. Ellery, Ellery and Ellery, can we help you? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of other observations that I've made in the last couple of hours the first couple of hours now we always talk about rusty since you and i have been coming here for over a couple of decades about how much experience matters and those that can come here and, and tame the mountain by 
pure luck or just pure speed, but experience counts around here. And I was watching closely the local legends entry of Grand Denia going, this guy is driving around here like he drives it every day. Because he, he does. does. <laughs> he does. Experience matters, all right, especially when you live over the back and you spend every day there. And there's also been a bit of word around Twitter that uh, Matt Nolte and the Easter Bunny have not been seen in the same place <laughs> twice. That'll uh, get back. <laughs> so I'm just saying that the last couple of hours I haven't seen the Easter Bunny. Now Matt Nolte stepped out of the commentary box. I'm wondering if we see the Bunny make an appearance. Read it to that what you will. Do, do, you, do you do this for radio when you've got your radio show? Because I'm like, if I want to get on the open line, can I, if you've, if you've floated a topic that's interested me, can I jump on the open line? That's right. You can have your say on that one at any time. But I've got to say, Crailsy, one of the calls of the first couple of hours, that this, this is the modern day Bathurst of old, isn't it? And that was a, a really good summation, I think, of, of what was unfolding before our eyes there especially off that rolling start and seeing so many cars snake their way around the mountain and then you go up and down the pit lane like we've been doing the last couple of days and those wonderful stories and the community spirit uh oh more trouble for the Sharon entry so they're 37th they're about 13 laps down after all their various dramas today so they're out of contention and another control alt delete and another good call from race control to let them try and get that car re-fired and get it back to pit lane without going to a safety car again. So we remain with the three safety cars so far today. The Barguanas are in the top 10. They're currently seventh in the Burson Auto Parts entry and I think they're second in Class A1. So doing a super job at the moment in the Audi TT. Yeah, they're just in front of Mark Griffith. Will Brown will drive car number 19, the A45 AMG. Will's been enjoying himself. I saw him at dinner last night, chilled out and relaxed and uh, doing the double duties with the TCR car. Here's the Mazda RX-8. Uh, I've got word through that their prices have gone up <laughs> four or five hundred percent in the last two Sorry. hours. Just two hours alone. I was referring to race cars, well presented, beautiful ones, not necessarily ones that you might buy unadjusted. Here we go, riding with you, Bagwana. Across the top. It's an incredible part of the circuit, Rusty, isn't it? It's one of the rare parts of the circuit, too, where the car is actually on a horizontal plane because you're either going up or you're going down at this 6.213 kilometre circuit. Now the downward dance starts, so they don't get much of a time up the very top there to get a sense of exactly where they are before all of a sudden, sudden they're snaking and dancing and pushing and fending their way through this incredible part of the circuit before it unleashes you to the Ford Ranger elbow and then you're looking down Conrod straight. Hey, we're going to take you to pit lane. It's been a bit of a battle for the Renault Megans run by Colin Osborne Motorsport this weekend. They're down to one car, but on the 30th anniversary of running two cars here for the first time, Colin has at least been able to, to take part in the race, Molly. Yeah, you're right. It's been a, a tough weekend. Engine issues with the Renault and now some brake trouble too. Yeah, we've been compromised uh, most of the day trying to drive the engine to keep the temperature under control. And that means taking boost out. So we're not nowhere near as fast as we would like to be. But just after pit stop, uh, Rick reported that the brake pedal was getting long and it's getting really long. Um, so, you know, you can't drive around out, out there like that. So we've had to bring him in and see if we can find the cause, whether it's a loose wheel, uh, you know, damaged wheel bearing. At, at the present time, it just looks like the brakes need a bleed, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, is the steering rack loose or is there some, some other problem? But the boys are trying to diagnose it and get back out. Well, when I spoke to you yesterday, you thought that you weren't even going to start the race. So I guess, I guess that's a positive. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, that's a positive to take away. You know, we have really had a wretched weekend on what Rusty identified earlier as our... 30th anniversary year so it would have been really nice to take away a, a result that was really special for the guys but it isn't going to happen <laughs> <laughs> that's motorsport but thanks Colin we'll just might run around uh, to the car we'll just see Rick still sitting in the car we'll just see if we can get him to push the brake pedal down because you'll be able to see uh, a bit clearer just just how big this issue is Hey Rick, are you able to just push the brake pedal down so we can see uh, how long you got? They've, they've, they've just bled it, it's better now, but um, I think there's a wheel bearing problem um, because it's getting bad pad knockoff and on left hand there's a bad vibration, so I think it's they can't find anything, but there is definitely something drive shaft or wheel bearing. Have they got another upright or something they can just put in? Um, they probably have, but so far they haven't found the problem. So. 
All right, well, we'll hope to see you back out there. No worries, thank you. I'm just going to go chat to Zach because I think he's going to steal your seat next year. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. We'll see you. We did see uh, Zach there a second ago, but I think he's, I think he's run off, so um, we'll, uh, we'll follow that. Oh, no, he's here. Stay with me. We'll just uh, try and jump over a few tyres. Zach Bates. <laughs> Are you trying to hide? You saw the cameras come and hide, but don't do that. I just said to Rick that you're going to steal his six-hour seat next year. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, no. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there just to create uh, a good conversation over the dinner table. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, obviously they're having trouble um, throughout the weekend. There's been trouble, but um, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to getting in the Trans Am at Sydney. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool, a cool class, and I'm um, really looking forward. But apart from this, the uh, six hours have been an awesome event. Um, yeah, can't wait. Great to see you here, and can't wait to see you out in Trans Am. Thank you. We want to switch to what's happening in the race now, but just a quick cheerio to Zach's mum, who both Maddie and I worked with uh, eons ago in motorsport, and Alison Drower too. Hope you're well. The Bates and Taylor families go a long way back, don't they? Yeah. So uh, yeah. while they're getting in and amongst it. Um, worth picking up on this particular entry, it's the number 47 BMW 130i. It's one of the most raced cars in Bathurst endurance racing and I'm talking about the 12 hour as a production car race and then the Bathurst 6 hours since then. It's a car owned by Gary Minnell. They had all sorts of dramas early in practice and they actually started one position further back than the Cameron Hill Tom Sargent entry. So they've dragged themselves up the leaderboard, they're third in Class C and just outside the top 30 overall. So Aaron Zerafos is behind the wheel. He's the son of Jim Zerafos. He used to race a, a Lotus in performance car racing. Uh, Gary Minnell, who owns the car, and John Fitzgerald, the drivers. It's a, a really good story. They're another team that's battled through the adversity, worked their way from the back of the field. And as the day's gone on, they've brought themselves into class contention. So they're in the mix in Class C, which is still being dominated by that uh, Grand Prix Mazda 3 MPS. But really good tail. A, a car that would know its way around this place without a driver. You could just send it on its way and it would do laps. But um, Gary, ironically, has owned this car throughout its entire duration. Never got to race it here. And he finally got to drive it on Friday. And so I, I, I now know what my car's like at Mount Panorama. I finally can tick that box. So uh, a really cool story and great to see them chipping away. Uh, a cool story too is the performance of the A45 AMG that our good mate Will Brown's part of and I think Chris Stubbs has found it. Bit of an issue here with the car at the moment though, a very experienced combination being Rod Salmon, Mark Griffith and Will Brown. Will Brown was just on all fours underneath the car, that's not a good sign mate, what's going on? I don't know why, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but uh, <laughs> no, we think we've done a rear diff by the sounds of it. Um, it just started really knocking for Griffo uh, coming out of the cutting and uh, yeah, it looks like it's that. So not a quick fix, so we probably won't get back out there at this stage if that's, if that's what it is. What have you made of the experience so far this weekend? It looks like you've been enjoying yourself. Yeah, it's been good. We've had a good run. We were running eight then, and I was just going to do the last two and a half hours home and uh, hopefully bring it home strong. But uh, it's one of those things running a production car, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You try and, uh, you know, make sure you don't have any of these little gremlins. But as we've seen from a lot of the BMWs, there's just stuff goes wrong. You're not alone. You're in very, very good company. You'll come back and do it again? Yeah, yeah, I'll be back and doing it again hopefully next year. It's uh, always a good event, and whenever you can drive something at Bathurst, you're having a good time. Been great seeing you here, mate. Enjoy the rest of the, the day. Sit back now and have a beer and relax. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Jason Bagwana, a bit of a precautionary tyre change there. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, Jude just said that he had a bit of a vibration, so um, we always want to put a tyre on it at least during the race, but we've gone for two just in case. Everything's really going well at the moment. Would have been nice if it was under yellow, but anyway, um, we had a bit more fuel up our sleeve. But yeah, look, it's all going well at the moment. We're two stops down. We've only got two to go. So, and as they say in this business, a long way to go. <laughs> You're exactly right. And in terms of tyres, changing those two tyres, do you anticipate that you'll do any more tyre changes or that'll see you through the rest of the race? No, I think we'll probably put one more right front on it. I mean, we've seen some cars have issues and, and, and look, the tyre's working really well. It's just a matter of, you know, being in the right position at the right time and put ourselves in a strong position for the end of the race. I mean, it's good to see the cars sit in the top 10 there. There's a lot of cars around here with a lot of straight line talent, which we don't quite have, but our cars were really good across the top. So, you know, late in the day, it'll come to us and we'll see how we go. And the boys are having fun out there? Oh, they're smiling. Juice has uh, done two hours. He's happy as anything. Ben's in there now. He's been sitting with his helmet on for an hour. He just can't <laughs> wait to get out there. So, no, it's going well. Oh, is that you sitting there with your helmet on too, just in case? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Cheers.
Bagwana, 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 can we help you? <laughs> They've dominated pit lane. I love that chat, Rusty, that you had when you went in there. And there was, what, three odd generations of Bagwanas. And all along the line, the Bagwanas are the same. They've got a smile on their face. They love the world of motorsport. They love this place. Obviously, uh, Bugs there, a previous winner of the Bathurst 1000. I remember being up on the back of the podium that day back in 2000, and he was jumping around like he just won the great race, which he had, yeah. which was just incredible. But they've got such a love of motorsport and, and a pure enjoyment about what they do day in, day out. And a shout out too to the man we saw before that, Will Brown, for somebody who enjoys the whole theater of the thing, the whole game that they play, and also the positivity around it. I mean, he offered up the, the plane, the personal plane for Matty Stewart's team to go exactly. and get that part. You know, they don't have to do that. And even when things aren't going well, they step up and they still smile because they know that any day at Bathurst is a good day, especially if you are behind the wheel of a car. And when you're looking at sites like this from our Pertec uh, high up camera, well, take a look at that. Does it get any better than that, folks? It's a stunning day. Just heard word that 44. So this is the HSV that was stopped on the run up to Griffin's Bend a little bit earlier in the race. Uh, they have now stopped at a more awkward position. So just before the kink on the run into the Worth cutting, we were just looking at the Class B leaders. Oh, they've got it refired. Good news. And once again, race control just letting them try and self-service and now just have to merge into traffic safely and get themselves out of harm's way. So the 44 HSV Commodore as uh, uh, the 29 back in pit lane. Haven't they had a, a tough day? We heard from Dave Razum earlier on in the race. With the rear bumper bar torn off that car. One of a, a myriad of problems. Um, to touch on Matt Forbes Wilson and uh, Mark Mallard, they've done a really good job in Class B and they're up to 17th outright. And that is a, a bog stock SSV road going Commodore, not a HSV. That's the, the, the entry level version Commodore performance car. They've done a really nice job, reliable performance. And Mark Mallard is from New Zealand. He's been one of those who've been able to, with the change in border rules between the two countries, uh, come over and it's ticking a box. He's always wanted to come and drive at Mount Panorama. He's been raving all week. Tony Dalberto, you can see on the left of your screen, is jumping out of the car and that's what we've been talking about, Mark Mallard. He was just so thrilled. It's been a, a dream for him. He's watched Bathurst races. He's raced at all sorts of circuits in New Zealand, I should point out uh, as well, but this is big box tech. 17 outright, there's a huge performance in what at the time when we used to build cars here in Australia was a, a $50,000 V8 Holden Commodore, Matty, and they just continue to circulate. It's one of the things I love about this race is you follow these stories throughout the day and you look at the results at the end of it and go, 15th outright, that's incredible, what a performance. And they sometimes creep up on it, but it's the quiet achiever performances in a race like this that sometimes go unheralded, but at the end of the day, they're on the podium, they've got a class victory or a class podium and they will celebrate as hard as anyone who's won the race outright. It's a really interesting time of the day, I find. I'd like your opinion on, on this from both of you because We've had our first couple of hours of this race. Now, the natural adrenaline of the first couple of hours is going to get you across a whole heap of things. We had a bit of stop-start there. The Gremlins got into the BMWs. But those who go out there from the start are firing on adrenaline. So they are absolutely pumping. Now we're in the middle part of the race. What is it? Just gone 2 o'clock. So some of the people have had a bit of lunch. You're getting to that part of the day. We've done driver changes. The cars are starting to feel a little bit awkward. We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. We're in the hard part of this race. So for me, this is a really interesting part of the race because the adrenaline will kick in again at the back end. When conditions change, we'll be uh, watching the sun start to set. But this is the time when little mistakes can start to creep in. It's human nature, isn't it? In the middle of the day, we start to get tired. You take your eye off the ball. And if you take your eye off the ball, Rusty, here for one minute, it doesn't matter if you're thinking about the next Tim Tam that you're going to get when you finally get back into pit lane. It can spell big trouble. Are there Tim Tams in pit lane? <laughs> I've really got to go. <laughs> hey, um, to, you know, I mean, just to, to your point there, with experienced people behind the scenes, when you've got a Paul Morris or a Roland Dane or, you know, people like that of that calibre in certain teams, or if you've got drivers like John Bauer that are a part of the mix, that's when those sorts of guys, at moments like you're talking now, yeah. absolutely are worth their weight in gold. Just to settle it all down, keep it in perspective and, and remind everyone how far we've got to go. Molly? 
feel about chocolate with you today? I don't know. Don't know what it is, but uh, I've got Aaron Russell. Aaron, you're getting ready for your first stint. Uh, how many laps do you reduce on standby in case there's a safety car? Yeah, I mean, we're in whenever we can now, so if there's a safety car, we're in. I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of the cars stopping and starting everywhere on the track. It makes me get up, get ready, and then I have to sit back down again. But, no, the big bro, he's done a good job. Dad did an awesome job this morning, so just go round and round and see where we are in the last hour. And what's the feedback from the guys? How's the car feeling? Yeah, he seems pretty happy at the moment, so we weren't too happy after qualifying, but seems to be doing a really good job now, so he's pretty happy. He's not complaining too much like he usually does. And sitting of, uh, speaking of sitting down, uh, can you just show us your little uh, seat, seat comforter you got there? <laughs> so we were talking earlier about the seat inserts for the, for the driver changes. This is obviously yours. How, how big a difference is there between you three? Uh, they're about 100 mil taller than me, but I'm really short in the torso and the legs, so yeah, it's a bit awkward, but you just deal with it. Um, I get sick of carrying it, so I thought I'd sit on it. Makes it heaps easier. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the booster seat. Good luck out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Molly. Great insight. We did touch on the, the seat inserts early on. I roped in Aaron earlier in the weekend. He gave Jonathan Thurston a tour of that car. Oh! Uh, he was here. That's uh -oh. an impact at the top. No, it's not. It's an explosion. That's uh, Lockie Gibbons, I think, behind the wheel. Is that the 777? Look like it, yes. That's at Reed Park, and that's had a massive drama. So they will have the yellow flags flying. He's just got into the little escape road there, the gate that links into the McPhillamy Park campground, and he's actually done a really nice job in getting it out the way. So the breeze that's coming across from the west today here in Bathurst will hopefully clear that smoke so the visibility will be okay. And confirming Lockie Gibbons, that car was inside the top 10. They were fourth in class A1 as they were running and ninth outright in this Mitsubishi Lancer revolution. Could have been forgiven for thinking the fog had returned. Yeah, yeah right. that was massive. The point I was just about to make to what Matty was talking about, about this middle stanza of the race, 52 minutes into a green flag run, so it's the longest green flag stint we've seen. In fact, this year all last, a lot of safety cars last year. What it's done is split the field, and we're in position where a couple of cars are in danger of going a lap down right. before the next round of pit stops, including car number one. So Shane Smollins, two minutes and 24 seconds behind Cameron Hill now. Average lap time in the two minute thirties at the moment. Cannot afford to drop a lap. Needs to keep that thing on the same lap as the race leader before the next round of pit stops. So that's what the green flag running does in the middle of these races. It, split, it spreads the grid and it makes your strategies unfold a little bit earlier because if you go a lap down, it makes it really difficult to come back later in the race. So this team will be very cautious and keeping an eye on where come, uh, car 147 is in Cameron Hill. I think that was going to be coming out of Griffin's Bend behind. So that'll be a story worth following. The track position will be key to make sure that your car's on the lead lap when you put Nick Perkett in for those final two stints later today. Gee, that's an awkward spot for Lockie Gibbons to have his car lunch itself for those behind him, not just him, but those behind him because yeah. that enormous amount of smoke, you do not want to come up there sight unseen. Can, can we just give a little shout out to Ian Saltieri, currently 19th. He is up oh, yeah. 40 positions oh. from the back of the grid. He and uh, Sam Ussel in that, uh, that Volkswagen Golf R. And we covered that story earlier today about the replacement gearbox. Now, they're not leading their class, which is hotly contested, I should point out, Class A1, but that's a mighty performance to be up to 19th outright when they had only just finished putting that, uh, that gearbox in at something like 1.30 this morning. They thought they were out at, at 4.30 yesterday afternoon. They thought it was yep. game over. Put it in the truck, we're done. And uh, here they are circulating and doing a ripping job. And, and thanks to a mate of a mate of a mate. mate. <laughs> I mean, they're right next to our broadcast garage, so I was watching them intently, and you spoke to Ian, we spoke to the team at length yesterday, and by 4.30, like you say, when Molly went in there and had a chat, it was it was game over. And then all of a sudden, a couple of them disappeared for a bit, went into town and came back. Now, they, they'd obviously gone and raided the local auto shop because they had <laughs> cans of spray, they had bags of rags and all that kind of stuff. They had a case of beer. And to me, that said they were settling in for a long night. So they got the part, the mate of the mate of the mate, and look at that. Here they are out there. It's the kind of car that's configured, Matty, to, um, in horsepower terms, maybe not be as strong as as some of those that it's up against in the class, the likes of the, the Audi or the, the Mercedes A45, for example, but they just thought it would be a really rock-solid, reliable little package. And the gearbox issue 
actually caught them by surprise. They did not think they would be confronted by something like that this weekend. So terrific job. And to claw back that many spots is, uh, is very well done. This car has just stopped a green flag pit stop, compulsory stop for Bradley Carr. Remember sharing with Tim Slade, this car led the race early. So they've gone 24 laps on that stint, most of it under green flag running. They stopped under the last safety car. That's about bang on for fuel economy for these cars. So they've gone quite a long way into the race. Brad Carr in a double stint now and will push on further into the motor race before Tim Slade jumps in. So they've got the two driver option here. So we touched on the numbers, the important numbers to think about with these cars is the maximum driver time for any one driver is three hours and 30 minutes. If you do three hours and 29 and 59 seconds, that's fine. If you do three hours, 30 minutes and one second, you get a massive penalty day over. So the teams need to manage that around their six compulsory pit stops if you're in the outright class like this car is. I spoke to Brad and Slady just before the start got underway at the front row of the grid there and we joked about it, but make no mistake, Brad was suiting up getting ready to race because he didn't know where Tim was yeah. after the TCR race. So he was he was standing there nervously pacing. <laughs> now, you're going to take the opportunity to start any time, right? But if you've got Tim Slade standing next to you, you go, well, why don't you start there? And you could be one of the absolute key drivers to get on out there. But it would have been nervous times, and here they are fighting away. It's a fascinating fight up the top as well. And conditions, Rusty, I mean... Can you remember, aside from the fog this morning, can you remember a weekend here where we've gone virtually untouched? It's been glorious, hasn't it? Absolutely glorious. And no, I mean, often, as all so often, as you know, Matty, there is some sort of weather-orientated story, isn't there? Somewhere around the circuit. Yeah. yeah. Might be hailing up the top and sunny down the, the bottom, bottom or vice versa. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> Three hours and 31 minutes to go. We're approaching halfway in the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour, 51 laps in the book. We're touching on the performance of this car, Jake Camilleri and Scott Nicholas, Grand Prix Mazda. This is a car that's been around here once or twice. A lot of history. They've run it in the 12 hour back when it was a production car race and the six hour since then. But these two Queensland mates have been driving together for the better part of a decade. Um, it's like an old married couple when they get behind the wheel, but they are both very, very fast, underrated race car drivers. Jake Camilleri is behind the wheel. He's the dealer principal at Grand Prix Mazda. They're based in Caboolture, Brisbane suburb, and long supporters of production car racing. So not only are they leading Class C, they've actually just dropped an outright spot to the Kyle Alford uh, Ford Mustang, but they're inside the top 10 in a Class C car. That's a huge drive, punching well above their weight really really impressive performance from one of the most experienced production car specific teams on the grid. Jake's been a, a very handy steerer over time too hasn't he when you look back over the past decade or or more in Australian motorsports a great job at the moment ninth outright as Richard said and leading that class C the next class C car is 25th <laughs> yeah and they've got a lap in hand so their early work in this race has been really, really important to set up their class battle. And that's, again, we've touched on that throughout the race. The race within a race in production car racing is so vitally important. This car 14 comes into pit lane for their second compulsory pit stop. And these guys running well, Rusty, uh, seventh outright at the moment, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Now, you wouldn't want to be a car controller, would you? Uh-oh. Ooh. Oh. Well, I've seen worse, but yeah, oh, uncomfortable. Yeah. That's a slab. Ooh. Oh, no, it didn't get him at all. No, There's no right. problem with that. Nah, he's prop oh, for it. That's a, that's a nine out of ten. <laughs> you two are hard. I'd never be a car controller for you two. Forget it. I'd never be a car controller, full stop. I love the little attention to detail. So as he lets car 14 go now, you may have noticed on the back of the, the sign some, some stickered bullet points, key things. Yeah, don't hit that he, me. Well, don't hit me probably wouldn't have been one of them. That's a given. But lots of little things about loosening belts and key things to check on. As we watch the Ian Saltieri semi-cell golf R hit back out of the lane. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, even if you've got a, uh, that, that certified time that you have to spend in pit lane, Rusty, you, you know better than anyone, you could spend five minutes driving up pit lane or you've got yourself 50 seconds. It will always feel fast. Everything feels as though it's happening in super fast motion. So those little things of 
of, you know, let's hit the brake pedal, let's get the brakes, let's adjust our um, This calms our everything belts. down again, doesn't well, it? Yeah. Everything feels rushed in there, even though they've got a lifetime, it seems, to get from one end of the pit lane to the other. And quite often we look up and we go, well, how did they make that mistake? How did they go out there without putting their safety net up or their belts on? or whatever it is, it's because things feel so under pressure in pit lane, regardless of whether there's no cars around you, whether it's the back end of the race or not. That's what pit lane anywhere does. And that's why those good guys do those little reminders, and girls for that matter. We've got a very strong presence of, even in the, the driver's seat this weekend, lots of a female involvement in, and participation in motorsport. How many times we hear it, Rusty? Pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Yes, exactly, yeah. Even simple stuff like pull your belts tight and make sure your drink hose is connected. Radio is so important, having that two-way communication. We're watching Brad Carr. And this team remain on the lead lap of the race. 52 laps in the books for the Carmont Australia BMW M3. And Chris Stubbs has more on it. That's it. I have the co-driver, Tim Slater. At this point in a six-hour, if you're wearing a tyre like this, it's quite often not a good thing. But it, in fact, is all part of the plan for Tim Slade, mate. Talk us through how things are going so far and why you're still dressed like this. Um, yeah, all good. Stubbsy, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I obviously started the race and then I guess just the way our strategy is, I get a big, long break, probably the biggest break I've had all weekend, um, and then jump in at the end and, and do, um, yeah, all the, all the lap time. So I think Brad's got probably another... 40 minutes ahead of him and then I'll get changed shortly and uh, and jump back in but no the cars you know it's ran faultlessly all weekend um touchwood stays that way but yeah it was it was great in the first stint just sort of I guess stroked it along um it, it's a long race for a production car and the main thing is to obviously be that at the end so um yeah we'll uh, see how it all pans out this point 12 months ago you guys were right in the hunt you had multiple issues with the front right have you done something different this year to try and make sure that that's not a problem yeah the um six hour event last year was was one of the cars um first event so we had a lot of issues uh throughout the practice sessions really didn't get any laps and then um it ran pretty well um throughout the race but then yeah we we blew um a, a few right fronts so we're actually running a different size front tire this year we kind of figured out that um what we're running now should should help that issue and, and the setup is a little bit different which um in theory should be a little bit kinder to the to that tire as well so yeah no issue so far but like i said uh, touch, touch wood uh yeah stays away stan sport tcr super cheap auto this weekend uh, how'd you find that and would you like to get back in a super cheap auto tcr car again yeah, it was, it was good fun, and um, yeah, thanks to Wally for the opportunity. Sorry to, to Fabs. Um, I know what it what it's like to be, um, I guess, not not racing full-time, and, you know, you really do look forward to, you know, obviously the races that, that you do have. Um, so, yeah, he, um, you know, he, he'll be back for the next one. Um, but, yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun, obviously a lot to learn, um, you know, not driving the car before this event and then having to learn it at such a challenging track like like it is here at Bathurst. But, um, yeah, thanks to Stan Sport and, and Wally. And, I mean, yeah, who knows? If, if the opportunity comes up uh, again later in the year, then um, we'll see. Well, we loved having you and all the best for the rest of today. No worries. Thanks, Dubsy. Cool to have Tim Slade as part of this race. So race lead is in. And a bit of hustle. Now, all the crew members have to be over the red line between the garage and the working lane before they can send it out. So that's why there was just a little bit of agitation and some raised voices. But that's an important stop. They had just put car number one a lap down. So Shane Spallen behind the wheel had just dropped a lap to this leader. So they'll actually get back on the lead lap now that they've just stopped. The other point I wanted to make just about uh, what Tim was talking about and when he can jump in the car, we've talked about the three and a half hours total but the maximum at any one time is three hours. So that's why he won't jump in until we get into the second half of the race. After that, he'll be good to go until we check so the flight. three hours 24, three hours 22 for us to go. So he's got a, another 20 odd minutes to wait for that. Gee, you've really got to give credit to car 147. And, you know, we, we made a bit of a joke and a bit of a laugh about how they just pick their way through the field, but it would have been very easy guys for these um, this team to go kicking stones after what happened overnight and start from the rear of the gear. Really easy just to say, well, come on, you've got to be serious. We made a little error um, at ride height trouble and now we're down the back of the grid as if we're going to make our way through 60-odd cars. 
But what they've done is regrouped. And not only that, they could look around and say, hey, see that bloke down there in pit lane by the name of Paul Morris? Won the Bathurst 1000 from rear of the grid. We can have a crack at this as well. So I, I applaud their professionalism has been outstanding. The driving from both of them has been incredible. The car is on song, obviously. Still a long way to go, but that will be a very big part of the story, obviously, if they can make it to the end here and finish up the front. And the 2021 Australian Formula 4 champion, Tom Sargent, has driven out of his yep. skin here this weekend. He's been brilliant. And, and just as you say, I mean, Cam Hill put his hand up this morning. They just owned it, moved on. The best way they could handle it was on the racetrack, and they're, they're doing that. We take a look at the Lexus RCF in pit lane for a stop. Steve Owen, who is uh, a very experienced racer to join these guys who effectively decided here's your list of <laughs> this is on the back of your car controller board so radio check yeah. fuel reset handbrake off 40 k's an hour that's the big one don't exceed that try and pull up on your marks <laughs> cappuccino <laughs> <laughs> flat white for mine and throw some easter eggs in the local legends car comes in that's really actually genuinely great insight into what they have to manage throughout the course of it so it looks like Grant Denny is going to replace Tony Quinn aboard uh, car number seven, the Ford Mustang. This is the Mac 1 spec Ford Mustang. So it's an evolution of the car that they ran last year, which unfortunately didn't make it a huge way into the race after a, a crash at the chase. So a bit more grunt, a bit more tire and wider rubber as well. So they've dived into pit lane. We'll come back with a little bit more on the Mustang in a second. We touched on the performance from the Grand Prix Mazda 3 MPS, they are having a giant killing day and Molly Taylor's found one of the drivers. The Jake Camilleri, you just did a big stint in the Mazda, leading your class. I think you've moved up about 20 spots so far today, so, so far so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a great start. Um, we knew we were, it's sort of, uh, I suppose we qualify out of position because it, it's a mighty little car, it sort of punches above, it, above its weight. So. You know, in a, in a one lap qualifying, it sort of doesn't have the pace, but when I just get in a groove, we can just chew away at it, keep at a constant pace, like a qualifying pace pretty much the whole time. So, yeah, uh, awesome, awesome stand. I just made one little mistake. I, I went down the inside of a car in the chase. I don't think he saw me. We sort of just bumped and half spun myself, so I was a bit annoyed with myself with that. But otherwise, yeah, awesome. The car's all good from that? Yeah, yeah, everything's good. I, 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 could, I, I wish I could do the whole six hours. <laughs> I was just having fun, so yeah, it's good. Well, we were just talking before, and, and you were on your way to uh, about the six hour last year, and, and due to all the COVID protocols and uh, you had border closures, you, you couldn't make it, so it must feel extra sweet to, to be here this year. Yeah, yeah, it is, because this car, we, we did a lot, this car won a lot of production car championships, and um, it never got to make it here because it went to GT, so we never get to do the production car 12 hours, so we, um, so it's like it's debut, even that it's such an old car. So yeah, it's cool. And I got I got my old teammate with me, Scott Nicholas. So he, he's awesome. So yeah, we'll have a great time. Hopefully we can win it and be sweet. Well, great to see you guys punching above your weight and fingers crossed for the rest of the day. Awesome, thank you. Now we were talking about Mustangs just prior to that uh, that great chat with um, with Jake there. You can see the local legends entry, in fact, making its way around the track. We had hoped to see the return of Marcus Ambrose to the wheel this weekend in the car that he was set to share with. George Medici, they've had some problems with sort of final testing with that car and it was a late withdrawal sadly, but George has had a win of another kind, Richard. It's a great story, good Rusty, one. and we're thrilled for a good mate of uh, production car racing and motorsport in the country. So decided he didn't want to be anywhere near Bathurst, so he took his lovely partner, Jess, up to Brisbane and delighted to tell you that uh, it will be Mr and Mrs Medici at awesome. some point in the future. Right. So uh, George popped the question, Jess said yes, and uh, we offer our sincere congratulations and the next job now after the wedding make sure you're in the bath of six hour next year with marcus ambrose and the ford mustang but well done to george and jess congratulations great stuff here we take a look at the bmw m3 of the russells making their change in pit lane another one russell russell and russell can we help you so <laughs> the driver change is now starting to take effect as we come towards the halfway mark of the high-tech oils Bathurst 6 hour. Now you can join the conversation, hashtag Speed Series AU, and a few of you are doing that in the wake of our banter about the five-second penalties. So Matt G saying the problem in his eyes is that not being able to take the penalty if we finish under safety car, it becomes a much bigger penalty due to field compression. So he felt that adding the time to a compulsory pit stop is a better option, but 
still admit it is it is flawed in his eyes. So there you go. So some conversation around that. We'd love your thoughts. I, I agree completely. Uh, but the rules are that you cannot serve it under a pit stop. It will only be added to the race time at the end of the race. So hope for a green flag finish if you've got a five second or more Ooh. penalty hanging Ooh. over you. And that's what car number one has at the moment. A quick change of position. Uh, Tom Sargent has actually gone into the race lead now. There is car number one. They got themselves back on the lead lap through that pit stop sequence. So I think they're okay now. They did briefly drop a lap to the leaders, but with the pit stops unfolding, they're back in the game. And that is good for our motor race. We want to see as many cars in contention uh, as possible going into the end of the race. Now, Prestige Connects are a, a bespoke or luxury car company. They're the backers of, uh, of this one that you're riding on board now with Shane Smolin, who won the race last year with Rob Rubis and, of course, Shane Van Gisbergen. Enjoy a ride in the BMW around the mountain. there on the left so Shane Smolin comes up through the Worth cutting and we had car 26 just parked there on the left so the Chris O'Brien Ben Wilkinson entry the BMW but I think they've got that going so let's ride again up the top of the mountain great on the way as we head towards the very peak of Mount Panorama you get the full readout of the dash straight in the middle of us and you also get a sense of the traffic but this six hour is all about there's no such thing as a free ride down here we saw an incredible moment in the turtle wax trans am race right there through the kink at the chase more traffic on the outside smaller will duck in on the inside and get the clean running just off the curb Down to Murray's we go. So car 147, oh. Sergeant leading the way. <laughs> Got out of that one in the end. He's having a go, Matty. Fourth place at the moment. That lap a 237.9. Oh. It's hard work sometimes, the Bathurst six hour down at Osborne Motorsport. <laughs> he's, just, he's just been caught out by his mates as well. If there's anything worse than getting caught out, having a nap, it's waking up in the middle of being caught out. <laughs> uh, it looks like he's earned a nap. You know, we're almost halfway into the race. Exactly. <laughs> Molly Stubbsy, can we get some Easter egg chocolates down there? We need a, a caffeine hit, a coffee hit, chocolate hit at least down there. This is uh, one of the many family combinations. Cole Alford, his dad, Tony. Tony, for a long time behind the Donut King franchise around Australia, long time racer in GT racing and production car racing and pairing up with his boy Kyle in this Ford Mustang. So they were entrenched inside the top 10 as well. And one of the A2 contenders, in fact, they were second in class A2 behind Grant Denyer and Tony Quinn, who are back up to six outright, by the way. They're going along very, very nicely. And that BMW we saw stop fortunately recovered Another tick of the box to race control who continue to let the race play out without triggering a nervous yellow. Uh, they were inside the top 10 as well. They've since dropped outside of that. Matt Forbes Wilson out of car 73. Mark Mallard getting ready to get in. No real rush down here. Take the drink bottle out with you. Take the booster seat. You're ready to rumble. 13th outright this car and going along very nicely leading the way in class b nice 
nice composed stop. One of the benefits that the timed pit stop gives you is a little bit of calm. It's not a thrash to get the feel in. It's not a thrash to get the tyres on. You can have a bit of a breath. It, it, it's in there for a safety reason as well, for that particular reason. And some of these teams not as well resourced as professional racing outfits because a lot of them are just family outfits going motor racing. The Russell's back in the lane. So this will be their fourth pit stop. Aaron Russell is currently behind the wheel. They're third on the road. I reckon there was only two or three laps that they put down before coming back in. So on your right of screen is Shane Smolin, who in the order is behind Aaron Russell. So Matty's rightly question mark the stop here for car 58. So we'll get onto that story for you. And you're riding with Shane as he comes up to turn one now. And that's the pass effectively, albeit with the BMW in the lane. And there's a drama here. There's a problem going on for the Russell family. This has been a tough day for BMW, hasn't it? Matty was spot on. Three laps in this stint for Aaron behind the wheel. We heard from Drew. Oh, and 151 at the kink. The run up to the cutting. That doesn't appear to be going anywhere. It's Adam Lowndes behind the wheel. This is the car he shares with Travis Lindorf. They'd been having a pretty solid day. And what has occurred? Has there been a, an accident or is the car just pulled to a halt, waved yellow flags. It's such a narrow, steep part of the road. Well, it's not lined up against the wall there. It's sort of come in at a little bit of an angle. Had a chat with both Travis and Adam this morning at the coffee shop as we cruised on in, and they were looking forward to the day, the weather ahead, and just a little bit of fun out there in car 151. So the, the Hyundai safety car will be um, released and it heads out to Mountain Straight. So we'll try and get to the bottom of that one. Was it some sort of failure? Was there something a little bit more sinister behind it? We'll have to wait and see. That'll be a sigh of relief for the Russells because they'll buy a little bit of time to resolve whatever problem it is they've got in car 58, but they've dropped out of the top three with that time in the lane. Now, it hasn't been that long since we've seen the leaders in pit lane. So Tom Sargent's only five laps into his stint, Brad Carr only eight laps. But I wonder if they'll take the opportunity to tick another compulsory pit stop box. You can only do one per safety car. What's going on on the top of that? Uh, that's open heart. Yeah. And that's the answer to the question. So Brad Carr into pit lane straight away. I'm not surprised at this. Basically a free pit stop under yellow. So you get it out the way. You can tick the boxes and uh, that will be their fourth compulsory pit stop of six so they they've got to make. They can't put Tim in yet? Oh, they, they, I mean, they could. I don't think they will, but they could. Doesn't, doesn't look like it. No, because they could still put Tim in maybe for an hour, but it just it reduces your flexibility later in the race. You want Tim in for as long as you can in the, the final third of the motor race. And they've clearly elected just to put fuel in that car and they're going to put a right front tyre in and car number one comes in the lane as well. Now, they're a different kettle of fish because they've got three drivers, so I wonder if they may put Nick Percat behind the wheel of car number one or keep him saved up for the end and maybe give Rob Rubis a little bit more driving time. I just had flashbacks when I saw that car parked up before right where our cameraman was of 2005. And a bloke named Ambrose who's here this weekend with Gary Rogers Motorsport and a bloke watching in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand and Greg Murphy. Very unforgettable day at the mountain. So they've got that car moving again, so... Gee, I don't remember that, Rusty. What happened You there? don't remember that oh, day? Yeah. Anything happened of, of significance? <laughs> <laughs> Were you both on that day? It was pretty heated. It was as in... Oh, broadcasting? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely I was. Yeah, that was a... Uh, that was an unforgettable day. That was highlight reel, that kind of stuff. So there is a driver... Ch there is a driver change going on in car number one, so... Small and out Rubus back in. So Rob will tick off a bit more driver time now and they'll keep Nick fresh for the end of the race. Take you through some highlights now of the high tech oils Bathurst six hour, our most recent hour of competition and a bit has unfolded here at the mountain. The story has been the unbelievable climb from the back of the grid to the race lead for Tom Sargent and Cameron Hill rubbed out from pole position for an infringement around Reinheit. 
this morning and they have come back to lead this race. Dramas for the Ellery family. Stephen, Tristan and Dalton. This car has had some issues with leaking oil from a gearbox breather, then a drama with the rear bumper, then this for the 777. The Mitsubishi Lancer of Matthew Boylan and Lachlan Gibbons. We thought it was shades of the morning fog that greeted us here at the mountain and delayed everything by half an hour. A chance to take service and some pit stops because this car stopped, albeit for a moment, just before worth cutting. So this is the way things stand in the six hour from the rear of the grid. That M2 competition of Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent finds itself at the top from Carr and Slade, who are also in very good shape. A couple of other stories, Grant Denyer and Tony Quinn are not only fifth outright, but leading class A2. And well done to the team of Dylan O'Keefe, Sheargold and Shannon, who are not only uh, leading their class, but in the top three outright. Superb performance. That's been a great story, Rusty. They're just, those A45s, they're well developed, uh, well set up. They've been around here for a long time. We'll run through the class order in a minute. So the Bhagwan is still in the 10. Dwayne West behind the wheel of car 90, the big HSV he's sharing with Tony D'Alberto. They've just eked their way into the top 10 as well. So that's a really promising performance from them. As this race unfolds and we get very near, Matt White, the halfway point in the 22 high-tech oils at Almost hour. time to blow the whistle. Let's have a <laughs> half-time break. Let's turn around and get cracking again. Now, this is interesting. This that's, is interesting. Group E leader. Yeah, so that's the Master 3 SP25. Andrew McMaster shown behind the wheel, and they've been leading their class since the start of the race. Got it going again. Oh, that'll be a relief. I wonder if they might have just been waiting for their... Pit stop time, time, 120 seconds. Into pit lane comes the local legends car. So Grant Denyer stops from what was fifth place. They'll lose a little bit of track position. They're doing a right front tyre as well. So quite often the driver changes will be, or the tyre changes I should say, will be the right hand side of the car. That's the working side. You hear the teams refer it to where all the load goes through. And as we look at the super cheap auto dipper, we can tell you the class leaders. So they do lead the A2 class for the normally aspirated high performance cars. The VF SSV still going along very nicely, leading the way in class B. Jake Camilleri and Scotty Nicholas on top in C. The Honda Integra still leads the way in class D, but that's a really good fight with the Toyota 86s always nipping on their heels and they're not far out of the top 25 positions overall. And this is the place, Mount Panorama Bathurst, the spiritual home of Australian motor racing. It looks amazing. There's always something that's been improved, tuned up when we come to this part of the world. The Bathurst Regional Council, our partners and friends at Destination New South Wales as well do such an outstanding job. It's one of the premier racing facilities in the world and it puts on for amazing events throughout the course of the season. Delighted to tell you, with the gift of chocolate, oh. Molly Taylor has joined us in the commentary oh. box and she sweetened it by bringing us some Easter eggs. Thank you, Molly. Good afternoon and welcome to the box. Oh, good afternoon. I thought you guys are doing such a great job and so I bought some, some refreshments from the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Trying to get a few brownie points too. It's, it's great to get your perspective on what's been unfolding across the course of this weekend, both at a pit lane level, uh, you know, even just driving into the track and, and spending time with you. As a, as a racer by heart, as somebody who loves this game, who, who just lives and breathes motorsport, you just saw those beautiful images there of, of Bathurst, of Mount Panorama. And as Krause just said, the spiritual home of Australian motorsport. It doesn't matter what category you drive in, what car you drive in, this is the place that everybody wants to come and it just brings the next level feeling, doesn't it? Yeah, you can feel just right when you when you come in the gates, you can feel that buzz just across, not only from the competitors, but the people here, the, the families and friends and support crews and, and all the fans out there as well. It's incredible. And this is probably the only the only time they get to maybe sit back across the top and, and think about it all and, and have a look because otherwise it's uh, there's a little bit going on. But uh, I'm just excited to be here because I feel like I've been walking up and down pit lane and I want to see what, what's actually happening. <laughs> It's been busy down there, hasn't it? Lots of stories unfolding. Loved your work. Uh, some really good impromptu Thanks, interviews. Sir. Liked hearing what Aaron Cameron was having for lunch. You know, much else <laughs> oh, to I do. Oh, great. Lights are out on the Hyundai safety car. 
and we'll go back to green flag racing. So you need to go back a little bit in the field to pick up the leader here, which is car eight. So uh, the BMW that is the first car in the train is not the race leader. Brad Carr being shown on top. Timing will tick over. So lots of pit stops ticked off during that uh, fourth and most recent safety car. Just the eight minutes under yellow in that instance and we're back to green at Mount Panorama. Quite a big spread here with one car going very, very slowly. And of course you cannot overlap, even if it's a lap car before you get to the control line. So the, the Commodore that's the Lindorf car, was going into pit lane. There's a massive delay. It must be nearly 20 seconds. The field all stacked up. And, gee, that's uh, been brutal for including this car, which is the race leader. Absolutely bizarre, wasn't it? I yeah. mean, that's a huge gap there. And I just wonder if the car that was pulling into pit lane was the cause of most of that, because the leaders, the first group, or those on track leading at the moment, well, they're halfway up the top of the mountain by now. Fortunately, it didn't include the actual race leader. They're cars that are trying to get a lap back, so it's actually given them a bit of a free kick in a way as work goes on on this Commodore. So just to recap for you and reset the scene as we count down almost exactly now to halfway in this motor race. Brad Carr leads the race. The official margin, five seconds. Tom Sargent is third, so... Uh, Sheargold up into second place in the A1 class leading car, the, Mids, uh, the Mercedes AMG A45. Tommy Sargent third in the BMW. Rob Rivers fourth on the lead lap. Now the first car off the lead lap is the number 14 Mitsubishi, which runs in fifth position outright. And these guys were in a bit earlier on with that uh, gearbox breather issue, which seems to be a resolve. We haven't seen that come in, but it looks like some, some issue with the wheel stud they've got there or, or wheel not getting stuck. Not a good sound, is it? Yeah, that's a little bit harder work than they expected down there on that one. We've spoken about the timings of the race, and as Crailsy just mentioned, we are now officially in the second half of this race. So we've passed the three-hour mark on the road and, and the difficult stage of the day. But also, let's not forget, we've just had a safety car, and the first lap or first couple of laps after a safety car can be very, very dangerous. So you want to tippy-toe your way around here for now. Make sure you have your track position. Make sure that everything's still in operation and don't get into any trouble because we don't want safety cars breeding safety cars. 29's back into it. I wonder if that broke a wheel stud. They were running the rattle garden hard on a, a nut on that wheel to try and pull what looked like perhaps a new wheel stud through the brake rotor. And yeah, nice I think you're right. You can see the spanner there look like they were they were tightening that up and finishing that off. So I reckon I reckon you're right. It's funny, isn't it? You get so used to the centre lock wheel stops, the single <laughs> rattle gun fired in, it's and you cheating, come here, and, yeah, individual uh, wheel nuts and rattle guns. I actually, uh, one of my sponsors, just to give a shameless plug, uh, is a socket that takes all the wheel nuts on and off at the same same go. So oh, really? Maybe I need to get down and try and get a bit of commission, you know, going up and down pit lane here. I could do some of those for the art craft fleet, <laughs> just quietly. Hang on a second, we need fleet. To talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's not impressive, Matty. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a fleet. Brad Carr here in car number eight, so just picking his way through the traffic. Really impressive stint last time out, Matty, with a little bit of safety car at the start of it, but super consistent. And this has been a, a great drive from Brad. So he's doing all the grunt work in the middle of the race, keeping Tim Slade fresh. So he's in the, the shorts and thongs earlier on, pretty chilled out. But looking forward to seeing what he can do. And, and they've built a really nice race so far, 62 laps in. Tom Sargent's just passed Mike Sheargold in the Evo. So he's back up to second outright, but 10 seconds behind the outright race later there is car 147. What a performance this has been from the back of the field. There's a question I wanted to ask you, Molly, and, and Australian Rally Champion, and you've been running Extreme E, and you've done the Dakar, and that's where I'm sort of leading to this from the endurance side of the things. We've just seen, what, an hour and 12 minutes of green flag running. So you're getting into that groove, into that rhythm. What's it like, and, and how do you get yourself into that mood where you've got to focus for so long in that level of concentration? Yeah, it's, it's not easy and it's almost 
the irony of it that the, the harder you try, the harder it is. So it's really something that's just got to come. But then you know, have your moment. You have a safety car, or you have just any kind of you know incident or something that will break the focus, and then trying to get back into it. So it's not necessarily a case of having that that perfect concentration for those whole long stints. Uh, you're trying to keep yourself in it as much as possible, and then if you do have something that distracts you, trying to trying to bring you bring yourself back. But I think you know it is endurance racing. These guys and girls are looking after the cars to some degree but I mean in, from my experience in Dakar when, when people said you know it's long endurance look after the car yes that's true but it almost undersells just how hard you're still pushing every lap yeah. because they're not they are trying to keep that in mind but they're not going slow out there <laughs> so it, it can, can be really daunting can't it if you, if you think of it from a whole perspective where I'm going to be in the car for the next hour or so this could really smash me. So what do you do? Do you break it down kind of lap by lap or sector by sector or bit by bit? Do you compartmentalise little bits and pieces and work through those boxes and almost reset every time? Yeah, it's corner by corner, yeah. you know. it's Because as we've spoken about many a time, you, you lose that concentration or you start thinking about something else. You start thinking about the big picture and that's usually what gets you in trouble. And we can see as well some of these crews that are really gelling together and having that relationship with someone in your ear, someone who can maybe be looking at the split time and seeing if a sector's off and just giving you that little bit of a nudge. All those little things you don't always see play a big, big role. That's where the word team comes into motorsport. Totally right. It's 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 so much a team sport and it's it's not always the team that gets all the glory and the driver gets, uh, you know, an unequal share of it, but it's very much a team sport. But these, these A45s are awesome little cars. They look great, don't they? Car 45, Mike Sheargold, Dylan O'Keefe and... Holly Shannon as well. I'm really interested at the back end of this race for obvious reasons, but for the fact that we started 30 minutes later than we were expecting because of the fog this morning and the delay that that caused, what does that mean at the back end of this race? Still two hours and 50 odd minutes to go before we get there, but the sun will be setting, it'll be low, the wind will start to pick up. In fact, it's already picking up from the east, which is a little bit of a tailwind as they come down the front straight. So conditions will start to change. That's clear, but they'll change really quickly because the later it gets, the quicker they start to change. It gets dark, it, the shadows get longer, it gets cold in a hurry around here, the wind will pick up. So all of a sudden, when we get to the back end of this race, this world's gonna look very different to the one they're living in now. Yeah, you're totally right. And it's how quickly it changes. Which you, which you mentioned, and that sun that, that they're going to go through, that period where the sun's going to be a, a real challenge, particularly you know coming down the straight into, into turn one, and then once it gets cold, once that sun drops, it gets cold very, very quickly, and, and there will be residual heat in everything, so hopefully that's the case. But if you get a safety car a bit later on, I think that's going to throw a few spanners in the works. You were blown away yesterday with the TCR race that was effectively a twilight race. The, the lack of, of screening, if you like, across the windscreen. So get some race tape on there, get whatever you can to get some sort of um, cover from the sun, the low setting sun. I mean, it's almost a given. We've seen it across many motorsport categories. But yesterday, either they didn't have time, they didn't think about it, or didn't care about it. Yeah, maybe it's a rally trick. I don't know. We uh, we often keep uh, strips of race tape and we take them to the doors or the inside of the rally car uh, for two reasons. One, it's it's quite good to fix things with duct tape and uh, cable ties when it all goes <laughs> bad and having you know a piece that's already off the roll and, and ready to grab. Uh, and and for that reason as well, if we need, uh, we're out all day, so the sun. If we're going to an afternoon stage, maybe we put it on, but. It's going to be a challenge as well. You, you want to put a bit on to help, but then that sun is not going to last that long in that big window, so it's only going to be a, a problem for a short period of time. There's legends everywhere at Mount Panorama, and I think Chris Stubbs has tracked one of the all-time greats down. Stubbsy? He is an absolute icon and perfect timing because Jet Johnson is just coming in. Two very proud grandparents here in Jill and Dick Johnson. He's going pretty well, isn't he? Inside the top 20 and loving it. Yeah, not too bad. Like, it seems it's his first time here, I think, uh, you know. He's doing a pretty good job, you know, and especially in the Trans Am car and, and everything. So he's, he, he's enjoying it. How proud are you of how he's developing with his race craft? Where else would you want to be on a weekend, mate? <laughs> Let's put it that way. But no, it's I'm really proud. He's just he's attacking things the right way. He's not he's not doing anything stupid. And the fact is that he's learning and going faster and faster. Dick, there's a man by the name of Peter McLeod here. A Bathurst winner like yourself, he's back in the car this weekend racing with his grandsons. What would it take to get you back in a car? 
that ain't going to happen, I can tell you. <laughs> There's no way. What, what if we put out some sort of like campaign on social media on our coverage here today? We did it for when you hit the rock and got you some coin. Maybe we can do something for you. Well, uh, maybe if it's in one of the new Raptors, mate, they got a fair bit of grunt. <laughs> And in terms of the Supercars Championship at the moment, Anton Di Pasquale with your team in second place, he's trucking on quite all right, hey? Yeah, he's doing a really good job, and so is Will. I think, you know, the whole team's performing very well, and, and obviously we've got to find a little bit more speed, and we'll be right up there. We might uh, head on over and see if we can just grab Jet as well. Great to catch up with you, Dick, and uh, enjoy the rest of the race. Don't work too hard. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Best seen in the house right in front of the monitors. I'll duck on over and see if we can grab Jet. Sorry to butt into the conversation there. How was that? You're at Mount Panorama in a race car. You've been here in the Turtle Wax Trans Am. How is it in the six hour though? Oh, it's unreal. You know, I think it's the best thing about it is you can get in, get into a groove and sit there and work and everything lap after lap for an hour and a half, two hours. So, you know, I love it. I've never really done anything like this for this length of time and it's unreal. I'm loving it. Who gives the better advice, dad or granddad? Oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say it's gonna be Dad on this one, to be honest. But uh, we're, we're trying to start a campaign to get Dick back into the car because Ben McLeod is back racing at his age, so we reckon Dick can do it too. Can you get the family back together? Oh man, I'm 100% keen for that. But I'm doing anything I can to get him back in a car here. Mate, we would love to see you going very well and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. Cheers, Jet. Uh, well done, Stubbsy. Fine, fine work from you. That is such a great story. I would be the first signatory on a Johnson, Johnson and Johnson <laughs> Bathurst six-hour campaign next year. Gee, there's a, lot to, there's a lot to unpack from that little uh, set of interviews there, isn't there? So, A, uh, Dick has no intention whatsoever of driving again. B, can you imagine if social media was around and, and crowdfunding and all that stuff when he hit the rock? Oh. I mean... They, they, the whole of Australia jumped on board for that. Can you imagine if we threw it out to social media and see, does Jet know that these interviews are also going out on the big screen? And Granddad just heard that as well, where you're backing your dad over over DJ. Uh, wow, what a, what a great little trip down memory lane on so many ways there. That's a tough, tough question to answer. You're not going to win with, with whatever you answer in that one, are you? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's good. Stevie J will be very proud of the answer, though, I think, his dad. Yeah. Who's, uh, continues to race, of course, in the Touring Car Master Series. You catch all that action on Stan Sports. In fact, they're back at Sydney Motorsport Park, which will be the next round of the Speed Series with the Shannon's Motorsport Australia Nationals, end of May. Yeah, night racing event. too. Yes, which I think, we were just talking about it, we're going to get that tonight here, yeah, a little bit of a warm-up, <laughs> aren't we? Get a preview. Impromptu night racing. Crazy, I bumped into Stevie Johnson at our first round of the Speed Series down there at Simmons Plains, and he was that nervous, it was ridiculous. For, <laughs> for a bloke who went through his career with a smile on his face, he was a very, very good competitor, as we know, but it's a different league when you're looking out and you're seeing your son out there in the Trans Am series. So it is such a great story and one of the many family connection stories that we're seeing here at the Mountain this weekend. We just saw Brag Tar give a little wave as he was passing, I think, one of those Suzuki Swifts. So uh, it, it's good. I mean, it, it's one of the, the tricks of this race is negotiating traffic. So it's, it's nice to see it all be done very civilised and uh, friendly there. The lap traffic, I think, has done a really good job today. It's such a storyline in this race and has been since it started and even back to the 12-hour days of production car racing. But I think they've been really solid. But also props to the guys and girls in the faster cars for just having a little bit of patience and waiting to get through and picking their moments. And this was that moment again at the top. So maybe this isn't the ideal example of what I'm talking about. And it wasn't a so, friendly wave. So it wasn't was it? a wave. I saw that completely the wrong way. Let's uh, let's just do the opposite of what I said there. <laughs> I genuinely believe what I was saying, Molly. But uh, yeah, that, I'm not selling. See, that you're so that. nice, Molly. Aren't you? Molly said, "Oh, look, he just gave a lovely wave on the way past. He gave the bird." I was trying to back up what you were saying. Well, that's all, <laughs> Red car, not happy. Thanks for back, crazy. I try. I try. <laughs> I still think they've done a good job with traffic today. Regardless, I'm going to stick to that. It's such a talking point, and it can become such an issue. But Brad Carr's doing a nice job. His lead is 12.6 seconds. And he's taking advantage every time he can of the real estate that he's getting. Now, it's not easy, but there are these big gaps along the way that are opening up where he has a bit of a good run, and then he comes up to traffic. So he's, he's taking advantage of that good run. The car looks really settled. 
and uh, they are putting down good time. So that car is in good hands with Brad Carr. Rusty. Thought we'd catch up with the guys that are leading this race and have done a superb job since the start of it. Cam Hill, you were just in the, the analysis of the last pit stop. You are a little bit worried about how it shook out. Yeah, we had the lead and um, the safety car came out right as uh, Tom was going past pit entry. So um, we lost track position on uh, car eight. They're in the lead now, but um, it's still three hours to go. So, um, so far, so good. Great job by Tom so far this weekend, mate. And uh, clearly you made a decision, the pair of you, just to park what happened in the wake of the pole position and just get on with today. Yeah, Tom's been doing an awesome job this weekend. I'm, I'm really proud of how he's been driving. And, and yeah, we woke up this morning with, uh, yeah, a goal clear in our mind of what we wanted to achieve. And, um, yeah, we're on our way. So three hours, uh, let's chip away at it. Cool. A lot of work's gone into this car in the lead-up, hasn't it? Some, some very late nights. Yeah, uh, the last six months of our life has just kind of been turned upside down. And, and, and Dad, Colin Hill, he's probably been doing 14-hour days for a month now. So... To be here and to actually be in contention, it's uh, incredible. Boxing, mate, great work. Cheers, thank you. We'll stay on this and just wander over here because you can see in the background the Campbell Transport entry has uh, has come in. Dean and Cameron Crick are here. Boys, what's what's happened? Well, we've lost the uh, main belt, which has taken out the radiator hose and pumped all the coolant out. So now we've overheated and we're out. What a shame. You guys were looking, trucking along just nicely, weren't you? Yeah, no, the car was really good. I think we were eight there, right, and third in class and didn't really have to push it that hard and it, it seemed fairly consistent. So it's a bit of a shame. Obviously, the guys at DA Campbell have done a great job and I appreciate the opportunity, but we'll come back next year. That's the news we want to do. Look forward to seeing you guys in 2023. As we go back to, uh, to you guys in commentary there, the highs and lows in one pit garage. Very rusty, this natural habitat in the lane. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a shame. That, that was a really good story, that Mitsubishi team with the fire on Friday in practice. It was a fuel breather hose came loose and dropped some raw fuel on the hot exhaust and they had a backfire and it went boom. Uh, fortunately for them, it happened in pit lane so they could get onto it. Guys, I wanted to talk about this team who I think have done a great job. They've just got themselves inside the top 10 now. Um, the brothers, Kavich, Ben and Michael, and we talked earlier in the race about the fact that they're both second generation drivers and their dad raced in the Bathurst 1000, was sponsored by Yellow Pages in a Group A Holden Commodore. So there's a great history here and Yellow jumping back on board with this team. It's a brand new car. It ran for the first time on Tuesday night at Sydney Motorsport Park in a night testing session. So it's done no laps before the weekend. They're in the 10, but it's one of the great stories. They've been, every year they've come to the Bathurst 6 hour, they've been backing the breast cancer trials program and they've raised more than $100,000 over the years for that program and it, it's something that the family is very close with. Uh, ben Cavage's wife Tula was diagnosed with breast cancer unfortunately a couple of years ago. They're hoping to raise $30,000 this year and they use this race for good to raise awareness and funds for a, a very important call. So it's worth singling out but also the fact that they've got themselves in the 10 and they're going long. Actually they've just through a couple of pit stops jumped up to sixth position. So um, positive story off the track, but a really good one so far on it as well. The car yeah. looks awesome too. Yeah. The car looks great. I mean, we were wandering down pit lane uh, yesterday or the day before. Bang, it just popped out. We had, actually had to go and dive in there just to get out of the sun. I think I got more sunburn <laughs> well, off the car. car. <laughs> Yellow Pages are uh, one of the original sponsors of Mark Webber as well, early on in his career. So great to see them sticking on board. And it really is a family effort, a team effort. And we congratulate them for that as well, and like you say, Krause, the, the position that they've got themselves in. Yeah, they're going nicely. So they're one, two, three, four, fifth in Class X as well in the class leaderboard and sixth outright with only the sheer gold A45 AMG in the mix in front. Really quite achieving day. They're only a lap off the lead. So the safety cars have helped them stay in the mix. They haven't quite had the raw speed that they've been looking for from that car this weekend. But as we said, it is brand new. They're still trying to get on top of it. And I was talking to Garth Walden, who GWR has been part of the preparation and they're running that car. And he said it was a really close run thing to get it here. We were working very late every night just to get that thing on the track. They shook it down at Sydney Motorsport Park, then went back to the workshop and sunk another full day into it before it got here on Wednesday afternoon. So it's been a big process. So far, it's paying off for them. Yeah, and you can see with these cars how many... Oh. That's uh, oh. <laughs> so you're drinking that crazy. 
Well, that's me done for the afternoon. Was that me or you? I'll see myself out. No, that was me. No, you've got to get us to the end, so I'll see myself out. Looks like a bit of an overshoot, so just clear traffic and jumping back on track. I was just talking up the car preparation, so fortunately it wasn't that. It was an organic component having the issue down there. He just wanted to go and see the National Motor Racing Museum. That's what it was. I tell you what, it does highlight, you know, the emotional connection both to this sport, to this race, and to this place as well. We, we often talk about the emotion that we get when we turn up here at Bathurst, and it doesn't matter which race we're coming here for, but it has that kind of feel about it. And then you get these emotional stories. I mean, we heard Wayne Russell in tears when he cut a, a first few laps. Peter McLeod talking to Stubbsy about getting the hairs on the back of the neck, you know, as he comes over the hill and arrives in from Sydney like so many of us do. And well, he's won the thing before, won the great race yeah. before. So there's this wonderful emotional connection that, that goes much deeper than the motorsport race, goes much deeper than lap times and finishing times. And that's just one of them. And you can see how many crews ha are having issues and the, the relentlessness to get the cars back out there and keep going, as you say, you pour literally your heart and soul into this and, uh, you know, might not be just the top podium steps that people are fighting for, people are fighting for a finish as well. Here's my little mate, Grant Denyer and the local legends, Ford Mustang. Went down into the garage to have a chat to him yesterday and he was at home having lunch and then asleep. <laughs> in the middle of the day. <laughs> Called him, he didn't answer. I said, well, you know what? We interviewed you without you being there. Yeah. We sledged you first. <laughs> and he said, do I get a ride or a flight? No way, buddy. <laughs> Must be nice to be able to pop home for lunch from your race meeting, isn't Not it? Bad, isn't a nice it? thing, go and see the kids. Uh, this is the Garth Walden Racing, number 24, Mercedes AMG uh, A45. Uh, it's been a relatively challenging day for this team, despite having lots of car speed. And I think Chris Stubbs has found Garth Walden, the man behind the scenes down in the lane. Uh, Rusty, sorry. I'm, I'm doing my very best Chris Stubbs impersonation. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank sorry, you. I'm, I'm with Garth. Hey, bit of a bit of an up and down day, but a massive undertaking by you and this crew here to, to come to the six hour and put all this together. Yeah, it's been, an, uh, it's been a, a massive effort by the team, especially to get the BMW built in time and, you know, get it here, which is it struck around really good, which I'm proud of the boys for getting the car done. And unfortunately, the car 24s, we haven't had the best day for that, but uh, the guys in car 45 doing a brilliant job as well. Logistically, when you get out of the track at night, it's only a short little meander, isn't it, for the crew to, to shut down the night up the hill? Yeah, correct. We're staying on house on Conrad, so with the, you know we have a team of 30 people, so uh, to try and keep everyone in one spot's good. You love your motorsport, mate, and you do an amazing job with the professionalism of it. We'll let you go. We're going to wander here while we're up uh, because I can spot Dylan O'Keefe over to the side. Can we have a uh, can we have a little bit of a word? I sense that that middle of the race thing is kicking in here, mate, because you've had a massive weekend between TCR and this year. You're feeling a little lethargic. How are you feeling? A little bit. I uh, just had that big sting this morning, in, or just before in the six hour, and I uh, got out, and the first thing I was looking for was some lunch. So, yeah, pretty hungry and a bit worn out, but this race is a lot of fun. I never thought about doing it before until Mike Shear got asked him to drive his car, and it's been such a fun weekend, like pretty easy going. And, we're performing really well, like we're third outright. It's pretty amazing. So we'll keep doing what we're doing. Uh, Ollie will jump in next for a stint, and I'll jump into the finish. And look, for us, it's just about finishing and keeping it on the, on the track. And yeah, do a real good job uh, for the team. So looking forward to it. As is your nature, you've undersold your own performance on in both classes. You've had a terrific weekend so far, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a really good weekend and a few uh, busy weeks like the Grand Prix last weekend and the six hour this week, so it's a lot of fun doing heaps of driving. Right, so what's the little recharge? You've had a bit of lunch, what have we had? A bit of, a bit of electrolyte fluid in the in the water bottle and, and an apple? Yeah, pretty much, so a couple of snacks. Good on you. We'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rusty. A thousand apologies for uh, mixing up our pit lane reporters down there. Stubbs has been working so hard today as well. Uh, they're going really well, uh, as Dylan mentioned, up in third place. And Mike Sheargold's very, very good stint. Lots of consistency aboard Car 45. Dylan's a great character. Molly, I know you've interacted with him in... We actually live uh, very close to oh, really? the same, same suburb. Um, he's back in Crow Cup this year. He's racing TCR this year. He spent time in Super 2. He's been an Enduro co-driver. For a young boy, vastly experienced guy. Yeah, and, and such a lovely guy, as you say, a quiet achiever. Um, and we've just... Yeah, seen him pace in, in whatever he, he jumps in, he, he's right up there. And 
We also saw uh, a, a couple of shots of the number four BMW that's been having all those electrical dramas. And just before I, I came up, I had another chat to Neil Trauma, who's been giving me the, uh, <laughs> the stage by stage updates. Um, and they were trying to diagnose in a bit of trial and error to see if they could source. They thought it was one thing, tried that, it wasn't. But uh, they have actually got on top of that. They know what the issue was. Um, it was a dodgy uh, battery isolator. Oh, so really? they've basically uh, bypassed that for the fuel pumps. So they, they're on top of that now. Um, um, but yeah, it's one of those things where you've got to try something in a few times until you, you finally diagnose what the what the electrical gremlin is. I would not want to be an electronics guru at this race. You wouldn't, you, <laughs> you will get, you will be the busiest person in pit lane. It's the simplest little things as well. A little battery isolator switch and they use that to protect the fuel system. Obviously you hit the isolator switch and all the electronics in the car goes dead. But if you do that unintentionally, all the fuel system in the car goes dead and you're out of the race. So. Yeah, we saw it with the RX-8 as well, uh, yes. Rick Shaw having, having an issue with, with that too. So it's um, yeah something that, that, that can happen. And I guess with these cars being production cars, they have the standard wiring looms, which have a whole lot of things that in a race car you don't need. And there's a few things that they tap into in terms of putting in the, the fuel tanks for the race systems and a few bits and pieces. So you try not to mess around with it too much, but there is that inevitable kind of crossover and the few issues that can arise from that perspective. We heard from before with you with Madeline Stewart, unfortunately, out of the race with uh, the HSV Astra and they had a clutch master cylinder fail. And part of the reason that died was the traction control in the car, which uses the brakes to slow it down and, and stop wheel spin um, and, and drag the car back straight, I suppose, if, it, if it's going loose. Um, that was what it was on, it wasn't supposed to be on, that was what ended up cooking the clutch master cylinder and ultimately they had the, the massive drama of the air freight from uh, Sydney to get it in. So it's the simplest little things in production car racing that often causes you the, the most amount of grief. Yes, yeah, and I mean, most of these cars, you can turn that traction control off, as you say, because you don't want all that extra single wheel braking. Uh, you, you want to, from the driving perspective, be able to manage that. But, I mean, all these cars have to run ABS. That's one thing that if you try and disconnect, it doesn't go uh, so well for all the other sensors in the, in the car. So things like that, are, you know, you're still running with the, the similar brake feel that you would in a, a normal production car. 71 laps in to the high tech oils bath of six hour two hours and 37 on the clock well into the second half now brad carr continues to lead the way you've missed nothing out in front 14.2 seconds is the leading margin we're following uh our class e competitors in the battle in the master 3 sp25 dave warrell behind the wheel here andrew mcmaster his co-driver Sporting a fairly good mullet. Oh, outstanding, outstanding bit of hair work. Works on, the, works on the tools as part of his beer company throughout the week. And just loves this style of racing. So many... Sorry, did you say beer stories. company? <laughs> it's your research, mate. That's, that's living the dream. That man is living the dream. Well, everybody it. out here is living the dream right now. So there we go. Car number two. That's the 3SP25 there in installation. So just taking a look up the front and the battle between car and sergeant. So in terms of the top of the tree, if you like, the gap's been hovering around 12.8, 13 seconds. At some stages, Brad Carr's managed to push that out almost towards a 14 second lead. And then Tom Sargent has pulled that back now. You've got to then assume that essentially their pace is the same. It's more likely that traffic is making the difference over those lap times. We're riding on board with Adam Burgess. He's in the number four BMW. We're watching uh, a driver change going on down there at the uh, BMW squad, the defending champions. That looked a lot like a Nick Percat helmet yeah. jumping into that car. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. We're going to go down to the lane with another story with car four and hear from Anton Di Pasquale. Yeah, thank you. And I noticed that time you didn't say if it was Chris Stubbs or Greg Rust. Richard Crow, you can call me Greg Rust anytime. That is a badge I'll wear with pride. You're also talking about drivers with good hair. Wow. Anton Di Pasquale is right here. Mate, talk us through the race so far. Obviously, it's been very, very challenging, multiple issues. Yeah, uh, started off well. Still, was doing a good job. And then... A few different electrical dramas, so uh, it took us a while to get through that, and then now we're all running, running all right, but we're a fair few laps down, so we're just circulating, doing our thing, getting some mileage and uh, working all out. Enjoying it though? Oh, 
just about to jump in the car, so I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, if you good ones out there, I mean, it's, it's still an awesome experience to be here and uh, be part of the six hour. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely be back. Talking to your team boss before, being Dick Johnson, and we're trying to get him back in a car because Peter McLeod's here and he's as old as Dick and he's back in a car. So what do you reckon? Dick's still got it, doesn't he? Yeah, I reckon he'll show a lot of us how, how to do it. I've been in the road car with him. He's, he's got plenty of skills left, don't worry. He's got plenty left to give. Good stuff, mate. Get in there and enjoy it. Yeah, cheers. And from that point, I'll just come over here. We're in the uh, Champ Suzuki Racing team, so they've got three cars entered. This is their schedule, right? Have a look at it. This is the layout for the weekend. They are busy, busy. I'll cover up Diana Hoff's uh, mobile phone number at the bottom. But have a look at the daily schedule on the left-hand side here as we work our way through each day. A big asterisk at the bottom right next to the word podium. So they're all set and ready to go and get themselves on the podium. And the boys on the other side of the garage, they're all now having a bit of a laugh and a smile. But have a look at the whiteboard on the other side over here. It's all secret squirrels at the top end of town. Down here, the strategy is all there for everyone to see. They've broken it all up into the sections. So thumbs up. It's on display. We know what they're up to. We wish them all the very best of luck. They're having a great time. That's cool, isn't it? Thanks, Stubbsy. Nice week. It's a generic throw to you on purpose as well. <laughs> Never be too short. Sure fine work. I love the, the Class E stories, love the pit stop strategy. Just take a screenshot of that and, and flick it up my way, would you? I'd, I'd like to unpick when we're going to see the uh, see the Suzuki's back in pit lane. Adam Bear just having a bit of a go in car number four, mate. Yeah, that thing was screaming for Blue Mercy there as he was starting the descent down the hill. Great on board shot as they come out of Ford Ranger elbow. One of the rare times around this circuit, you get around the lap traffic that you can actually take a bit of a breather if you like, stretch your hands, stretch your legs. I mean, your legs are stretched anyway, there you go. Adam Almost a wheel right. on the grass there coming around uh, Forest Elbow. Adam just takes the left hand off the wheel and resets. So it's, it's a short break and now flat stick through the kink here at the chase before you get up towards the left hander. The sun will be staring straight at him in about an hour's time as we get towards the back end of this race and completes the lap. You can also see all, everything that's been thrown up on that windscreen too, so that's, when you're talking about the sun coming down, that's going to uh, yeah, only make that more, more tricky. Under the bridge, and away you go again. We were talking before about the up-down nature of this track and the fact that rarely is the car on a horizontal plane. Now, you'd think that'd be the case along the front straight, but no, the, the front straight's on quite an incline as well. We've seen, especially we've seen a few cars uh, like uh, Grand Daniel and Tony Quinn's Mustang getting pushed up there this yeah. morning. It was, a, it was a bit of a workout with a big uh, heavy car like that, especially. Well, the most famous instance, uh, what, Bathurst 1973, Brock West, Des pushing oh, the oh, Tirana oh. up the hill and Brocky hauling him out the way to jump in. Gee, they hustle these cars too. And it's odd coming to a race at Bathurst and hearing tyre squeal as well on the R-Spec tyre. Let's just recap you on where the class leaders are as we work lap 73, two hours and 31 to go. So we know the outright leaders. We've talked a lot about A1 as well. Quinn and Denny continue to lead the way in class A2. The Commodore continues to be on top in class B and they're running 15th outright, which is very nice. Jake Camilleri and Scotty Nichols still on top in class C. That's an awesome performance from the Mazda. The Subaru BRZ leads the way in Class D, so going along very nicely. Our Subaru fans amongst us enjoy that. And Dave Worrell continues to be on top in the Mazda 3. So that's how the classes stand. Let's get back down to the lane with Rusty. Krause, I wanted to close off that story. Unfortunately, we saw that massive smoke screen for the 777 at the top of the mountain. Lockie Gibbons, what happened? Uh, looks like we blew a turbo, unfortunately. I think... Um it's nothing more than that, fortunately. So it seems like if the boys can uh, keep working on it, they might get it fixed and we might get back out. Uh, not sure if we'll get classified, but it's worth it just to have another couple of laps about this. It's a bit of heartbreak for 2022. Can we encourage you to come back and play again next year? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it already. We've had, we actually had a few issues this weekend, but we seem to have got on top of them in the race up until that. So the car was actually feeling really good. Um, but yeah, no, we'll see how we go next year. But fingers crossed we can uh, come back and hopefully go a few places further forward. Yeah, most definitely it's a shame because some of the issues for the BMWs today, you actually would have been in half reasonable shape in the top 10. Yeah, yeah, no, I looked at the, um, I sort of knew what was going on in the race more or less based on what the team were telling me and I knew that the, um, well, we were 
I wouldn't say being conservative overly, but um, the car felt really good. You know, no issues, no warnings, no nothing, and we felt like we were in a good place. And as I said, the car was getting actually better and better in the race. So um, a little bit frustrating, but at the end of the day, if that's Bathurst, you know, that's the six hour and these things happen. And then, as you said, come back next year and hopefully go even better. Hope you get to do a couple of cool laps to finish your Sunday afternoon. Thank you. No worries. So here we go on board with Nick Percat, car number one. So Rob Rubis, Shane Smolin have done their job, the M4 BMW. This man won the great race, the Bathurst 1000, his first ever attempt. Been on the podium since then as well. He's had an amazing record around this circuit in all types of race cars. He's got his hands full up here through the cutting. Not just with the machinery that he's got, which is running beautifully, but the traffic around him. So Nick will be looking to get out of this little traffic jam and have a real crack at the mountain. Currently there in fifth position. I've got to correct myself, mate. It was Doug Chivers who pushed the Toronto, not Des West. Yeah. Mathis historians will be shocked that I said that. I'm not particularly pleased with myself either. Oh, wow. <laughs> Side up the inside there at McPhillamy Park. Oh, this will be a great ride. Now he's now he's free and he can get cracking. He thanked the traffic behind him as he went on his way. A little bit of drama up here at the top of the mountain. So this could be damaged before we get to this stage. You rarely see a car limping its way through without doing some sort of damage. And there's all sorts of muck underneath this one. And they hit the wall on the way in there. Car 90. Yeah, weather related to, to that to that um, pass by uh, by Nick Perk out there. You didn't quite quite see, but I mean they they've been doing really well in, in that car, really up in that class X against uh, against the M's, but uh, it's not looking so good now. It's got some drama. So Tony D'Alberto, Dwayne West in this one. Now this will explain it. Oh, okay. So she's gone wide. I don't know if he's collected anything there, Krause, except for a whole heap of junk underneath <laughs> yeah got away with that one just have a look at oh it's dropping debris is that fluid at the back of that car looks like it. a lot of stones it's a lot of the McPhillamy Park gravel track being deposited right on the racing line at the dipper by the way which everyone else will love I noticed that Brad Carr's dived into pit lane I wonder if he was half expecting a safety car there is car number eight so Tim Slade jumping in you can pick the cool drive racing suit straight away that pops Tom Sargent back to the race lead. So this is their fifth compulsory pit stop of six. So they're just barreling all their stops out the way as early as they can in the race. So they can have a little bit of freedom with what they do with their final pit stop. Just making sure they've got the full tank in. 100 litre fuel tanks in these cars. And are they going to throw tyres at it or are they confident that they've got the rubber to go? They did do right hand side tyres early on. I think it's just a bit of a buff now. Manny, make sure the window is clean and send it on its way. Spit and polish and off you go. Isn't that a crazy graphic that we see? So two hours and 24 minutes to go in the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. Hope you're enjoying it right here on Stan Sport. Round three of the Speed Series. Still four more rounds to come, including another trip back here later on in the year for the Bathurst International. But look at that at the top of the list. Sergeant up 62 places <laughs> since the start. That's not an error. 62 spots he's made up in this race. So him and his co-driver. You're the Stutzman Krause, is that some kind of record or what's the best that we've seen? Uh, yeah, for this race it is. Yeah, definitely. They've got to, for it to be a record, they need to finish that many positions up. <laughs> I was chatting to uh, Barry Clinton earlier on because they had the dramas early on, dropped down to 50-something, I think now they're 40-something, 40, 40 so we we were we were mentioning that, to, to, um, you know, it is possible to move on. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be uh, realistic to end up where they where they want to be, but uh, there's still like, all is not lost. There's still two hours and 23 minutes left. Yeah, you've got to complete the job to make it a record, but, gee, they, they're in a good position to do it. Uh, let's go down to Rusty. At the Car Motorsport Garage, Krause, are you, are you feeling okay, Brad, after that stint? Yeah, it's taken it out of me a little bit. It was a pretty big stint. I think it was 2 hours and 40 or 50 or something like that. So got a few safety guys, which gave me a bit of a breather and a, and a drink. But um, it's just busy out there. Yeah, a lot of cars and just got to keep your eye on the ball, I think. Just across the top of the mountain, especially. Before the commentators came to us, you gave your left knee a little bit of a rub. Is that, that giving you some grief? Yeah, I think I've just been probably holding on a bit too, or pushing a bit hard on the um, on the 
the rest, I think. Going across the top there in a few moments, but um, no, nah, feeling pretty good. Can you shed a little bit of light on the play from here between you two guys to the end of the race, how you'll tackle it? Um, I'm not sure. I've basically jumped in and just done my stint, so I don't know where we are, if we're doing good, if we're doing bad, um, or what the strategy is from here, but I'll catch up with the guys and, and see where we're at and, and have a cold drink. Looks like it's trucking along pretty well for you. Just just quickly, I mean, uh, you, Tim, Carr, the whole combo has generally gone well today, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, we put a lot of prep in. Last year, we arrived here with a car that was sort of half built on the way here, and um, and this year, we rocked up with a car that's had a full year of development, and um, and we've got an awesome team here. These guys have been with us for four years at Bathurst now, and honestly, the pit stops are super, super slick, um, and that's what makes a difference. These guys, their prep um, on the car is just unbelievable, so they've ticked all the boxes and the reliability's out there, the speed's out there, uh, with Tim in the car anyway. Um, so, yeah, really happy. Done a good job to get some fluids on board, enjoy the car. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. That was a great stint from Brad Carr, who is experienced in production car racing terms, but doesn't come with the background and the CV of, well, Tim Slade, for example, or even a, a Tom Sargent who's played his way up through the junior category. So you've got to be chuffed after nailing the middle stanza of the race like that with the consistency. But it was a mistake-free run, wasn't it? Like, picture-perfect stuff, and he's given Tim Slater a really good car to bring home now. Yeah, I mean, you need to have the pace, clearly, but uh, to, as you say, stay out of trouble, not make mistakes and, and pick. Uh, you know, that sometimes it's, it's holding back a little bit in some places and just being able to, to be comfortable enough to be able to consistently make those lap times and, and stay out of trouble, and it's all serving them well so far. 49 lap stint. That, that, so that's uh, a really, really big effort triple stint for Brad Carr and he's got Tim Slade right in the equation so still a, a stop ahead of the Tom Sargent car who we're following now third is still the sheer gold ram with GWR A45 so they've completed two of their four compulsory pit stops remember the A1 and A2 cars have only got to tick the box four times in pit lane compared to the six for the class X cars so they've got a little bit more freedom with how they deal with their pit lane situation. Aaron Russell, four stops in their fourth. Nick Percat, five stops. So they've only got one mandatory stop to make yeah, the defending champions with Percat behind the wheel. And we expect to see them heading all the way down to the end of the race. We touched on this car a little bit early on, the big HSV. It's nice to see some Aussie muscle still trying to compete at the outright level. And... Good friend of the show. Tony D'Alberto has been doing a nice job and Stubbs, he's found him. Thank you, down in the lane. They're just cleaning up a little bit of McFilmy Park gravel because he did go off and have a bit of a moment across the top there, Dwayne West in the car at the moment. Uh, what was the cause of that problem? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, the front right we had gone down and uh, we lost a tyre, which we had a problem with in my stint as well. So we're suffering a little bit in that right front. It's a big, heavy car, the HSV. So the poor tyres cop an absolute hiding. Uh, but yeah, let go right at the top of the mountain there for Dwayne. And uh, luckily, it happened at McPhillamy and we didn't hit the wall. Caught up with you this morning on the way into the track as we we're getting our caffeine hit for a long day ahead. And uh, you were concerned about the extra weight. What about 200 kilos extra in your machine compared to a Beamer? But the gearbox was your, your concern. How's that holding up? Yeah, the gearbox is good as gold at the moment. It touched wood. You know? um, yeah, mechanically, the car's really strong. So just the tyres have uh, been a bit of an issue for us. But yeah, an extra 200 kilos on the Beamers that we're up against in Class X is difficult. Uh, but we're just trying to do our own thing, circulate, finish the race, and uh, everyone will be happy. And you'll bring us home with a long stint at the end? Yeah, I'm going to bring it home right at the end there. So, hey, before you go, though, I need to give a little shout-out to my major sponsor, Apache Media. Thanks. Well done, Apache Media. Apache Media, yeah. Thanks, Jano. Jano, of course, who works with us at uh, Stan Sports. So he's a good man. He's a clever business operator. This man's been around a while, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> nice work. That's that's forward thinking it's right there. Now, Tim Slade has patrolled pit lane while all that's been going on. So what's what's happened there, do we think, in car eight? He just did a... It was a drive... Basically a drive-through. So the Russell's off the top at McPhillamy. Gee, we've seen... And following off uh, one of the Commodore's Class B car as well. So Aaron Russell behind the wheel. The number of cars we've seen just drop off at McPhillamy and not do anything but traverse the gravel trap and rejoin. It's so rare to do that up there. <laughs> At that point, yeah, just 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 got one eye closed. You're trying to keep everything straight, keep the wheel straight, and uh, hope you end up out back on the, yes. the tarmac on the other side. Just but, wonder uh, if there's any oil down there. It's sending him spearing off. So 
just confirming, Matt, it was a drive-through penalty. It was a pit stop breach. I'm pinning down exactly what the rule is for all the multitude of regulations, but it was a pit stop breach for car eight. It was a drive-through penalty. So that's blown 30 seconds, 34 seconds, the transit time from pit entry to pit exit. Is that the Sharon's car that we see stopped in the, the pit lane there? And the bonnet up. Yeah. Had a few dramas today already. And the slippery surface flag shown on the run down towards the dipper as well. Super cheap auto dipper. So there's been a fair few uh, bit of gravel that's been uh, escorted down down there over the past few cars. So 15. Just to put a... I think he overshot his mark was what he was saying there. Uh, it went a little <laughs> bit too far and the car controller had a bit of work to do. Just to touch on, just to finalise that point, the penalty for car eight, Brad Carr and Tim Slade, was uh, refueling must be completed before any servicing is conducted. So you've just got to do the reset refueling and then you can change tyres, you can wipe the car down. They got that wrong, clearly, and I think Greg Russ can shed some more light on that for us. It's a bit of a frustrated Brad Carr and the, the emails back and, and forward with race control. They said they've done the right thing, taken the penalty. They don't feel like they're in the wrong. And the, the allegation, Richard, is about people returning back over the red line before the car leaves or before the completion. It has to do with, with people movements in and out of the hot lane. Yeah, thanks, Rusty. It, it's... We touched on it at the start of the race. It's those one percenters that can make or break this motor race, and the pit lane stuff is it. And well, you were wondering in that stop whether they were going to change any tyres there. We, we saw the fuel going in, so we knew that that was happening, and then we just noticed that they were doing a bit of a spit and polish, a bit of a clean on the windscreen. So that's enough for them to fall foul of the rules, and that's a costly blow for Car 8, for Brad Carr, and now Tim Slade. So the yellow flags are out. We'll have a safety car heading out the Hyundai safety car and it will be because of oil out on the track. So as we assume, there's oil down on the track and they can't keep seeing cars spear off. So that's a bit of a saviour for car eight. After serving that penalty and having that gap, what, 30 odd seconds added to their time as they started the chase for car 147, they've still got a uh, a pit stop essentially up their sleeve or ahead of the game on that one and this will be the reason why. So these things are slipping and sliding all over the place here. Oh. <laughs> so this was the car that was off at McPhillamy Park and the oil's down at turn nine. So turn nine, we don't often talk about corner numbers here at Bathurst but just think of the top of the mountain and that's really all you need to know. High speed, narrow, oh man. Well it makes sense we saw the, the moments that, that we've been having and it looked like that car was uh, number 15 in the pits potentially with a bit of an oil leak so it'd be interesting to see uh, what the story there is. So that is the scene at the top of Mount Panorama. We're talking about metal grate to McPhillamy Park where that oil's down so it's fast, it's blind, it's narrow and a safety issue, so they'll get some clean up onto that. Uh, what it's done, and I was expecting this, so Tom Sargent has come into pit lane. They were at the top of the mountain when the safety car was called, so this has worked really well for them. They've got a, a free pit stop, basically a game to complete their fifth of six pit stops, but it also works with Tim Slade because they'll get that track position back from having to serve that penalty, so it actually, it basically levels the playing field between the two BMWs at the front of the field. I'd expect to see Sheargold in as well. They do their third pit stop, and uh, you may as well serve that while a safety car is on the racetrack. It's actually quite well timed for a lot of people to get another mandatory pit stop out of the way. I was wondering how that was going to unfold, especially for the on-track leader in Thomas Sargent, and that stage of the race where it's push, 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 because we're going to eventually bring you in. You've got a golden opportunity to go as hard as you can and just build that gap on car eight in particular of Slade and Carr, but they didn't have to ask him to push because of what's played out now. And quite often, as you know, Molly, around here, you can push and get great lap times or you can push and find trouble. And when there's oil at the top of the circuit, no thanks. A bit of oil on a blind corner. It's nothing quite like that, is there? But uh, yeah, as you say, and they're trying to build in that, that 90 second buffer, which was was coming up close. And, and now that's, uh, that's all going to change now. We see uh, Tim Lade just jumping in and, and Will Davison hopping out as well at that number 23. It was an awesome stick from uh, Will Davison, actually. I think he enjoyed himself. The lap times were great. Uh, car 8 just rolling through the lane as well. And we can hear more about this with Rusty. 
I think the inference here from the, the crew is that, that obviously Tim will stay at the wheel and they'll tick a box here in, in pit stop terms, Krause. So it wasn't all that long ago that they were in. Tim's saying, do I want to talk to him <laughs> while he's here? Are you kidding me? Can I talk to you? You all okay, Chief? Yeah, all good. Shame about the drive-through, but uh, still all blame to go. Okay. He's, let me even talk to him. <laughs> there you go, guys. It's awesome. Crazy, crazy Sunday afternoon. He eyeballed me. He said, come in, have a chat. <laughs> he Love ran it. away from me uh, the other day. Really? TCI, when I had that uh, issue with the caliper seal, and I was there to get all the info and uh, jumped out of the car and ran off. Got and nothing. Then, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, turned around and uh, David Wall said, uh, he just hasn't been to the toilet <laughs> between all the, the TCR and the six-hour practice. And uh, so that, that was fair enough. We'll give him that one. <laughs> And we should reference he's got 120 seconds to kill, so they've just put some fuel in and the time ticks over and away he goes. So that's worked really well for these guys. They are now clear. They've done all of their compulsory pit stops. So any stop, and they'll have to stop again for fuel before the end of the race, but any stop they make, it can be as fast as they can make the pit stop work. So that gives them a really interesting advantage, I think, going into the final two hours of the motor race. They'll definitely have to do one more stop for fuel Based on my numbers, I reckon they're going to probably get to the end on one more stop. So, interesting. Like it. Like the way the strategy is playing out. While we're under safety car, uh, we're going to just do a little bit of a reset and take you through an explainer that Chris Dubbs put together on the classes in the high-tech oil bath of six hour. Mm. Well, this year we had a record-breaking 84 entries for the 70 available grid spots for the six hour. We've got 15 different manufacturers with 33 different models and they range from $150,000 BMWs to $20,000 Suzuki Swifts. Cars are battling for glory across eight different classes and they're defined by their performance level and also their price. At the bottom of the field is Class E, the compact cars, where the Suzuki Swifts will be up against the Mazda 3s. The next step up the ladder is the Class D production cars. That's the domain of the ever-popular Toyota 86s, the Mini Cooper S and the Honda Civic Type R. Class C is for the performance sports cars. Think Renault Megane, think Volkswagen Golfs and Mazda RX-8s. Class B is the high performance cars. This is the domain of the SS Commodores. Class A is extreme performance and is also divided into turbos and non-turbos. This is where the pros enter the game. A2 is home to the Mustangs, HSV Commodores, and for the first time, a Lexus RCF. Class X, the top of the tree, ultimate performance machines. These are dominated by the BMWs, the M3 and the M4. Last year, it was Shane Van Gisbergen who took the class honours and the outright honours in this car. But remember, this is the six hour. It's not just the ultimate prize. There are plenty of races within a race. A great explainer, Stubbsy, thank you for that. So still more than two hours to go in this race and we are continuing under the lead of the safety car as the top of the track and the oil on the circuit gets cleaned up. Don't forget Tyson Fury fights for the heavyweight championship of the world next Sunday in front of a sold out Wembley Stadium. It is exclusive to Stan event. This will be one of the biggest sporting events and certainly the biggest fight of the year. Tell them why it's a sausage, to be honest. Say what you want, I don't care. I can knock anyone out on this planet. Move the work and I'm out of here. Murder the tune, it's a body here. Reviving the beat in this way, back to sleeping. I use this technique that ain't got me here. Plus and Fury against Dillian White is an old British heavyweight championship fight. You gotta give me what's old, take control. No, this is not a game, no. Move the work and I'm out of here. Murder the tune, it's a body here. Go! I give it all that I got. Don't miss that on Stan Sports. So much coming up on Stan uh, in the next couple of months. And we touched on it at the start of the race. The Indianapolis 500 isn't that far away. The IndyCar Series, Scotty McLaughlin and Will Power amongst the locals going into battle on the speedway. We're approaching 
two hours to go in the high tech oils bath six hour and this is how it's played out in our most recent period lots of green flag running with uh, green flag running which has been great but interrupted by some safety cars which really sets up an interesting strategic battle to the flag between some of our key contenders that remain in the motor race. Matty, this is shaping up nicely as a battle of the BMWs, which is not a shock if you're familiar with six hour history, but it's been a really compelling fight between this car and the 147. <laughs> there was the little bird that we saw there as well. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, as we take a look at these highlights, and this is probably the first sign that we started to get that things were going awry up there at McPhillamy. Uh, people just spearing off with, with no, really no reason why that's the Russell entry, the go-karts go entry. So the, the fact of the matter is at Bathurst, doesn't matter if it's a 1,000, it doesn't matter if it's a 6 hour, a 12 hour, it doesn't matter what race, you need pace. You're never going to win this race unless you've got really good race pace. And that might sound a bit weird with still two hours to go, but what we're seeing at the top of the tree is the pace is starting to come. Now, Tom Sargent up there in car 147 has been looking so solid. And of course, Hill will jump in that as well. Tim Slade, as we know, into car eight. They've brushed off that drive-through penalty that they've had to do, and they've all got pace to burn at the back end of this race. So the speed is there. You've just got to get through right to the end and make sure that you've got yourself a position when things start to get heavy as the sun starts to set later on. I'm buying what you're selling, Matt White. I like it. I like it. This is where your favourite driver is running. Uh, pick them out. Don't forget to jump on the socials. Hashtag Speed Series AU and Stan Sport AU. We'd love to get your feedback and tell us who your favourite driver is. And we'll run you through the class leaders as well because the class battle is so important. Uh, hasn't been much change at the top. Uh, Camilleri and Nicholas still on top. Uh, the Subi still going along nicely in Class D, and the Mazda 3 SP still SP25 still going on in Class E. And this is the town of Bathurst. It's a beautiful place. Uh, we need to say thank you to Molly Taylor. We're releasing her from commentary duties as we see the sights of Bathurst. Molly, thank you for joining us up here. We've loved it. Uh, back down to pit lane. I suspect you might be busy for the last hour or so. Uh, this I, I think you're right. Thanks for having me up here. Do you want me to leave you a few more Easter eggs? Please, before I yeah, dash thank off? you. I really appreciate no, no you bringing those up. It's Easter. It's all about sharing. Maddie didn't bring any with him when he came in. Yeah, so you are way ahead. Yeah. Hang on a second. I, I came up. I came some for, even with some of, for you, Maddie. There I came armed with one of these fans up here. It was 48 degrees <laughs> when I came up into the commentary box. So I got the Delta Goodrum fan. Well, so well, uh, <laughs> hair's flowing beautifully behind us. I'm really interested to see what Stubbsy's going to bring to the table as well. You did get me coffee too this morning, so I do owe you. Oh, yeah. I'll see you later, boys. Thanks to Molly Taylor. We're about to go back to green for another restart. With two hours and six minutes to go. We've had five safety car interruptions in this race so far, which for this race is pretty good. Let's see how this goes with Tom Sargent. So the leader actually leads them back to green. And I reckon it'll be head down now to build a little bit of a margin. Still a little bit surprised they didn't take their stop. But what they're going to do, I think, in 147 is push this as long as they can into the race and try, if they can, to make their final compulsory pit stop, their final stop of the race, full stop. And if they can do that, tick off pit stop number six and then try and run to the end with Cameron Hill behind the wheel, that will give them a little bit of an advantage over car eight. Car eight with Tim Slade behind the wheel. They've ticked their boxes for pit stop strategy, but they're not going to get to the end on fuel. They're going to have to stop again. It'll be a shorter pit stop, but they've got to go into pit lane and not now they don't have track position. Uh, the strategy will sort itself out. It sounds as clear as mud at times, but it will play itself out as this race goes on. Aaron Russell still third in the go-karts go car, and Nick Percat back on the lead lap in car number one and running in fourth outright. Richard Crowell, Matt White and Chris Stubbs in the lane. Back in the conference. Richard Crowell, I come bearing good news as well. We've just had the official crowd figure announced. 18,422 fans have packed into Mount Panorama. Why not with racing like this and with weather like this? And that's a significant increase on last year as well. So we see the field grids growing from the size of the grid, growing from year to year since we kicked off in 2016 and the fans are showing their support for the event as well so fantastic news and congratulations to everyone involved in putting on this year's high tech oils bathurst six hour and of course we hope you've enjoyed it wherever you're watching live ad free and exclusive on stan sport we love building this motorsport portfolio at stan sport right into it
Round four of the Speed Series coming your way at the back end of May from Sydney Motorsport Park with a night race on the Saturday, but we've still got a good couple of hours here at Mount Panorama. And Tom Sargent has gone, well, I'm going to cut loose because now's the time. I've got the start. I've got the, the front of the field. I've got the circuit all to myself off the back of this restart. No need to worry about cold tyres after those, what, maybe five, six, maybe more laps under safety car. I mean, the temperature hasn't really dropped yet, but we're getting towards the four o'clock uh, hour locally here at Bathurst, and that's when things start to change rapidly. Rusty? Just down at the Linton garage, you're going to get a shot here uh, in a moment of a, an elderly gentleman in his 80s who's a proper legend of Australian motorsport. This is Ralph, Ralph Bellamy. He worked on the Lotus Type 78 with Colin Chapman, has worked with some of the all-time greats in F1. And when it comes to aerodynamic advancements in Formula One, that man right there was very much at the forefront of development of it. So he is still, even now at 84, crunching numbers, working on strategy, and he still designs by hand to this day. To my right, in this same uh, garage, is Drew Russell, and you guys have had a terrific day, haven't you, so far? Yeah, we uh, we blew an intercooler hose a bit earlier, which cost us about a lap, but we're coming back all right and see what happens to the end. That's why that's what I'm reacting to, because you went out and you thanked all the crew during that last pit stop. Give people watching at home now that you're third in the queue here. What's the play for you and your brother for the, the remainder of this? Looks like Dad's going to relax for the rest of it. Yeah, I think he's done for the day. I mean, no pressure on either of us. It's probably exciting. Uh, Setting our expectations at the moment, so we'll just do the best we can and see where we end up. I'll leave you to enjoy it. And I've also spoken to Beric Linton over in the background here. Just a reminder of that that issue in the early part of the day for that team who were one of the favourites for today. A high pressure fuel pump fail in that car. They have never experienced any problem like that with that car before. Rusty, we've got drama at the Worth Cutting, and it's the Alfords Ford Mustang, and they've had a crash into the wall, pointing the wrong direction on the run up the hill and it'll almost certainly deliver a safety car. The racetrack was energised, lots of purple sectors being set and this is what happened. Oh, it was wheel to wheel. There was contact from the BMW side by side through the kink and a heavy impact. Driver's right on the run up the hill. The shadow's getting longer on the circuit. So you wonder now if it is really starting to cool down. Well, here's some good signs. Oh, that's get it moving again. That is uh -oh. incredible that you could get away with an accident at that part of the world and still have a car that can drive out the other side. That is phenomenal. You've got to negotiate it first. <laughs> he's got to get out of there first unscathed, which he's done so now. On the outside there, how many times have we seen it? How narrow it gets coming into the cutting and the gradient. Jamie Wincup, perhaps, is probably the most uh, recent one that springs to mind, isn't it? So... It brings the best undone and uh, contact there and into the wall as always. Well, Larry Perkins ended up there and that, that was pretty much the time when it he was, said it's, yeah. it's time for me to walk away. That, that is extraordinary. So wheel to wheel, side by side with the 140 BMW. <laughs> Don't think he expected that car to be there and just turned in Tony Alford behind the wheel. This car was ninth outright at the point of that. We, we have had so many moments today where Every other day of the week would be a pretty large accident in Mount Panorama Thames, but somehow they managed to get away with it, and they've done the same there. Tony behind the wheel of the Ford Mustang. Quite extraordinary stuff. Well, the beauty is that we didn't have to have the safety car head out, and that's negated a stop-start nature of this race. So now we're getting down to critical time. Inside, two hours to go. Conditions will start to change rapidly. There's pace to burn at the front, and just by the looks of that, there is traffic troubles no matter which way you look, left, right, or in between. Up Mountain Straight, you can go for the drag along if you like, but it all comes to a head very, very quickly <laughs> when you get to Griffins. I could have sworn that was going to be a safety car, and I think the Tom Sargent team would have loved it because they're probably not far away from needing a stop into pit lane on fuel, let alone to tick the box for their seven, uh, sixth and final mandatory pit stop anyway. But they don't get it, so it could be a green flag stop. Just before that, Tom Sargent was setting personal best sector times and, in fact, set the best lap of that car for the motor race on lap 82. They're on 83 now. So there's lots of pace, and Tim Slade is going very quickly in car number eight. He's just set the personal best 
first sector for that car for the race. So there's some energy on the racetrack stubs here at the moment. They're pushing hard at the battle for the race lead. Well, it's such great performance by Tom Sargent. We've touched on it so many times across the weekend. And talking to him after he set what was pole position, this could get a little touchy as well. The RCF, the Lexus on uh, the outside there, but uh, they've worked it out between the two of them. But any time you see two going side by side, Matty White very quick to tap behind the leg there for that one. Because <laughs> it usually ends in tears. And again, it continues down the hill as well. Come on, guys. We've still got two hours of racing to go, but it's sheep stations. But just talking about Tom Sargent, and we're lucky we've got that car here today. They were very close to pulling the pin and giving someone else an opportunity to race this weekend. He said they've been burning the bit midnight oil trying to make sure that they could do it. A couple of months out, they thought, no, nah, we're not going to make it. 84 people want to have a start, so let's step back. But they thought, we'll give it another few days and see how we go. And what a superb performance to put that together. And smart, picking an M2. Yeah. So they've got the carbon roof. They've got a lighter variation of a BMW compared to the M3. And in a straight line, at a place like this, that is proven critical, isn't it? Properly quick. It's got a similar drive line to the M3 and the M4, the three-litre twin-turbo straight-six BMW engine that's been the car to have here over the last couple of years. So Slade's just set personal best lap for car number eight, 227.5. Tom Sargent just set the fastest final sector of the entire motor race. There's some real energy about the front of the field at the moment as they race towards what will be the final few pit stops and they're going to drive car 49 into pit lane. If anything, it'll be for a change of the Reg Grundy's uh, <laughs> for Tony Alford after that moment at the King. Pretty good engineer though, right? That can uh, turn this Mustang around and get it fixed up and back on track, right? True, true. Here we are on board, Prestige Connects, and Nick Perkat behind the wheel. Little flick of the headlights, I'm coming through. Up Mountain Straight, over the rise for the first time. Taking that inside line, just goes steaming past the traffic there. Now into the right-hander. Sun starting to peak a little bit lower, up towards the cutting. Flashing the lights on the uh, the indicator still there just to let the car in front know that a much faster car is coming through. I spoke to Nick last night. They were a little bit concerned about the, the straight line speed issue they had with this car. They were 8 to 10 k's an hour down on Conrad Straight compared to their teammate cars, and they're all identical out of the, the Barry Linton stable. But they thought that they'd found that before the start of the race, perhaps a mapping issue. And Nick wasn't so worried about being in the fight with the cars around him. He was worried about lapping cars because often some of the class cars are just as fast down Conrod Strait as the BMWs and he was a bit worried about fighting with one arm tied behind his back in the race today but so far so good. Subbed in of course for Shane Van Gisbergen, couldn't take part in this event. SVG we know you're watching, hope you're enjoying it. Nick is out there to do the job and as you well know this guy loves this circuit. There are some drivers around the history of Mount Panorama who just get it. You can't work out, you can't put your finger on it, they just get it. And he's one of them. A Bathurst 1000 winner, of course. He's picking his way through this field, through the traffic. Down Conrod Strait. Sixth gear. Flat stick all the way. What a ride this is. Just a touch on 260 kilometres an hour before the kink mat, so no problem with straight line speed with this car today. They've got whatever their issue was fixed. I love when he spoke to us uh, on the grid prior to this, and he said he got the phone call to say, do you want to step in? And he thought, take a minute to think about this while we're in our debrief here at Walkershaw Andretti United. And by the time he'd stepped out of the debrief, I think it was Shane had already released to the media that we've got Nick Perkett. <laughs> so he had no option, but he's really enjoying it. He's always uh, always in a good mood. And they have unlocked more speed. Mm. They've unlocked more speed out of this thing in the last day. So overnight, essentially, they found a little bit of a setting that gained a heck of a lot of speed. So this car will feel enormously different today than what it did yesterday for Nick Perkat. When you've got this kind of experience, for some drivers that can really be unsettling because everything changes. Mm. Your braking changes, everything changes all of a sudden when you've got yourself a jet and that's what they've found in between qualifying and race. So clean air is what he's looking for. 
And any time he gets it, he will put the foot down. He's got a lot of time left. He's got a nice straight car. And he has got his eyes on the prize today at the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 out. Two guys at the front still trading sector times. The BMW is energised at the pointy end. Sergeant, the lead is 14 seconds between the two of them. Slade's just been nibbling away, but it will ebb and flow as they get through traffic. Stubbsy, while we're watching this car, you've been in the lane for the first three hours of this race and it's been flat out, but I'm keen to know just what the vibe's like down there. I'm not such a broad thing to talk about, but there's so much energy in this paddock this weekend with these race teams. And even those that have had dramas and, and you've documented the story so brilliantly for us over the course of the race, there's still this positivity around this race, isn't there? Yeah, there is, and, and everyone loves it. We've talked about it across the weekend on our coverage here on Stan Sport as we head down, down Conrod Strait with cars all over the place, the different classes. Nick Perkat here as we hop on board trying to pick his way again. Uh -oh. oh, here's a moment, 48 coming down the mountain in the super cheap auto dipper. That's the Lexus, that's the RCF car that we've just been talking about. Keith Bensley behind the wheel. They were 20th outright. This is a, a brand new car for this race. It was the, the, it was the road car. It? it was the road car. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I thought, oh, we had a couple of wines and why don't we put this car, get it out of the garage and go and do the six hour. The, the problem with this is they might be able to recover themselves, Matt, but you really can't because it's completely blind. Yeah, he looks as though he's good to go, doesn't he? He's got his foot on the brake there. He looks as though he's just waiting either visually or gets something over the radio to say, right, I have a crack at it. There's not that much room on the right-hand side of the circuit. You can see where the wall wraps around here. So this is a very narrow part of the circuit that tries something like this. Uh-oh, <laughs> see? He can't see a thing out towards the left-hand side of that Lexus. So essentially he's going to have to fly blind here or just hold station. I don't think this happens. It's so, so narrow. And it, it just, TV just doesn't do it justice how steep it is and how narrow it is and blind as you're barreling down the hill. And given the time since the last safety car, the field is now spread out. So you can yeah. see the marshals, looks like they had their hands there up trying to signal to him to get it around. Oh, brilliant. And he's done it. So great work by everyone involved up there on the top of the mountain. And, and no doubt from the team as well, probably with the overhead drone shot as well, yeah. being able to say, OK, look around, look around, look to the marshals and get yourself around. Nice job. So that's two times in the last half an hour where you would nine times out of ten, in fact 9.9 .9 times out of ten, bet your house that there'd be a safety car. And this is how it happened. So it was lap traffic as well. And that's the Marcel BMW going down the inside. Got it. That's the same car that Tony Alford made contact with going up the kink. So speaking of, we can go down to Molly Taylor who has found Tony Alford. I have indeed, still in his Mustang, they've changed some wheels but the, all the, the components look alright, we just got some strings up for the wheel alignment so I'll try and have a word with Tony and try not to, to get in trouble with the mechanics, I don't want to touch, uh, touch these strings and muck up the wheel alignment. Tony, have you got a, a second for a, a quick word? It was a uh, pretty spectacular moment you had on there. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, obviously wasn't outside to watch it but um, yeah, it felt, uh, it felt a bit jolly inside, car. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that there's too much damage done, but obviously a lot of time, and, uh, yeah, that takes us out of contention. I've been... What happened? Look, I'm not really sure. Um, I certainly got hit from the, on the rear right, but uh, just there were three cars there. I think, I don't know if it's a racing incident or what else. It's, it's not for me to say at this stage. I'll, I'll have a look at the video, and then, and then we can assess it from there. Well, good to see that the damage isn't too bad, and we'll see you back out there soon. Thank you very much. Down at the garage for the 147 hour race leaders Tom Sargent and Cameron Hill. Now, while that incident, that recovery was uh, was waiting for the Lexus RCF, they were on the radio to Tom to warn him as he descended the hill, and they were worried about reception, radio reception. So the engineer actually walked all the way back out into the paddock to make sure it was crystal clear, and they breathed a massive sigh of relief as Tom descended and made it around nice and carefully around the uh, the RCF. Now, I've asked Cam Hill about when they're likely to stop this car again. He's a little understandably cagey with me right now. All he's prepared to tell me is we need one more and a safety car would work brilliantly.
and this is Alexis limping back after that wild moment at the top. So the same car involved in the Tony Alford incident at the kink on the run up to the cutting and then down at the Super Cheap Auto Dipper and this has got the uh, Ellery BMW issue of some tracking that isn't quite accurate and I'll dive that thing into the garage and get it in. We're going to say thank you to Matty White. Matty, we, well, it's been a joy to call with you, mate. I've listened to your commentary from Mount Panorama for years. Uh, we love having you as host of our coverage here on Stan Sport. I'd love to get your thoughts going into the final hour and a half. How's this going to play out from your viewpoint? And who are you going to be talking to down in Victory Lane at well, the end of this one? We've still got, what, 60 cars out there? We've still got more than 50 a cars. Good chunk least, of them. Yeah, at least out there. So well, what I'm seeing over the last 10, 15 minutes and what we're going to see more of in the next hour and pre-quarters is the conditions starting to play a part here. The shadows are getting longer, the track is going to change, it is going to get cooler, it's going to get harder, traffic's going to start to play a massive part in this. This thing is a long, long way from over yet, so hold on folks, we're in for a final couple of hours of craziness. Matt, thank you. We look forward to catching up with you at the end of the race for the debrief. Stick around after the race is finished and Matt and Molly and the team will have all the interviews and the post-race breakdown from today's Mount Panorama Classic. This is the race leader, Tom Sargent, 20 years of age. He's a Victorian Formula Ford champion, the reigning Australian Formula Ford champion. He'll line up with Cameron Hill Racing this year in the Porsche Sprint Challenge, the road to Carrera Cup. Uh, he's been working with the Cameron Hill team for a long time and he has just executed it every single turn at Mount Panorama this weekend from a qualifying lap that ultimately won't be recorded in the history books because they were excluded from the session to a storming opening stint where I think he was up 55 spots before he put into pit lane and now a, a commanding period out in front. This has been a bit of a clinic. Well, you see, he's ticked every box so far. Everything that he's had to do this weekend, he has done perfectly very measured young guy like Cameron Hill there's a lot of similarities between them in the way they go about their racing and it'll be interesting to see as the sun sets as Matt just touched on and the conditions and the experience comes to the fore behind him Tim Slade Aaron Russell Nick Murkat Dylan O'Keefe all guys who've raced in the Bathurst 1000 they're going to be all over the back of him he's got a very quick car but experience could play a huge role in this as we come to the latter stages of this race and it's time for a, a big welcome back to Matt Nolte, who's in the box, who's had a break. He's looking refreshed and ready to call us home. Uh, gee, I think it's a, it's a downgrade having me back after Matty White's been in here for the last two hours. Great to hear his insights into this high-tech oil spat for six hours, but he was 100% right, wasn't he, guys? We're heading to that crazy part of the race now. We're really starting to feel a pinch of a very big week here at the mountain and having a quick walk through the pitch just there. You can see some of the mechanics' eyes just starting to go, you know what, another an yeah. hour and 50 minutes. But this is where you've got to dig even deeper to get your car home in this race and we're seeing a lot of hard luck stories out there today aren't we you're spot on and Krause was just asking me before about what the vibe was like having just come up from the lane and it was almost like that calm before the storm we saw a, a few of the uh, crews having a bit of a kipper catching a bit of a nap because you know that you're needed to be right on the mark when the paycheck comes out. And that was almost the feel. You've got the barbecues out the back starting to fire up. People are thinking about, uh, well, unfortunately, some people are packing up and already on the road back home for those that aren't with us. But the good news is we're on track for, I think, a record number of finishes. Correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, oh, Kyle, but... You're calling I, I, that I, early, Stubbsy. Come on, it's a Matt oh, Nolte. Oh, that is... I reckon the record is 50. That is commentator's curse. <laughs> at the moment, the we've got a few up oh, our oh, sleeves. Oh, so wow. we'll see. We're, we're still a long way to go. The clock is now counting down, not up. And uh, Written, <laughs> authorised, <laughs> and <protected laughs> Christopher <laughs> Stubbs for the Christopher Stubbs party. <laughs> yeah. um, I might be making a beeline oh, oh, straight out. Maybe on 3.59 as well. Could be some teams chasing me at the end of this. That is a bold <laughs> call to make at this place. Uh, let's get an update on the Lexus. We just saw them with uh, hammers flailing away in the garages of Molly Taylor's down there. That's right. I actually found Steve Owen, so we come around here. We'll uh, grab a quick quick word with Steve on, on the headsets. What's the word? Yeah, it looks like it might have just been a steering arm, so fingers crossed we can get it back out there. But um, pretty disappointing. We're second in class, and... Some bikes trying to pass Keith between Skyline and, uh, and the Dipper and you know, caused unnecessary damage, so fingers crossed we can get it back out there. And any word from Keith inside the car? What's he saying? Oh, he's just gutted. We're running second in class. It's car's first ever race, so you know, we're all looking good and 
you know, there's a couple of bikes out there that um, aren't using their brains. We were talking about before we've been Scott's road car turned race car, so I guess it's too late to turn back now. Uh, there's always time to screw the plates back on and drive it back to, back to the Gold Coast, but yeah. What a great story to turn his, his road car into a race car. So it was, um, yeah, it's been fun for everyone building the car, and we we just such a uh, disappointment. We nearly ended up on the podium. And the guys are working pretty hard to get that back out there. Are you going to finish the last dinner, bring it home? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably finish at this stage. Um, we'll just see if it's if the damage is terminal or not. So fingers crossed it's not. Thanks, Steve. And if we just turn the camera around a little bit as well, we can just see. Uh, it's slight, taking slices out of this rim too, so it was a, uh, a pretty decent hit, but uh, you know, pretty fortunate to only have the you know the minor re-damage to the to the re-steering. Thanks, Molly. Down there in pit lane, Steve Owen telling it how it is, as only Steve Owen knows how to. Four cars on the lead lap now, as we're ticking over the 90 lap mark and just under an hour and 44 minutes remaining in the high tech oils bath of six hour what a cracking day it's been there's absolutely no breeze out there now this last half an hour of the race from a visual is just going to be stunning and we've still got a race on our hands here haven't we with 13 seconds between sergeant and slade can't say enough about the sergeant combination when they drove from 61st on the grid. 61st, yeah, that's 6-1 and one at Mount Panorama to get into the top 10 within the first 40 minutes of the race. And they have had power to burn here today. And getting past those cars early on, that's a tough gear because everyone's nervous. There's cold tyres, you've got a range of not just performance of vehicles but a range of experience you've got people yep. that would be so anxious cutting their first laps obviously you're going to put your most experienced person probably in that situation for those teams that have got the newbies but to get past them that shows experience beyond his yep. years in the full grid at mount panorama where it can get very narrow that was an outstanding point in the common thing you always hear too stubsy when you walk into bathurst how many times have you heard someone say it's a lot bigger, it's a lot more daunting than I expected it. Nobody comes here going, oh, yeah, it's just another racetrack. Yeah. They all take this place seriously. You've got to have respect for it. You've got to understand its history. You've got to know how to drive to the conditions around here. Standing in the coffee queue yesterday, and I didn't turn around, but there were a couple of gentlemen behind me who were, well, were here, and, and yeah, one of them was his first time racing in the six hour, and, and just the discussion that they were having, and uh, oh, I'll put my hand up, I was happily eavesdropping, because it was fascinating, they were discussing the route that they took to get here in terms of not only the car and the preparation, but actually which way they drove to get here, and oh, you went that way, oh, that's a great little town, and they were introducing themselves to each other and nattering away, and they're the stories that we love behind the scenes, and, and that's exactly the point, Matt, is the way that they were describing the first experience of cutting their first laps as a first timer here, eyes as big as dinner plates, but yeah. loving every moment of it. Boys, can I tell you a story about Schumacher and please, Perez? Please, please. No, I'm not talking about the Grand Prix. <laughs> Don't get excited. I'm talking about the Subaru that's on screen now, the Kelso Electrico entry, uh, electrical entry. Uh, Brad Schumacher, no relation, driving, and Sergio Perez. And not him. Not him. <laughs> Checo. Uh, behind the wheel, correct. It's Checo, and he is actually driving at the moment. These guys, 12th outright, quiet achievers. They're only a couple of laps off the lead of the motor race. So Serge is behind the wheel at the moment. He's quite an experienced driver in the Porsche world and production sports cars with his good mate Marcel Zalua. They've teamed up for a long time. Brad Schumacher, a staple, lives closer to Mount Panorama than Grant Denyer does. <laughs> So you know when you do that, you're in pretty good company. Uh, he is the Kelso Electric on the side of the car, and Brad has been racing in the Fanatec GT World Challenge, powered by AWS in his Audi R8. Had a really good run at Phillip Island last time out. Uh, this has been a really quiet, achieving little performance. The Subaru has lacked the outright speed of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evos in Class A1, and they're certainly down on top-line speed. It's always been an issue with this car, in fact, there was one year they took the rear wing off because they felt like it was adding drag, but then they probably got told to bring it on because it was outside the car's homologation and they sold it with a rear wing, so you've got to run it with a rear wing. But they've done a really nice job and they've got themselves up into the top 12. And in A1, they're not that far outside podium contention. They've got some pretty heavy hitters to try and beat if they want to get a trophy but still this has been a, a quite achieving performance from Perez and Schumacher and Perez was a late call up in, yes. in this uh, in this lineup too wasn't he confirmation of that only coming in recent days add to that they had some 
break issues, late night working on, on Friday night too, so to be in this position as you've touched on is, is really fantastic. And this is one of a number of teams with the spare car parked out the back in the paddock next <laughs> yeah. to the transporter because if something breaks in this they'll just go and literally get like for like component. It's like a graveyard, all up. these cars <laughs> out the back without number plates on them, it's uh, just cut and paste isn't it? But that's what it's about isn't it? Rusty? I've tracked down Brad for a uh, for a quick chat. You're at the back getting getting all suited up. Yeah, just uh, getting suited up again to uh, jump in, and then I'll uh, double send it to the end, which is exciting. Can't wait to jump back in the car. It's a ball out there. Have you enjoyed it? Because it's been a good battle with uh, with you and and the Evos. And can you can you sneer a party with you in class terms? Well, that's what we're for. Um, look, the Subaru obviously qualifies, um, you know, strongly. It's just the way the nature of the beast. It, however, is very economical during the race, and we do run for a long time on fuel out there. So, yeah, I think we're sitting in 12th at the moment, which is right where we need to be. If we have a uh, convenient safety car jump in for us at the right time, I think we generally can go for an out, uh, sorry, for a podium in uh, Class A1. Long trip home for you. I know this must be very hard, your home race. No? Of course, yeah, yeah, just about 400 metres that way. So, yeah, it might, well, if we get a good result, there might be a uh, couple of shandies in the bar later. Who knows? See you for a lemonade. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. Right, that's our night. Sorted. <laughs> Schumacher residence. I like it. <laughs> nice work, Greg Rust. What a buzz to live in Mount Panorama as well. Look over the uh, the hill and there's the racetrack every day. Brad Daniels called this place home for a long time. War pit stop action continues here with one hour, 38 minutes still to go in this race. of building towards the last hour, happy hour, if you will. The Sunset Showdown. We'll have a lot of names for it. This afternoon, the high tech oils, Bathurst six hour unit car with two bug one up in the Burst Auto Parts Audi TT. They're third in class, Matt. They're going along really nice, so not that right. Dylan O'Keefe still leads the way in A1 in the GWR Ram AMG A45. Lycano in the 14, Evo in second. Bug one is third. And he's a battle for track position. There's not a massive amount of time between the two of them, about 25 seconds, so they're on the hunt. Jude behind the wheel, Ben to jump in this car for the run home, and they've only got the one compulsory pit stop to go. So they'll be looking for probably 15 minutes, if not a little bit longer in this race before they make the stop and try and get to the end on a tank of fuel. We love the onboards here, especially when we've got a stick shift, it always makes it a little more uh, entertaining for us to watch to see exactly where he's plucking the gears as we head down Conrod Strait. The onboard's also showing us exactly what a production car is. You see the dash, it's the dash that you find yeah. in the car. And that's the whole point, isn't it, in terms of what you can and can't change. A steering wheel you can change, there's a few things you can do. Obviously there's the safety componentry as well, fuel right. cells and things like that. But what you see is what you get largely. That's what's cool about it. This, well, the faster cars go through, picking off Bargwiner and one of the Suzuki Swifts on the right-hand side. Of course, they were caught up in an incident here today in front of the ridges. These guys have had a good day. They've just been solid, just been motoring around there and looking to give Burst and Auto Parts a great reward. Stepping into the Bagwana, Bagwana, Bagwana team. They're all down there today in the pits. It's great to have them here, part of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. down in the garage and getting ready for this final stint. He's had a solid weekend, hasn't he? Got the jazz hands going there, maybe? It had to be Papa Bark, surely. <laughs> the Jason jazz hands. Put the camera in there and Jace comes to life. We might take a look soon at the class leaders as we head towards the business end of this race. Here today as the shadows get longer at this point, the track will become a real talking point soon. If you don't have a dark visor or a pair of sunnies on, you are really going to squint on the way up to the Worth Cutting. So, our leader and class X leader right now, Tom Sargent. What a day out these guys have had the Tinker Australia entry on their 93rd lap and the fastest lap of the race only seven laps ago. They have a 13 second lead back to Slade and Aaron Russell, the Novocastrians, running first, second and third right now in Class X. Nick Perkat in fourth position and on the same lap, Krause. 
So 14 laps into this stint, just been doing some mental arithmetic, it's hard work at this stage on a Sunday afternoon in the Bathurst six hour. The longest they've gone on a stint today was 28 laps. There was some safety car involved in that as well. The reason I'm talking about this is because they've got one pit stop to make. And they're balancing between getting that stop in and getting it done, but making sure they've got enough fuel in the car to get to the end without having to stop for a splash and dash. And right now, I reckon they're reasonably marginal. I think they've got 10 laps up their sleeve before they need to stop 103 laps in, and then there's probably going to be 25 laps to go. I think they're marginal. I think they might be in there. This is the Class A1 leader. Dylan O'Keefe behind the wheel of the Mercedes AMG A45. Running back in fifth position as well. He's teamed up with Mike Sheargold and Ollie Shannon, the Mercedes A45 for GWR, one of many cars. And you think it's busy in the Barguana garage. Go down to Garth Morton Racing today. Cast of thousands down there today. They love their production car racing. Our no enormous contribution Garth Walden Racing has, has made, will continue to make to motorsport in Australia. It's such a professional organisation. Here's our A2 class leader, Tony Quinn, the local legends entry. We've spoken at length about them this weekend. They were a long, long way behind the eight ball when they started this weekend. Pig, P-I-G, is how <laughs> Grant Denny described the car, and it's obviously... Uh, not squeaking at the moment because it's uh, <laughs> it's doing pretty well, isn't it? <laughs> Bring it home the bacon. Oh, I did my best not to laugh because I don't laugh that often, but seriously, that was awesome. <laughs> It's, it's been a long day, hasn't it? <laughs> Some of your finest work, my friend. Stubbsy, the quietest guy you'll ever meet, folks. Yeah. Come down with a clanger of the day. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> this six outright, this has been a really, really good performance. Grant Denyer's work in the opening uh, third of this race was outstanding and some of yeah. the best, I think, that Grant's ever driven here at Mount Panorama. This relationship goes back a long way. They missed the start, of a front row start in the back of 12 hour in uh, I think 2009 it was in a VIP pet food sponsored Mitsubishi Lancer for technical reasons. It was a cabling issue. Uh, they had to start from pit lane, but uh, Grant and Tony have been driving together for some time and uh, they're a great partnership. And this Mac one version of the Ford Mustang has been a step up from the Mustangs we saw here 12 months ago. And they've been going along really well. So they're sixth out right now, lead the way in their class. They're doing it comfortably too, the next Class 2 car is down in 25th position and several laps down right now. Is our Class B leader in the Forbes Wilson group entry of Matty Forbes Wilson from Mildura and Mark Ballard who's behind the wheel right now. They were involved in an incident in the DBA chase yesterday during qualifying. Another one early in the race today. But right now they're 11th outright and the next B class car, which there's only two in the field, is well down the order. So they're looking pretty safe here right now. We'll talk a lot about this with some battles starting to brew in between classes and interclass battles, if you like. And they were the winners in B2 in 2021 at the high-tech orders at the six hour. And this year we've combined. So we did separate them into the naturally aspirated uh, setup like we do in A1 and A2, but we've combined them uh, for the numbers this year. And here's our Class C leader at the moment, Scott Nichols. Grand Prix Mazda Kabucha. These guys have been outstanding. Uh, they're a couple of laps ahead on the second place car in class. They're running 15th outright. And it's been a faultless day for the Mazda 3 MPS. Jake Camilleri anchored the job early on. He and Scotty have been racing together a long time. Scotty was a, a saloon car racer. And now they cameo every now and then in production car races amongst their working commitments up there in Brisbane. So they've had a really, really good day in that fight for Class C. And speaking of classes, here's Class D, the Toyota 86 GTS. Lockie Bloxham drives car 119. They're currently on top in that battle. It's been a, a pretty feisty affair. There's been four different leaders in this class over the course of the race. They're currently in 18th position, but they've got Clark just behind them. There's not actually that much between no. the two of them in the battle for Class D. Finally, Dave Worrell in car number two leads to Class C at the moment, teamed up with Andrew McMaster in this little Mazda 3. And it's running down in 29th position with Cameron behind the wheel here now. And handy lead back to the next group. Oh. Oh, over here at the top of Solman Park on the high-tech oils replay. And 
How'd they all avoid that? That's my question of the day, oh. Matt Nolte. <laughs> wow. There's been so many moments that people have dodged the proverbial matrix bullet. Oh. And just turned in the, the little 255 Suzuki getting gobbled up there at Reed Park. And that's oh, a big moment, no. Nick Perkett just avoids a very, very large accident. Oh, the onboard. Oh, oh that is insane. millimetres either side. What a save by Nick Perkett. That is experience coming to the fore, isn't it? Oh, and just natural ability, heads up, driving all of the above. Pure oh, wow. instinct. Goodness. Pure instinct. Jet Johnson was watching that. <laughs> he loved every minute of it. He's downstairs with Molly Taylor. Jet Johnson just finishing your sandwich. They're almost choking on your sandwich after seeing that. Yeah, that was a good bit of driving there, wasn't it? But, um, yeah, it was a good sandwich, to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a bad, good, reflex, good young reflexes to do a bit of dodging like uh, Nick Perkett? Yeah. I don't really <laughs> want to test it, but I'm sure I could figure something out in that situation. Fair point. You guys just came in for a tyre change and then only a lap or two later coming back in with a, an issue with the centre bearing? Yeah, so, you know, Brock was on the radio saying there's a vibration that just keeps getting worse, so brought the car and did a tyre change just to eliminate that as a problem. Unfortunately, that wasn't our problem, so we believe it's a centre bearing that it's done, so he's going to keep driving it, he's going to have to be careful on it, and if the centre bearing goes, it goes. The tail shaft isn't going to go anywhere, so... No, I think, with, I think we'll be alright. Just might get a bit uncomfortable in the car, but you can get to the finish, right? Yeah, that vibration's going to get pretty bad for him, but, yeah, you know, I think he'll be able to figure out what to do. He's smart enough to sort something out, so as long as he can limp it home across the line, we'll all be happy. So you've done your driving for the day? Yeah, look, at the moment I've done my driving for the day, unless something happens and he starts to feel sick or something happens, I'll jump back in, but at the moment I'm done for the day. Hopefully it doesn't get too much worse. Good luck. Hopefully not, thank you. Jet Johnson down in the pits, thanks to Molly Taylor. We're all catching our breath, and I'm sure you are at home too on Stan Sport and what just happened at the top of Solomon Park, boys. Here it is, Nick Perkat right-hand side, oh. and just wiggled his way through in car number one. He didn't even scrape the mirror. <laughs> oh. 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 Hail Mary. That got was better. amazing. <laughs> and then he was placing the lights, going down Conrad, and uh, just thank the luck car for getting out of the way with the peace sign. So he's all good. Oh, that is the moment of the day for mine so far. Quite extraordinary. Nick Perkett behind the wheel. Fourth place. 50 seconds off the lead. Doesn't have car speed to burn, it must be honest. And hasn't made much of an impact on Aaron Russell, who's the next car up the road. But it's still going good. And we've gone to... Uh, old school mechanics to get the right front on this car with uh, a bit of foot power. Interesting there, Jet Johnson, saying about changing tyres. Not every car will change tyres today, will they? And that's that's remarkable when you think that you're here for six hours of racing, when normally all we would do at this point of the race is be analysing who's got what tyres left uh, to complete a race like the 1000. But these MRF tyres, the style of racing, mean it doesn't become such a crucial defining factor, does it? Correct. And I wonder if the final compulsory stop for this car, for Aaron Russell and for Nick Perkat, I wonder if they do a tyre. You can do it in the mandatory time you've got. I wonder if you put right side tyres on so you do have fresh rubber to the end. We do say thank you to you. You've got some more work to do downstairs, I think. It's going to get busy in the last hour. You might Stubbsy. Drive, yeah. Well, the way today's going, <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you, Stubbsy. Love your work up here. Enjoy I the rest of the race. tell you, a lay down Mazir, we're going to have the most finishes in this race that we've ever had. Looking forward to that He's record. He's standing by the Absolutely claim. Absolutely not going to happen. Thanks, and Captain Kirst. That's good. Turned his microphone off for that. <laughs> now, thanks to Christopher Stubbs. He's going back down to the lane to see out the remaining hour and 24 minutes and think about what he said. A heap of teams are lining up for him as well <laughs> yes. right now. We'll uh, get security down just to escort him down to our pit bunker. Thanks to Stubbsy, Crail and Nolte still with you. We'll plug Rust back in in a minute and see you through to the finish. The chequered flag, the high-tech oils, Bathurst six out. That's the margin. And the run up to Griffin's Bend, car 58, Aaron Russell behind the wheel. Nick Perkett, well, you know, you give the guy a G up, said the car didn't have pace to burn. He's just done a 227.89, which is the fastest lap for that car for the motor race. driver change happening in the Subaru. 
slash Toyota. Same car, different badge. It's the Kiwis. Great to see them back out. They had uh, all sorts of dramas earlier in the weekend with the crash and all-night repair. I think the most important job is what is going on there is to make sure you've got a clean windshield for the run to the finish because as that sun gets low, we saw it with Super Cheap Auto TCR yesterday. Race two, driving into the sun is a massive issue at the end of this motor race. So having a clean shield is going to be absolutely critical for visibility. Welcome back, Greg Russ. It's nice to have you back with us for the run to the flag. Thank you, Richard. I feel uh, like I haven't had enough of my drug that is pit lane, if I'm honest. <laughs> but it was great to be down there and wander around and catch up with everybody. It's um, so much going on and, uh, and very much looking forward to the run to the flag here. We asked Stubbs the same question, the vibe, what's it like down there today? Uh, it's a mixture of everything, and, and that is uh, people that are exhausted from pulling all-nighters uh, for, you know, work that's happened behind the scenes before we even started this race. And it's just a, a, a day that is taxing in an adrenaline sense. Yeah. So when you when you look at the crews, you can tell they're, they're tired and saving their best for the right moment and so on. Even, even Dylan O'Keefe looked a little, just a little drained before, but uh, was taking on the right sort of fluids and things like that so that he's... You know, he's um, he's good for these at these final just under 90 minutes of the high-tech oils Bathurst six hours. It's a little bit of a mixture of everything, and and as we detailed at the commencement of the coverage, a nice um, good array of people from the automotive industry here, Matt. You know, all sorts of different businesses. You know, some of the guys that are working on these cars will go back after maybe an Easter Monday off where they travel home, and they'll be working in workshops around the country or smash repair businesses and so on. Talking this event up, which is gaining more and more momentum. We had 80 cars, over 80 teams dominate for this event. It dated back when entries opened towards the end of 2021. And a field of 62 started here today. And it'll just get bigger and bigger, won't it? This is like the old, this is the old school Bathurst, but with that modern feel, as Matt White mentioned earlier today, during the middle part of this race, this is the Suzuki Swift, the man Cowley, Matt Thulis and David Bailey will make their way across the mountain. There's more happening in the pits. We'll head down there too. Well, I just thought it was interesting having a look at these uh, pit stops. They're a little bit different to what we see in, in something like Supercars or Formula One without the, the air jacks and, and the centre wheel hub. So you can see there's a lot more that goes into a, a wheel change. You've got the traditional jack like you'd see in your garage. They've got the, the good old breaker bar there to uh, tighten those wheel nuts up doing it side by side so obviously taking a little bit longer and the other interesting things uh, with the with the refuel you see there's that little of just unclipping that little earth wire there so that that has to by regulations be on the car when you're refueling so they were just refueling before that's why that was there and also if you look at the back behind the rear wheel it's just been about to be pulled out actually you'll see it in action the uh, very uh, very high-tech chalk system uh, as the regulations we spoke about about all the crew having to be behind the red line before the car can go so you see that that little pulley system so all these cars coming in hot brakes the last thing you want to do is be sitting on the brakes while uh, you're getting all the work done and refueling so this little chalk allows the guys to, to get off the brake but then everyone to be back behind the red line and, and get away quickly so a, a couple of cool little ingenuity things to um, you know work within the regulations we have in production car racing McLaren did a stop in two 2.4 seconds last weekend so this is the very very different scenario molly and hey there's a story that people following our coverage should know you had to do a tire change in a rally at one stage but you made your mum do it didn't you you didn't get your hands dirty you made your mum who was co-driving do it hello to coral taylor who will no doubt be watching look to, to clarify we did it as a team it's just i already had my driving gloves on and she didn't have time to get her gloves on because i didn't want to lose time so her fingers uh, suffered and um i will never leave that down i know you thanks won't. for reminding oh, me sorry sorry it's a story that i love thank you and i think that was um was that the vw scirocco the gold coast embroidery entry going into Right. The entry into the paddock area, the Robin Lacey, Matilda Moravicic and Peter Lacey entry as we take a look at the ASAP entry, the Lexus RCF which has had some close calls today hasn't it? And it's Up at Worth Cutting and then down at the Dipper. Yeah and it was only in the pits just a few moments ago as well so that returns back out onto the track uh, in our class A2 class right now. The uh, Scott Gore, Keith Bensley and Steve Owen entry on the way out of pit lane. It was a great summary of how the pit stops work when we're so used to seeing air jacks and single nut pit stops that come on there. That's how it was in the day. She raised a really good point too about the static strap that they used during a fuel stop. It's a cable that back in the day we'd have to use around your ankle which would tie something to earth out just in case you'd get a fuel spill and particularly with the hot engines and hot brakes would start a fire. That would neutralise any drama. 
I just love the fact that it's a throwback to the, the old days and the fact that it in, involves the crew in a different way. We take a look at the 147. Again, the Tom Sargent Cameron Hill entry has the fastest lap of the race. Started from rear of grid, leads by 10.8 seconds with just over an hour and a quarter remaining in the 2022 edition of the six hour. Amazing comeback story, really. When they had that pole position lap rubbed out, didn't get down in the mouth about it. And Rusty, they're not far away from a pit stop. Uh, the car 147 is going to get to the lane very, very soon. And there's a bit of confidence about that it will be their final stop of the race. So they think they can get to the end uh, with this final sixth compulsory pit stop for car 147. Cameron Hill will jump behind the wheel. The difference between them and car eight with Tim Slade, Slade's final stop of the race will be for fuel only, and it will be to whatever time it needs to fill the tank up. They don't have to do that mandatory pit stop time that we've been talking about all day because they've ticked their boxes. They've done the job when it comes to the stops. So it's a really interesting battle with 10 seconds between them. I see it there being very little in terms of track position between these two cars once their final stops are done. And the longer they go into the race, the easier it becomes on fuel towards the end. Little shot there a moment ago of the Class D entry. The Mini, James Keane, Michael Sloss, Thomas Needham among the many different makes and marks that we have in this field. And we're back to watching our leader who's pulled just a, a tenth or two here on Tim Slade. On the run up the mountain. Local legends entry of Tony Quinn currently sits in position seven, comes past us there. Couple of laps down now, but leading the A2 class, the extreme performance forced induction class. They had a fantastic day, but these two have just had this car set to kill since they started their charge through the grid at 11.45 here today at Mount Panorama and heading towards the final hour of this race. They are looking really in control with 10.5 seconds back to Slade, another 19 seconds back to Russell and over Castrian. So we'll celebrate this one if they bring this home today. What an effort. That's been a huge performance. And Wayne's drive early in the race was great. You heard about the various Miladies he's carrying and the injuries, but uh, you know, what was it a torn ACL? There's no way he was going to miss this race. You just strap him up, away you go. He was going to do this weekend with his boys behind the wheel of that BMW, and they're comfortably in third position. So the way I see it at the moment is it's Sergeant V Slade, and it'll be Cameron Hill in 147 to bring it home. Then there's going to be a fight between Nick Percat and. Uh, Say to be Drew Russell, perhaps he brings home. Drew was in the car lane there before while mm. Aaron was at the wheel, so looking nice and, and fresh. And they were very grateful for the crew who had been excellent on that car today. The execution of the stop I saw for Aaron Russell in that last hour or so, very, very well done. If it comes down to a shootout on car speed, it becomes very, very difficult to bet against the BMW M2 competition that Tom Sargent is currently driving because that car has consistently been the fastest car all weekend. So it's really interestingly poised this race, folks. And the last round of pit stops is going to decide the running order for the sprint to the flag. And then, of course, it's Bathurst, isn't it? So you really just don't know how it's all going to play out. We can hypothesize and theorize and strategize until we're blue in the face. And we'll do it. Us. We <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, late safety car, who knows? Sprint to the flag. Bathurst will be Bathurst, won't it? And ultimately, the mountain decides. No, the red phone, Richard, you can call, <laughs> you can call race control. You're a man of a lot of power, a lot of horsepower, Richard, these days. <laughs> no. We should try and contemporise this conversation, maybe. <laughs> yes. Jeez, oh. It's getting worse. It's, good. it's been a long weekend, folks. Hope you enjoyed our coverage over the last two days on Stan Sport. Of course, the action continues when we head to Sydney for the next round of Speed Series. At the end of May, we'll have some racing under lights there at Sydney Motorsport Park, and of course, Later in the year, we head to places like Queensland Raceway and Sandown in Victoria. It feels like an eternity since we've been to Sandown, and it has been three years, in fact, since the series made its way down there. We'll be back here in November for the Bathurst International. That's the Audi in the pit lane, is it? The Burson Auto Parts entry. Just noticing it slide down the order just a couple of spots while it takes some service. The TT back to the Russell entry. Here it is. 71, currently 10th outright, Jude Barguana at the wheel. 
So fourth and final stop for this car, Rusty. They've had a really, really good day. This is their last compulsory pit stop they need to complete, and they should go that hour and 15 to the flag. Or have they just done a drive-through? Yeah, it looked like stopped? a drive-through. We'll clarify that with race control for you. Didn't, so they're up the, the higher end of the pit lane up toward the exit, and I don't think we saw him stop. So four seconds on the screen here. Yeah, that's a drive-through. That's exactly the transit time. Interesting. So they're third in Class A1, but they're still under a little bit of pressure from the Schumacher Perez Subaru. There's Cameron Hill. He plays many roles. Team boss. Uh, he's mechanic. He's engineered. He's plying his own way as a professional driver as well. He's the reigning Porsche Carrera Cup Australia champion. He won that so brilliantly last year and now racing in Super 2 with Triple Eight Race Engineering. So he's with the best team, but so proud of his little family race team that he and his dad, Colin, his mum, Helen, they've built. It's a really, really competitive operation. And this is almost a home race. They're a Canberra outfit. So four hours up the road. And what a debut this has been for this car. Tom Sargent has talked about this young man's performance all weekend. He has marked himself out for star potential and a Formula Ford graduate coming through the ranks of race of Porsche this year. But wow, what a way to start your 2022 campaign. A huge performance at the Matter 6 hour. And it's been something like, I think, 100 days of solid work by that team on this car for this moment. And, you know, we've covered the the shock uh, of losing that pole position and to, to come back from that. It's a beautifully prepared little car, even little subtle details. The blue that you can see on the side of the car as the sun sets here, it's got a magnificent look on television, doesn't it? Just little subtleties like that. That's the heart and soul they've, they've placed into the 147. He's pressing on, Sergeant. So perhaps making the most of an in-lap. And Cameron was waiting on in pit lane. So it'll be their final compulsory pit stop. Hesitation on the fall there coming over Reed Park. I wonder if it's nearly out of gas, yeah. maybe. I wonder if it's a... Uh... It's not running full pace like it was before, so might just be taking his time on the way down. Get Molly and Stubbsy onto that. Just to see if that's a... Uh, just nurse it. This is the lap you need to push. They, they, they need to build track position. Aaron Russell. Yeah, Aaron Russell's got some serious pace aboard his car at the moment, so I don't think they're far away from the final stop. The car currently running in third place. Gap's 12.2 seconds. Did, did it sound odd through Ranger Elbow there, or was that just me? They're giving up two seconds in the middle sector with no traffic. Follow it down, Conrad. I don't think they're far away from the stop. I wonder if they've got the thing in the surge tank, perhaps, for fuel. Well, the, gap's gone, okay now. the gap went out two seconds. In fact, it's gone out another one and a half seconds out there to Slade on this lap alone. So he's heading down towards the DBA chase now. As the pit lane starts to get busy. Once again, our final round of pit stops to come in the high tech oils back to six hour. Is he going to go in? He's going for another lap. Still flashing the lights, getting past the Class B Commodore. Aaron Russell's on a really good lap. Aaron's taken four seconds out of Tim Slade this lap. I think Slade's had some traffic. It's lap time from Sargent to 30.4. It's not slow. It's not the fastest of the, the cars done today. Look Percat good. pushing on as well. Look good as it came past us in the commentary box too. So just whatever it, the moment was over the top that caught our attention. Middle sector for Percat. Best we've seen so far. We go back to the Russell entry, the 58 through the final corner. It's a, it's a day of what could have been for so many, Matt, isn't it? W would we have seen Anton Di Pasquale at this point oh. in the mix? Will Davison, you can add to that list as well. You, you could have set up a form guy to go, that's how it'll be the majority of this race. And within 30 minutes, the whole game changed earlier today. That was Aaron Russell. He was on target for his fastest lap then, and he missed it by four tenths of a second. But he encountered traffic at the bottom of Conrad Strait. Look at that sun glare coming through. Backs up Krause's point. This is Nick Perkat's number one car. You've got to make sure you've got a clean windscreen for this run because the next hour and 10 minutes is going to be lethal out there on the ice. Up pit straight and on the run up to Worth Cutting. So this will be the final and he's shielding his eyes for the sun at turn one. They'll get that screen clean for Nick. 
So this will be the final compulsory stop for this car. It's their seventh time in the lane, but remember they had the uh, penalty a little bit earlier on. So one extra stop. Oh, they've got the tear off on, even better than that. Nice work. This team should know that, well prepared. So fuel goes in first. There's Nick watching on. He's in the car until the end. He'll be fine for driver time. Typical professional race car driver spec in lap. Purple middle sector. And it's thumbs up. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate the uh, systems check there. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Like a tally or something? I think it was. Yeah. He's having a good time. He was at the Bend early this week testing an Audi GT3 car that he'll run in the Bathurst 12 hour a little bit later on. Then there was the Walkinshaw debrief, which is when he got the phone call to come over here. So it's been a busy time, but he's enjoying life at the moment, Nick Perkat. But I was going to make the point, his middle sector of that lap was the fastest of the race. Full stop, everybody. Really impressive in lap for Nick Perkat. So, or is it? Or What's is it? going on with car number one? A brief hesitation. There it goes. A slight delay, but now clear. And car number one rejoins the fight. Full tank of juice, 100 litres. And Nick Perkat, who's clearly enjoying himself behind the wheel to the chequered flag with an hour and seven minutes to go. Stubbsy. I tell you what, we know we're getting close to the finish line here. It's getting pretty tense down here in garage 147. So Cameron Hill is making sure that he's spoken to the team. They will clean the windscreen. Sounds like they're going to look at doing some tyres. That's the direction at this point. There hasn't been any issue. They're not worried about running out of fuel. He's just exhausted and taking conservatively, making sure that while he's tired, he doesn't make any errors. That's Stubbsy. Gap is 15.7 seconds now. Sergeant to Slade. Traffic here for the race leaders. It's just constant, isn't it? Mm. That's where the Suzuki Swift got into its moment earlier in the race. About 30 minutes ago as Sergeant takes us across the top of the mountain. So Russell's about 12 seconds away from Slade. On this lap alone, 2.29.8 the last lap for Russell, 2.29.1 for Slade. So he's responding. Perkat's come back out in fifth position. With two minutes and 17 seconds between Sergeant and he, of course, he's ticked off that last pit stop. This is inside the team that run Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent. There's Cam, suited up, ready to go. So are we seeing a little bit of movement here and maybe time for a pit stop, the nerves <laughs> for family and friends down there right now. Mate, we've still got an hour to go. I know. It's a bit early to be uh, that nervous, I would have thought. So much passion goes into it. Nolts, you just raised the question about the pit stop times. They're just inside it. They're all nailing the, the 90 seconds stop to stop. So they're doing a really nice job these teams throughout the day and, and all the penalties have come from safety car issues to be really honest no, no the pit lane stuff been pretty well done there's only been that one drive through penalty for Tim Slade for um, incorrect procedure with the refueling and we think that was down to them cleaning the headlights and the window of that car uh, while they were refueling which of course is a no-no ultimately it hasn't cost them that much they're still very much in the mix now without doing a Chris Stubbs Oh, no, don't. Are you shocked that we didn't have more safety cars? Oh, it's got an hour to go. I know. I expect There's still a, a lot sixth more. of the race left. And into the lane. Right. This is the point of interest in the motor race because this will be the final stop for car number eight. And they've ticked all their compulsory stop boxes. So this will be as quick as they can get a full tank of fuel in. And they will go. And Aaron Russell's just set his car's fastest lap of the race, 227.2 and moves to second. They've still got to complete their final pit stop. Slow getting the fuel rig in yeah. there. This is their eighth time in the lane. They had a drive through penalty. This should be a free pit stop for them. So they should have been a little bit faster than that as far as I can see. We'll double check that with you with race control, but they ticked their compulsory pit stop boxes earlier in the race. 
They're having trouble with this, with the coupling, aren't they, or something? Away he goes. So they're, they're not waiting the full amount of time, so we're correct in the free pit stop thing, which it is, but it just wasn't a particularly speedy one. They've been bitten out of the lane by the Schumacher Perez Subaru. So a minute and 10 they're in the pits for. Yeah. Including the transit time. Yeah, which is fine. So you don't have to hit that minimum pit yeah. stop time uh, margin when it's a free pit stop, when you've ticked your boxes for the compulsory stops. Just wasn't a very fast pit no. stop. But that, that's going to undo a lot of the advantage that they gained um, in their battle for track position with the Cameron Hill car. Anyway, we'll follow that out. We've still got a few stops to go. Aaron Russell uh, now moves up to second on the road with one stop to go, which will be the full pit stop window they need to tick off. They've only been through the lane five times. I'll humour you and answer your question, Matt, about the, the safety car <laughs> thing. I thought I was it's, off the hook when the eight car no, came in. Because I've been, I've been dwelling on it. Let's put it this way. Last year there were 11 safety cars in this race. There were a, a lot of safety cars in and today? the race last year. Well, we've had five. So from a, a green flag running point of view, it's been significantly better. And I... I say that with a caveat that there's still 64 minutes to go in the motor race. From two an hour to one an hour on average <laughs> last year, <laughs> hey? It's been a speedier yeah, race. Yeah. What are we up to now? hundred and... What are we up to in lap? hundred and six laps, laps yeah. so... I, again, I hesitate to bring it up, but the uh, distance record is 131, just over 813 kilometres. So Russell responds, another fastest lap. In fact, it is the fastest lap of the race that time by... The go-karts go BMW, 2.27.2, the gap is 17 seconds, and he is on a charge, but look at the traffic ahead for him here, that's Sergeant in the lead, three or four cars in the mix here, he's going to put a lap down on, third car on your shot, clears one of the Mustangs. This is great stuff from Aaron Russell, I talked about Nick Perkat's in lap in the purple sector, well... Aaron, as he builds towards their final pit stop, purple lap time, fastest of the motor race. Love the energy there. They they think they're in a shot, not just to go second. I reckon they think they're in a shot to win this race. They're a little bit behind on track position. They might need a little bit of assistance, but they are well and truly in contention for this motor race. What an incredible story, a trio from Newcastle. Dad's been around motorsport for a long time and not just in circuit racing, as you know, Noltz. Both, both the boys have have had their going career terms at, at uh, trying to be full-time and, and professional races. And we can think back not to not all that long ago when Aaron was at Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport, right. for example. So, you know, great to welcome them back to the mountain. There's no more uh, pride than, than Wayne when we saw him take to the wheel of the circuit on Friday. So great effort, this. And... Here's an example, Rusty, of how good this stint has been from Aaron Russell. So, like for like, against Thomas Sargent and Tim Slay, they all stopped on lap 79, was their last pit stop. Obviously, we've just seen a few now. For that stint, Thomas Sargent averaged 2 minutes 34. Tim Slade averaged 2 minutes 34. This is all green flag running. Aaron Russell, 2.32. So, average lap speed, 2 seconds a lap faster. So, they've gained time through this middle period, this late period of the race. It's been a really big drive from Aaron Russell. This has been enormous. And worth pointing out, Dylan O'Keefe, who's fourth, still on the lead lap, leading Class A1. His average lap speed across this run has been bang on with what Tim Slade and Thomas Sargent have done. So Dylan has driven extremely well. Some highlights for you of the performance of car 147 across the day. Tom Sargent and Cameron Hill, Tegra Australia entry from the back of the grid and we were astonished Matt within the first hour or so where he'd recovered something like 54 positions it was insane had to get past all these cars in that first hour to get himself into the top position and from that point they've just been carving this Mount Panorama circuit with their own name it's pretty much been unstoppable gaps out to 27 seconds now because the Aaron Russell car has just come into pit lane beneath our commentary position and it's struggling and it's struggling. struggling up the lane Aaron Russell no. has run out of puff and they will not, their, their garage, their pit box is at the exact opposite end of the lane. Unbelievable. And here they come. Oh. Still trying to wave at the camera. 
one of our fantastic volunteer officials has dived in to help push. They don't need to do that, but what a, a great sporting gesture. The local legends car in, so that'll be their final pit stop of the day. This place is unbelievable. A brutal, it really is. Brutal. Aaron's has driven one of the best stints of his career. Looks like the cabbage entry in as well, boys. I think they're changing the right front on that car, are they? So, yeah. Right-hand tyres are the go, I think. I'm, I'm getting word from the lane, some spies down there working on some strategy, <laughs> and I reckon they're going to put some tyres on Thomas Sargent, Cameron Hill's car as well. I think they're looking for right-hand tyres at their pit stop, and they've got the time to do it as well. Interestingly, they didn't put tyres on car number eight, so there'll be a, a rubber advantage with two fresh MRFs, potentially, if they go down that route for car 147. Huge weekend for Dylan O'Keefe between TCR duties where he had some third place finishes and now this where he finds himself fourth on the road, well ahead in class A1. They've done a ripping job in that car here today. He's potentially gonna be third outright here in a minute. They still haven't got the Russell car too. The yeah, garage right. right now. Now the leader is coming in. So Tom Sargent ends the lane here at the end of lap 107, right on the braking marker. So the Tegra Australia BMW comes in. His pit box is not too far down the lane. And in he comes. Cameron Hill. At least we got to see his gloves working in the last <laughs> hour. He's got the brightest pair of gloves in pit lane for the final stint. Great, just, great sport. Yeah, yeah, Bruce, Bruce, yeah. Saw a couple of teams further down the lane push him off originally to get him back down to the pits. You've got to feel for one side is in the box seat. These guys were doing the chasing. It's just heartbreaking to watch that shot on the right-hand side. How's the presence of mind of the youngster, Tom Sargent, pulls up beautifully in the box. No uh, no nervousness around it, Matt. He's, he's, he's got out nice, cool, calm and collected. This is a good stop so far. His, his, this is to Richard's point. Tyres for car 147. Slate on Conrod. He's just gone through the second intermediate and it's been the fastest for that car for the race. And there is the Car Mods Australia BMW into the final corner. So this will be a lead change with the race cleansed and run to the flag. But there'll be a tyre advantage. They've got the time to burn. It's a compulsory stop. They can do this. They have to do it really because they've got to have something to fight because they're going to be behind on track position. So Tim Slade officially goes to the lead. Go, go, go is the word. Everyone needs to be over the line before they can get the car out of the line. There goes Cameron Hill, pit stop done. Nice work by the CHE team. But they're gonna give up about 30 seconds in track position. But with that caveat, fresher tires. And probably a faster car from what we've seen over the course of the race. Here's Percat. He's got O'Keefe two seconds behind him right now as well. D Dylan O'Keefe is driving out of his skin yeah. at the moment. This is a huge stint in the Merc. So there's the rejoin. So for third on the road. And Percat just does the fastest lap of the race for that car. 227.47. And the margin is 51 seconds to Tim Slade. So it's about 20 seconds more than I thought it would be. So track position has paid off for car number eight, Molly Taylor. Just to add a little bit more uh, drama into it, that car number eight of Brad Carr and Tim Slade took a little bit extra time with the, with the refuel, and that's because an airlock that they're having in the fuel system. So taking a bit longer to fuel, but also not able to completely fill the tank due to that airlock. So that's going to get a bit interesting a bit later on. Current calculations by the guys there reckon that uh, at, at their predicted rate, they're going to end the race with minus 900 uh, mils. Oh. So, so uh, oh. yeah, let's let's watch that space. Well, that's good that pick up, big Molly Taylor. Well, well done, Molly Taylor. Oh, so right. So Tim Slade now has got 51 seconds of a race lead. So he's now going to go in fuel conservation mode. Surely, lift and coast into the corners, and maybe a safety car will help if car 15 doesn't get out of the way on the run up to Griffin's Bend. But this will close the race right up. 
if we go yellow. Race control's been really good today in letting cars try and sort their own issues out. There's a fuel drama in car number eight. They don't believe they can make it to the finish on what they've got now. A safety car will help them. Cameron Hill, good to go to the end. Fresh right-hand side tyres on car 147. Nick Perkat doesn't have the freshest tyres, but he's Nick Perkat and he's fired up and he's in third place and he's in pretty good shape. So this is all building and behind them all, Dylan O'Keefe driving one of the best endurance races he's ever driven, I think but still got a pit stop to do in that A45 AMG. And the car's still parked there, still no notion of a, a or it's not looking like a safety car just at this point. Wouldn't that make things really interesting? I'll tell you, the team at Car 8 will be pushing for it. Well, but I mean, the, the other, the flip side to that argument, Matt, is it then closes up Cameron Hill and Nick Perkett to them. He's got the fresher tyres. He's got the fresher tyres. Yeah. So it's not as straightforward as saying, that, you know, that'll help us from an economy standpoint. You, you, yeah. you're, you're absolutely bang on. But this is what we want, though. It's going to happen. The safety car has been called. So Jesse got to the top of the mountain. The safety car has been called with 54 minutes remaining in the race. Well, it's not the end of the day for Tim Slade and Brad Carr because they'll save fuel. Under safety car, they'll make some fuel. But they give up 50 seconds. And Hill's on pressure, pressure rubber. Tires. So they, I mean, this is yeah. what makes it fascinating. It so. levels, levels the playing field, doesn't it? So Slade's going to have to draw on all of that experience. The other question mark for mine is Nick Perkat, who was only seven seconds behind Tim Slade uh, and was going along very quickly. So it brings car one right into this race. I really love what they've done with car number one. He's dead set a carbon copy of how they ran their race last year. The driver stints almost line up identically to how they run it with uh, Shane Van Gisbergen in, in 2021 to win the race. And yet half the amount of safety cars. Yeah. But as you say, it was a, a system, a, a strategy, a play that worked for them last year. So they've plugged it back in for 2022. And they're in with a good shot of a podium here this afternoon, but the field will be neutralized. We'll bunch up here. Oh, Bathurst, never change, Bathurst. It continues to deliver drama at the end of the big Enduros at this place. And more this year with a shootout coming your way, the final hour of the high-tech oil Bathurst six hour. Here's how it's played out. Hour five was a beauty, lots of strategy hit stops and a bit of drama as well. Sun starting to set here at, uh, at the mountain and a bit has played out in our penultimate hour, Matt Nolte. This was the Mustang getting unloaded and worth cutting. It would return to the racetrack after this run up there facing the wrong direction. We've seen cars do that over the years and not survive, have we? We've had a few. <laughs> well, here's another one today and unfortunately the RCF has at this point and also at worth cutting had some lucky escapes it was look at this here the yeah. baby car entry hits the Scirocco round it goes Perkat coming through the background of this shot here he oh. is oh. the first time you've seen that it shot is, it is. <laughs> oh my goodness me live reactions from Greg Rask I'm going to back join time. you and yes. then, then this then this Entered the lane for scheduled service, stops at pit entry. Their pit box is right at the other end here at Mount Panorama. It's been an exhausting day for the crews. That's inside. Is that the go-kart yeah. go-crew, I think? So they push that car all the way up pit lane. We're under safety car again going into the final 51 minutes. Here's the state of play. Car and Slade, top of the pops, but Sergeant and Hill with Cameron at the wheel on fresher tyres. It's going to close that field right up. We've got a couple of other standout performers in Dylan O'Keefe, fourth outright, leading class A1. And if anything happens to those guys, he could, he's in pit lane at the moment, he could challenge for a podium, an outright podium. Forget the times that you saw at the top there, that's going to be back to zero. It's going to take a look at your complete leaderboard here. Of all 60 plus cars that have started the race here today at Mount Panorama with the safety car out and under 50 minutes to go here in the high tech oils Bathurst six hour. We promised a big final hour, it's coming our way. Here are the class leaders coming into it, obviously, Karen Slade at the top in our class X, the ultimate performance class. Sheer Gold O'Keefe and Shannon leading 
in the A1 class. Quinn and Daniel leading class A2. That would be a big result. Oh, I'm scared for that podium. <laughs> if Mark Mallard is on the podium this afternoon, that'll be worth the price of admission. And we've got a special little story here at, uh, at the mountain this weekend, haven't we? At the start of today's race, we saw the Hyundai safety car leading the field around, flying a green flag. Well, that green flag has travelled the world and will end up at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the 29th of May this year to start the 106th running of the Indy 500. You'll see it all live at Break Free and on demand on Stan Sports. Cannot wait for that. The greatest race in the world, and we look forward to Will Power and also Scott McLaughlin, who's doing amazing things. And just to reiterate, uh, 18,422 people have joined us here at Mount Panorama over the course of the three days of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour, and that is a record attendance for this event. So great to see so many people back enjoying the racing here at Mount Panorama. And how could you on a day like this? It's been magic, it's still 22 degrees. We're entering that time, like yesterday, Rusty, where the TCR cars are out on the track for their final race and how quickly the track can drop off. We've got to worry about shadows, we've got to worry about sun glare, and worry about the coldness kicking in too. Well, that temperature is actually a little blessing for turbo cars. They love it, Matt. They, they revel in these sort of moments. So. 49 minutes remain in, in this race, less in fact, so just keep an eye on that safety car and when we go green once again here, the Cabbages have found themselves in sixth outright at the moment and we saw them in pit lane before, I think they were putting fresh rubber down the driver's side of that car as well, the right hand side we believe will get another lap at least under safety car. The Elleries have had their challenges today, they too have got a five second penalty but they find themselves seventh in the order ahead of Grant Denya and the Barquanas in that Audi TT are in the top ten. So Keith returns to the track, he pitted under yellow fourth position outright in the last car on the lead lap now so he'll chase the tail of the field here Tony Dees just in 12th as well so Tony D'Alberto who is at the wheel of the Honda Civic Type R leads the Super Jeep Board of Australia TCR Series and in that Commodore that he's sharing with a good mate, 12th outright at the moment. In the lane too, I should point out, he's come in. The longer this safety car goes, the happier Tim Slade will be. Because they make feel that saving an enormous amount, cruising around at 60 to 80 kilometres an hour. They were short, they were out on their feet. This could be the thing that helps them towards a victory. Oh. But it's also bought oh. Hill. Oh! Everyone checking up on pit straight, and they're still doing it. So, something's happened down towards turn one. Why are they all compressing or slowing up? Is that a glare issue? No, it, someone must be going slowly. And you can't overlap under safety car, pass under safety car. There were several cars we saw in our window yeah. doing it at the same time there. It's a, it's a motorway style yeah. concertina, isn't it? Here's what happened. That'll get your attention. Whatever's happened up in front of these guys here, why did it all compress to the bottom left of your screen and then oh. everyone checks up? Oh. oh, what's that? Contact, that Evo, the 77? And it was Russell that saw a car coming behind him there and just pulled out the last second to let him go by. And I reckon the Elleries as well. Oh, yeah. Great presence of mind by both of those guys. They were watching the mirrors. You could see them. Oh, man, this is so busy. And this was Nick Percat's view. Everyone just... We're getting three or four glances yeah. at the rearview mirror. Can't, I can't see up in, in front what has forced them to slow or made them slow. I don't think Nick can see what's going on no. in front either. Let's go down to the lane. One of the heartbreaking stories of the last 20 minutes or so was the story of car 58 and Molly's found Aaron Russell. Yeah, Aaron Russell running out of fuel. Luckily, well, unlucky, but luckily just a pit entry. What happened? Yeah, I think we might have a little pickup issue going on. We probably should have got another three laps out of it and got a warning going up Mountain Straight. She ran out down Conrad, so devastated. I put my heart and soul into that stint. Um, the car was, that car was capable of a low six, so it, it was getting better and better and better as the stint went on. And you know, I was actually really, I didn't want to get out of it. I felt really good in the car and. I just feel bad for all the guys that put so much effort in and to, to come up that short, that that half a lap that we needed, it's it's just gut-wrenching. But you know, I'm re really proud of all the guys and Dad and Drew. They've done such a good job. So I'm gutted, don't get me wrong. My heart's been ripped out of my, my chest right now. But 
Yeah, what do you do? That's motor racing. Yeah, we're all feeling for you. Fastest lap, still holding fastest lap of the race. The pace was incredible. Speaking of your amazing crew, I think they're having a well-earned rest, maybe back there and back here. But how, how cool was that? Long push uphill all the way to get you here. I know. I, I asked for recruitment to come and take over, but it's too hard with the rules. And you see all the guys lying on the ground dead. I mean, they put their heart and soul in this. I'm just, it's just gutting, but that's motorsport as it is. Hopefully safety car, you can move up a, a few, but uh, hard luck. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Red eyes and a little choked up there, Aaron Russell, I think. Now, we're trying to get to the bottom of this. We wonder if it's just the afternoon setting sun and, and uh, whether people slowed up with difficulty vision-wise or if it's something else. That it, I thought it would have to be something more, more serious. And what's happened here at the top of the mountain? Oh, I'm not sure why the Evo was blazing past everybody there. The, the sun behind them. There, yeah. yeah. So it's not an issue heading west. Uh, correction, east, back towards Sydney, pointing to the Blue Mountains there. It's a strange one. Regardless, uh, we're going green this time by. It's just another thing drivers have to deal with at Mount Panorama. The safety car's in the chase, and these cars still negotiating oh. the Ford Ranger elbow, and the Holloway Toyota Celica has got a lot of smoke coming out the front of that car. Hopefully they can get that down the hill to pit lane. Safety car sprinted away. Tim Slade has got track position. He's got time up his sleeve. Has he got enough fuel? Have they saved enough under this safety car to get them to the end in 42 minutes of racing? He's got the advantage and he picks it early. He goes early. And he's got lap cars between him. Couple peeling off into pit lane. Green flag, we're back underway at the mountain for a sprint to the finish. Slade clear in front. We wait for the next car to cross the line. It's nine seconds. Cameron Hill trailed by Nick Perkett. Nothing between those two. So the battle on for second and third. And the lap cars did a massive solid for Tim Slade there. Bought him a lot of time. Because even if you're a lapped car, you cannot be passed until you get to the control line. So Slade read that playbook perfectly and accelerated away early. There's Percat, middle of screen, 147, that's Cameron Hill. That's just the battle for the race lead. A little bit of traffic works in Tim Slade's favour. Margins now nine seconds. Back to Cameron Hill and Nick Percat as they weave their way through this traffic. hearing from pit lane as well that the 147 car had more time up their sleeve in terms of fuel so there was never a fuel question mark over the Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent entry they were going along very very nicely so they had heaps of flexibility when it came to that final pit stop they're getting absolutely robbed by traffic here at the moment across the top and Cameron just being really cautious in picking his way through but of course Percat's got to do the same in car number one Nick's waited there, hasn't he, as they cross the top of Skyline. I think he might have cleared one of those cars, but trapped behind the Subaru at the moment. Super cheap auto dipper. Cameron can't quite clear the Evo just yet. Now he gets by. He's in a hurry, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh! Pressing on much. Slade has just set. He's on for his best lap of the motor race and potentially the fastest lap of the race. So they're either going, hang the fuel, we're going to go as fast as we can. He had his hand out the window then. I don't know what the, bit of a, yeah, what a bit the of message a, was. A gesture. And that's the flasher on the indicator store. So letting the Evo know. Did a nice job to get out of the way there. 250k into the kink. Percat 1.8 seconds behind Cameron Hill. Slade out to 10.4 seconds. He's got clear racetrack out in front. He's been very good across the course of the lap. And it's the fastest lap of the race. Tim Slade is going for it. Pressing on in the race lead. Might get Molly to get onto that for us and whether they feel that safety car has given them enough. It should have given them enough to go to the flag. But will there be any compromise in that? Is there any, any you know, uh, conservation economy required for Tim Slade at the moment? It doesn't look like it. He is going for it with the quickest lap of the race. 2 minute 27 one seven. The other variable is car 147's got better rubber. They put two new MRF tyres on the right-hand side. 
Why the right hand side you ask? Well that's the loaded side of the car on all of the high speed stuff from the cutting all the way to the floor ranger elbow. It's where you want the grip, it's where you want a new tyre to work for you. So we'll watch the sector times for you. This car should be really good across the top. There's the worth cutting. It's a visual ID of where we are. Tim Slade to Cameron Hill. And Nick Perkat will loom in the distance behind them too. This is set up for a grandstand finish at Mount Panorama. 9.4 seconds, so the, the gap has not, in fact, it's just under nine seconds now. So Hill is charging fastest first sector we've seen. He's responding to Tim Slade here. Let's go to pit lane, Molly. Quickly, quickly grab Shane and Rob away from the screens, as you can imagine, on the edge of your seats. I mean, that moment from Nick, what, what went through your head? Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> it was unbelievable. It, was, it wasn't even tissue paper. There was contact. But I was just so happy to see he had steering. But you can see he made four decisions in a split second, and, you know, that's... That's what a pro can do, but amazing stuff. Yeah, it hasn't been an easy run for you guys, but uh, it's all starting to, to come together. So uh, what are your thoughts so far? Oh, we're still, we're, we're at the pointy end. There's still 35, 38 minutes to go. Anything can happen, production car racing like this. We lived through it last year. We'll see what happens this year. And no doubt Shane Van Gisbergen's on the couch uh, fe feeding uh, well, notes. Yeah, yeah. And, any words for Gizzy? <laughs> No, we miss him, but you know what? It's fantastic. Last year, this year, just fantastic. Did he have any thoughts of that moment? Uh, yeah, he did. He, he said, said he thought uh, he said Nick pulled his finger out actually straight after it because he, he got his, had his best lap. So, so he said he must have woken him up. Woke him up. All right. Well, best of luck while you get back to it. Thanks, Thanks very much. All sorts of nervousness down here with Tom Sargent at the moment. Big cheer from this team. Purple in the first sector there by Cameron Hill. He's pushing on physically. That was a mammoth stint by you. Outstanding drive. How are you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it was a definitely a big stint. Um, towards the end, I was definitely feeling it, starting to cramp up in the upper shoulder and then starting to get blisters on my feet from all the heat through the floor. So definitely hurt, but um, you know, I did the best I could and hopefully I put the team in a pretty good position for Cameron to come home strong. So, Talk us through the strategy of it. You decided to go with the tyres down the right-hand side. That safety car, big cheers in this garage when that came out as well, compressing the field. Yeah, for sure. So we, we tried our best to save our best tyres for the end. So we banged two greens on um, Cameron on the right-hand side. So he's good to go for the finish. And um, I, if there's anyone out there that can do it, it's Cameron for sure. So we're, we're, we're all cheering him on here, but I've got up, utmost confidence in him. What about the nerves? He had to unpick a few cars across the top of the mountain. There's a bit of sliding going on. It's nerve-wracking because we've only got just over 35 minutes left. Yeah, it was. I, I was on pretty bad tyres when I had to try and manage, so it was very hard to try and pick the cars off and you know, try and get all the good lap time as well and, and keep a gap. So it was hard, but we you know, a bit of patience and a little bit of good luck and it kind of ended up getting past them pretty quickly. Well, Tom, you were a class winner last year. You're on track at the moment. You're riding the hunt for an outright win. Sit down, relax, and we'll catch up with you again. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Brad car, it was a pretty tense few laps and then the safety car came out, gave you a bit of buffer, so you guys are okay on fuel now? Yeah, we'll make it to the end on our fuel. Um, obviously, yeah, the safety car sort of lost that 52 second lead, which, um, which we were quite happy with, so yeah, it's going to be a race now. We'll see what Tim's got. Tim's definitely uh, hammering it down now. What's, what's the feedback back to him? Keep pushing as hard as he can or at what point are you going to sort of temper that a little bit? No, no, push as hard as he can to the end. I think, I mean, We've got a disadvantage against the M2. It's a lot lighter than we are, so it's um it's a it's a really quick car. So we love to um we have to race him. All right, fingers crossed. Thank you. Gaps down to 5.4 seconds between Slade and Cameron Hill, and Richard, that last lap, which may even be bettered here by Cameron Hill, did we crack new territory there? Is that a record? That is a new lap record. 2:25.11. Cameron Hill. He's going even quicker this time by. He is scything lap time out of Tim Slade. Nick Perkat's trying to go with him. He's setting personal bests. Lap time check. Slade, 227.3. Cameron Hill, 224.7. Breaks the lap record again. Margin 4.5 seconds now. Perkat, 226.8. Personal best lap for that car for the race, but it's not in the same ballpark as Cameron Hill, the reigning Porsche Carrera Cup champion, driving out of his skin with fresh MRF tyres down the right-hand side of his BMW M2. The race is energised with 33 minutes to go. That's <laughs> month watching on in pit lane. Not happy about us. Only the camera on us, sorry. <laughs>
got to capture a bit of that emotion, the nerves. Just over half an hour remains in this one. Closing in on Tim Slade at a rate of knots. Was 4.2 seconds, looks even closer than that now as they exit worth cutting. Perkhan just set his fastest lap of the race, but he's 11 seconds away from these guys ahead. So the gap visually closing is down to 3.8 seconds. Across the top of Mount Panorama we go. You should see the number eight car mods BMW in the next shot when they come down the mountain. Slade's responded, personal best first sector for the race, Paracat too. They are driving the wheels off these things. It's great to see the quality of these drivers. They are driving them extremely hard. After five and a half hours of motor racing on Easter Sunday, the shadows grow longer around Mount Panorama as the CHE engineering team watch on. They won the Carrera Cup Championship last year. They've won the Australian Formula Ford Championship. They've built a really good little racing organisation from their camera base. And the margin now 3.3 seconds. Slade, personal best middle sector. He's on to set another PB, 115 laps into the race. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to hold out car 147. Into the chase they come. Perkett's had a, a good first sector, pretty reasonable across the top. Now it's 2.3 seconds. Cameron Hill to Tim Slade. He's coming. The view on the right of your screens inside both the respective pit bunkers. <laughs> he still did a 24 8 at the last lap. <laughs> That's a 10th off the lap record. No, good. Nick Perkat sets another PB in car number one, but they just don't have the raw speed to go with this BMW M2 competition. Well, after years of domination from the M3 and the M4, another type of BMW looks like the mousetrap to have when it comes to production car racing at Mount Panorama. Whoa, out on the white line, he is driving hard into turn two how's the composure of tom Sargent in that interview before as well brilliant stuff production cars going waves at bathurst it was the mazda rx7 in the early 1990s in the bathurst 12 hour when that returned in 07 it was the bmw 335 then the evo lancer and those cars were still good in the early days of this race as cameron hill slides his car under the mrf bridge at reed park but BMW have dominated since the return of this race in 2016 and in recent years the M3 and last year the M4 have been uncatchable. That was Aaron McGill and John Bow, the birthday boys. JB yesterday, Aaron today, happy birthday. They had to replace a starter on that car earlier so that's why they dropped down the order. A shame for the Ranger team but Cameron's there. He's within sight of Tim Slade. In a weird sort of irony, the safety cars probably saved them to get to the finish on fuel, but it cost them 50 seconds. Yeah. And it cost them all the track position. And Slade is still pushing extremely hard. Another PB middle sector. That car's never gone faster across the top than it did just then, but it's not enough to hold out Cameron Hill. He's within striking range now, and a pass feels all but inevitable. Within the final 30 minutes, of what's been a compelling high-tech oils about the six hour. How much pace does this M2 have? Under brakes, less than a second. The nerves. Brad Carr watching on. It's inevitable. That's what he's worried about. But Slade is throwing everything that he has in the skill set, in the toolbox at this. Down to the final corner. 30 minutes remain, just under, in this race. It's a straight-out shootout on Sunday afternoon. Great drive out the final corner. Slade will cover his line into Hell Corner. He'll breathe for another straight. 1.1 k's of mountain straight in the run up the hill to Griffin's Bend. But there's a massive grip advantage in car 147. It's got two brand new tyres. And it's going to be the difference today. They'll get to some lap traffic. It could play a role. It could buy Slade a little bit of time. They've cleared both of them now on the way to Griffin's Bend. It was two seconds quicker, but forget the lap times. He's right on the bumper of the car mods, number eight BMW, Brad Carr and Tim Slade as they climb towards Worth Cutting. More traffic ahead. 
flashing the headlights. It's game on here with 30 minutes remaining. Behaviour of the Slade car into turn two suggests that there was nothing left in it. Absolutely at the maximum point of braking for that car. So desperately trying to fend off Cameron Hill here. Blue flags being waved to let the slower competitors, the lap competitors know that some fast cars are on approach. Oh, they come across the Mazda at the worst possible moment on the run into a 170 kilometre an hour corner at McPhillamy Park. Slade breathes on, there's no room to pass there. How's everybody's nerves by the way? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> I'd rather be up here than be Tim Slade though. But he's so experienced now, he's a seasoned pro, he's one of the best drivers around. He's good for this, but I don't think he's got the tools to do the job at the moment, purely on tyre condition. Look at Hardy is pushing that car, it's sliding around through the entry, middle and exit of the corner. And Cameron right in the toe. The lap traffic does the right thing and stays driver left. It's got to be the chase, surely, for Cameron Hill. Slade's going to make him work for it, isn't he? So into the chase they come. Parks the car mid-track. It's not easy for Cameron to dive down the inside there, but he carries good speed through the chase. Maybe another look down into the final corner. Car length between them. Good drive out of that, that turn by Slade. And Hill can't quite do it there. Great driving from Tim Slade. He is on the ragged edge in car number eight. It shouldn't be going this quickly. But somehow he is holding off Cameron Hill. Is the move coming at turn one into the setting sun? He holds on for another turn. He will draw this out as long as he can. There's always a chance at Mount Panorama. Their lap times in the previous lap were separated by one thousandth of a second. <laughs> Tom Sargent. We're sorry, we got you, mate. We got you. Busted. The nerves. And again. Tim Slade at turn two. We'll see if Hill can put a move on here at Worth Cutting. I was just doing a lap time check on Nick Perkat and he's just hit the same traffic that they have. Oh. oh, at the cutting, at the cutting, no way. It doesn't happen there. He really thought about it, Cameron Hill, but backed out of it at the last minute. Oh, wow. He is eager to clear Tim Slade. And Slade is saying, absolutely no way. You're finding this hard to watch. I am. <laughs> You're a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You'll sleep well tonight, Krause. Slade still holds him off at the top of the mountain, down into the S's. Super Cheap Auto Dipper is next on the hit list. The two BMWs now have 11 seconds. Back to Nick Perkat. Remember, he's got some time to be added at the end of the race, so... He's going to have to settle for third. What we don't know is when this pass is going to happen because Slade is absolutely having one of his best days out in a long time. The attitude from Cameron Hill's car coming out of the Ford Ranger elbow to opposite lock. You mentioned those gloves before, Matt, and they were working very, very hard. The three of us have been very fortunate to follow the career of both of these two young guys. And Slade is still a young guy for all of their racing careers. And they're just two outstanding blokes as well as being terrific racing car drivers and they are just performing at such an outstandingly high level at the moment it's a joy to watch and whatever the result it will be so well earned today another Bathurst Classic coming down to the last few laps 24 minutes on the clock thus far touch wood Five and a half hours in, some very good driving by the lap competitors as these two come through. So we head toward turn one and again, oh, Hill. <laughs> How's the aggression from Cameron Hill? He looked left and right, almost as though he was struggling to pull that thing up. He's got pace, he wants to use it, but he cannot get by Tim Slade at this point just yet. Terrific stuff from Tim Slade. Look yeah. at him. Weaving left and right. Cameron's got the blinkers on. He's flashing the lights. There's no way Slade falls for any of that nonsense. He's not looking in his rearview mirror. He'd have that tilted down right now. Just needs a little <laughs> moment of calm, doesn't it? You don't want an incident 
It's got pace. You've got 23 minutes to go. Keep at it and find the right moment. Love the fact that Slade has just been unrelenting in this fight. He's like a boxer who just keeps getting back up, doesn't he? Will not quit. And that's all good for you watching live here on stand. Final 23 minutes of this race. Lap competitor doesn't make things easy for them across the top of the mountain. Slade, he needs to keep it parked mid-track. Uh, the, uh, the Mini, rather, is there. Well, now they're through. Oh, it's an offshoot of the BMW brand, the Mini. It is. <laughs> Didn't do either of them any favours there. <laughs> Down the hill they go. Some Slade survives another three and a half Ks. This is exceptional. Brilliant racing. It's promised and it's delivering. That's what we love about the sixth hour. Down to Ford Ranger elbow. Slade parks it. Makes it almost impossible for him to line up a move, but tucks in behind the car mods number eight BMW. Down the straight we go. In the closing stages of this one, 22 and a half minutes to go. It's gonna be a very long 22 and a half minutes. So prior to that safety car, they thought they would be in the red in terms of fuel for Tim Slade. Safety car worked in their favor. Hopefully at this pace, at this pace, they have enough in the tank for him to keep going at these sorts of numbers with this sort of pressure. more lap traffic and just a little bit of breathing room and Cameron Hill taking no prisoners on the run into Murray's corner. Every lap that Slade holds on, every lap is vital. Cameron Hill down the inside at turn one for the race lead. There it is. There it is from last to first. He's got the run, but they'll go side by side. Slade's back in front. There's so much fight in this guy. There's the Car Mods Australia team watching on. That was a go-kart move, yep, wasn't it? Just absolutely. absolutely fired it up the inside. Awesome to watch, and Slade was having none of it. Responded with great drive out of turn one and regains the lead. So this is not over. So he had it for half a turn. The first bite at the lead in this final sector of the race. There's Percat. He's trying to get in touch with these guys. It's under 10 seconds now, but he's got the five second yeah. penalty. So we're sort of relishing the thought of him joining the mix, but there is a five second penalty. The aggression from Cameron Hill at the wheel. You can see those bright yellow gloves. He's wound up. He wants to clear Tim Slade, but the mission has just not been easy for him. I tell you what, guys, down here in the garage at the moment, the team, the email oh, is open. Oh, with, well, oh the top, side by top. side, no way! There's contact between the two of them! You don't pass at Brock Skyline! It doesn't happen! They've both come out the other side! That Cameron Hill's in front. Sorry, Stubbsy, but that was one of the biggest moments. Extraordinary stuff. Well, I've seen it all at this place now. <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> Brock Skyline. I'd love to believe you, but I don't. No. That's unreal. You, as you say, you just don't do that there. Cameron Hill with the move of his life to wrestle the lead away from Tim Slade with less than 20 minutes to go in the six hour at Brock's Skyline. Here it is. Oh, he was well alongside. Slade decided to take the shortcut there for safety's sake, but they went in wheel to wheel. And that's a reaction from the CAG engineering team. And Brad Carr's reaction from the other side. One loved it, one hated it. Classic Bathurst. A couple of people inside the Hill Garage here. I think I spotted Lockie Maneath, the TCR driver in there, and Cameron Crick's mum, Lisa, as well. So there's a good crew of people in there, but... He was with this team last year, with our Class D winners. Great point. Great point. Wow. The moment came. I thought that was going to happen a lot earlier than what it did. They couldn't run at that pace for another 20 minutes. And now it blows out to 2.2 seconds. 
Yeah, it was taking everything Tim Slate had just to stay in front. Joy to watch, though. Oh, wasn't it? Yes. The best place in the world, this, isn't it? Let's have another look at this. And they got such a good run across the top, Cameron Hill. And Slade just a little bit wide at the metal grate. Might have contributed pressure rubber on car 147. And it would have worked right here when they're tipping into McPhillamy Park. That extra grip really paid dividends for Cameron Hill. And here's the move. Oh. If you were on the radio as an engineer and you were talking to your driver about potential places to get it done, that is not one of them. That is not one. That's brave, brave stuff. Unreal. That's a... Uh, I know it. I know it in my heart. You can go to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just hope they were special tyres that he had on there. Well, they, they, are. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> Two brand new MRFs did the trick. And one of the best young drivers in Aussie motorsport at the moment. Fortunate enough to call all Cameron's career in Porsche Carrera Cup racing and his approach, it's methodical, it's measured. He's got the speed when it needs to be, but he's very consistent, very considered about the way he goes racing. Aggressive when he needs to be, but if he finishes second means he wins the round. He'll finish second, he'll get the points, to get the big trophy takes a pragmatic approach and it's been really interesting to see his development in Porsche racing especially and a very very high level in Australian motorsport. He selected a young man to join him yeah. of the same cloth of the same ilk very similar style and clearly learning from Cam in that regard. He's been so composed in and out of the car today it's been um, a very very impressive performance from Tom Sargent. And while that was happening at the front we should have given these guys a big shout out today too the Garth Ward Racing Prepared Mercedes heading down the hill here. Fourth outright and leaders in the A1 class. They're not going to make it onto the outright podium, but they're going to easily clean up class A1 here today. We talk of the car of Mike Sheargold, Dylan O'Keefe and Ollie Shannon with Sheargold behind the wheel. As the race starts to settle down in the closing stages of this thriller that's been the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour. Mike's on to set the car's yeah. personal best lap of the race here. And we were just talking about the performance that Dylan O'Keefe punched out in this car before. So this is a huge drive. And they've got quite a bit of track position over the next best A1 car further down the order, which is the Bargwaners. They're in ninth position, so there's a lap advantage. In fact, these guys are still on the lead lap of the race in an A1 car with a race with a lot of green flag running. This has been an enormous performance and well done to GWR and Ram. The other one I was going to draw your attention to was Tony Quinn Grant Denyer, not only eighth outright in this race, but in their A2 class, which you can see denoted by the, the yellow beside them on our totem. If you drop your way down the order, the next one in that class you've got to look to, 22nd, the McLeod entry. So they've done a, a ripping job in class and in outright terms, those two today. We heard from Grant Denyer and his dad, Craig, who's been in the sport for a very long time earlier today. He's one of the best broadcasters in the industry for a long time. Heavily involved in the pro car days, in production car racing. One of the architects of the immensely popular V8 Ute category that was such a wonderful part of our landscape for a long time. And he's so proud of Grant's racing and was so keen to see him get a big trophy. And Grant's had a, a really bad run of luck at this place in recent years. But this has been a really impressive performance and full credit to Tony Quinn, who's driven out of his skin today in car number seven, the local legends entry. They've paired up a lot, these two, and they make a really good combination. They have a lot of fun, but I said it earlier in the race, it's still pretty serious motor racing when they need to deliver. Bit of inspiration for those that enjoy or, or like the pony cars too. I wouldn't mind betting we'll see a few more of those on the grid at the Bathurst Six Hour next year. Eighth outright and leading your class, pretty handy. Agree with you. Hello to George Medici watching at home. Yeah. Hopefully they can <laughs> get on the grid and tip Marcus Ambrose out for another go as was planned this year. Marcus is here by the way with Gary Rogers Motorsport uh, working on their young driver program. Here's Matt Forbes Wilson. He's behind the wheel of the SSB Redline, the Class B leader. 
they've had a really solid day at the office. The Class B was reduced to just two cars, so just with the way that the entries flowed for this race, but still got to get to the finish, don't you? And you still got to beat the competition that's on hand. They're 15th outright. They've only dropped five laps. And remember, this is the stock standard SSV Commodore. It's not a HSV, just the six litre car. They have performed so really well today. And it's been a comprehensive performance by them. They're hopefully bring it home to get a, a class championship. Lots has, un, lots has uh, unfolded in this race. They've picked up 17 places from where they qualified. So it's that old adage, just chip away, just be there when it matters. At the end, we go and have a look at our class C leader, Jake Camilleri, who we caught up with earlier in the day. These guys have, it was a, a Herculean effort. I think at one point, were they in the 10 or just outside it? They were, they were doing a super job. Yeah, I think they ran as high as ninth earlier in this race. So that's a huge drive. They're 11th now, outright. So they're in front of Class B cars and they're in front of all bar one of the Class A2 entries as well in this little Mazda 3 MPS. This is a workhorse car. It's been around a long time, but it's extremely well developed. It's easy to drive over a distance. And Jake and Scotty Nicholas have driven together for so long that they understand each other and how these races work. Is this Class D or Class T? Full of Toyotas <laughs> and the odd Mini in the field as well. Mitch Wallop. Car 54, the leader of this class, back in 19th position. Eight laps behind our leaders, but the second place car in the category, not too far behind, in fact, in the closing stages of this race. This has been a really good performance for the B-Pro team. Brett Parrish, Jay Robotham, another of the young stars yep. in the sport, team from Queensland, put together for this weekend and executed nicely. There have been four different leaders in Class D today, so... It's been very, very competitive, but the Toyota ultimately, as it has on three of the five occasions before, has led the way in that class. Cool little car to drive as well, and, and fundamentally bulletproof around a place like Mount Panorama. And we look at the compact class and the McMaster entry there. We detailed a little bit earlier in the day the incident, unfortunately, for the, the teammates, the Suzuki Swifts, one having a little bit of trouble getting out of uh, the chase and was promptly hit by his teammate, his stable mate, as we see 171 yeah, entry. Johnson. Yeah. Great presence of mind to back it out of the way and it enables us to stay under green flag racing with uh, 11 minutes remaining. But I wonder what's happened there. It's the way up through Griffin's Bend as we go back to our outright leader, which served up a thrilling battle between he and Slade. Gaps out to nearly seven seconds and 224.7 the fastest lap and a new lap record here in the six hour and they're just going to enjoy the next 12 or so minutes of this race with a gap at seven seconds another 12 with that extra five for Percat so he's safe here Tim Slade in second position car headlights really taking effect now as the sun sets in the west it's dark out there yeah. isn't it with 10 minutes to go in this one the sunset's officially happened anyway to the west. Now we we'll get some really cool light to wrap up the day. We were delayed because of heavy fog. If you just joined our coverage in the last hour, that delayed the show by about 30 minutes. We had to squeeze in the warm up plus the Turtle Wax Trans Am and Super Cheap Auto TCR Australia final races of the weekend. And oh. now a car off, a car off here at the final turn. They're going to get out. On. It's the Subaru, it's the Schumacher Subaru. Oh, wow. That's the second off he's had on the lap because he also damage. went off. It's got damage on the right front too, so it has actually made contact with the wall. No rear view mirror either, so let's have a look here. They have been battling braking issues with oh. this car. Oh, that's a massive braking issue. It's braking. Look, oh, look, 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 look at this. Oh, wow. Oh. Prior to that, he went off at the top of Skyline and come up on our screens as well, so... That was the second part. Lucky, there's a big thick tyre wall down there. Back in the day, that was just a guardrail. Fourth in class and 13th outright, that team. So they've been pressing on. They've had a, a really solid day, game. yeah. Oh, nine minutes to go. You'd hang any brake issues, wouldn't you? And just circulate to get to the finish, surely. Guard is rubbing on that tyre, though, so that'll be another issue to contend with. Just limp at home, get it home. We're working lap 126, which is 
the second furthest we've ever gone into about a six hour, the race record of 131 laps. I'm not convinced we're going to get to that today, but we'll go a long way in, just on 800 kilometres of racing. And the six safety car interruptions, half of last year, which is excellent. A bit like calling a little race between Sydney and Brisbane, isn't it? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Same sort of distance. Don't do that, folks. No, please, by the way. <laughs> Come to Bathurst and enjoy it for real. So here's the leader. What more can we say? I mean, what a roller coaster ride it's been for Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent. Dad Colin Thrash to get this car built. It's been a massive project for them for the last six months and for a while it was a little bit in question, but they got it together and they're leading the race. Molly? Just a quick update on that BMW M135i of Paul Puccini, Brock Payne and Jet Johnson. Uh, gear linkage, so box full of neutrals there. Shame for that crew and for young Jet Johnson too. Fantastic to have the Johnson family here at the mountain. He's car in Trans Am looks amazing Jet Johnson so hopefully it's the beginning of some great stories for that young man at a place that was synonymous with his his dad and his race his, uh, his grandfather I should say in his racing career and even his own father Stephen when he came here how good is Australian motorsport right now though with the next generation of names coming through we had a really special time of our lives watching this great sport go around the country the legacies of the drivers of the past that we grew up with and now seeing sons and grandsons come out and race here at Bathurst. The future is very bright. It's, it's an addiction in a nice way that's sort of handed down through the generations, isn't it? And, it? and it's wonderful to see families all together across race weekend here. I mean, you can look at, at for example, I don't know, uh, the Mazda RX-8, the Shaw family. Lisa's here, Rick's wife, Rick's racing. There's some Toms driving, and there's lots of yarns like that right up and down this lane, let alone those working on the cars yeah, too, actually. exactly. You said that about the Russells, couldn't you, too, with Wayne was a privateer back in the 90s, and, of course, Drew and Aaron worked their way up through the ranks, finally into Super 2. This guy, we're going to hear a lot about, aren't we? On the way up towards the top of Griffins. We've heard a lot about this guy over the years too. Nick Perkat, who's 25 seconds away now from the guys, but ahead, but with five seconds still to be added, he'll safely finish ahead of the Garth Walden Racing Mercedes-Benz number five with Mike Sheargold behind the wheel. Still pressing on Nick He's Perkatt. ragging it, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> They just haven't quite had the car speed to go with not only the Cameron Hill car, but Tim Slade and Brad Carr as well. Probably the third fastest car of those remaining in the race. They've got that five second penalty hanging over them that will be added to their race time, but it won't affect their performance in terms of a result. They've got a big margin back to the sheer gold uh, GWR Mercedes AMG that's back in fourth place. So not a bad way to defend your title. Third place, backing up a win from the year before for Rob Rubison, Shane Smollen, and Nick Perkat roped in at the last minute and has done a stellar job, as you would expect. Russell's left to potentially wonder about the one that, that got away. Had that car not stopped on the entry to pit lane, they're in fifth at the moment with Drew Russell at the wheel. Maybe, just maybe, they were eyeing up a podium outright here today. The car seemed fast, didn't it? So they had to push it all the way up pit lane. They were, they were third. They were going to be third. Again, don't think they had the pace to go with these guys or Cameron Hill, but in terms of raw car speed, but certainly third place pace today for the Go-Karts Go entry. And Brad Carr, well, last year was a heartbreaking exercise for them because they were leading the race late again and were right in contention, but they had some issues with the right front. They had to make a pit stop and ultimately it cost them a shot at victory. What a bounce back it's been. They have executed superbly today. The rue the drive through, I think, for the pit stop earlier on. The safety car certainly cost them. They rolled the dice on strategy and it was marginal on fuel. So Bathurst giveth and Bathurst taketh away. They got, they got the fuel they needed, but they lost their track position and in a, a straight out shootout on a very, very fast car with two brand new tyres on the right-hand side. It was going to be a battle, but didn't Tim Slade fight for that? 
didn't he just extend himself beyond what perhaps the car was capable of to hold off Cameron Hill for as long as he could and it was thrilling to watch he spoke in a chat a little earlier about just the efforts of, of the team the work they've done on that car for this race in lieu of what happened last year that Richard was talking about so there are there are some positives for them to take away from this even if a win may escape them here oh man the build up to next year's race starts tonight soon as the chicken flag comes out the 2023 edition of the Bathurst six hour will raise the bar again when it comes to pro drivers and the quality of cars in the field but now Cameron Hill working his way down through Ford Ranger elbow gap is 8.6 seconds and just on three minutes remaining it's a pretty happy punters on the right hand side there <laughs> cheering the cars on oh Bathurst Goldfields great part of the world it's been spectacular this week the weather since we arrived on Wednesday has been absolutely picture perfect there's no place you'd rather be on an Easter long weekend in the central west of New South Wales this great city of Bathurst which is alive and well and the Mount Panorama circuit that year on year delivers just the most spectacular motor racing and another incredible chapter written into the history books this year the high tech oils Bathurst six out looking out of our window at the final turn the punters that have been here since nine o'clock they were fogged in this morning not one person has moved the tension still high down the 147 pits the Colin Hill engineering team it's up out and straight goes Cameron Hill here that fascinating battle you'll see that across socials no doubt about it one of the best battles we've seen here for a long time and ultimately this 147 BMW got the job done moved to the lead and is shutting this race down with the new lap record it may Krause just change the stats a little bit about winning from the front row as well maybe the furthest back a car has ever won the race maybe I said I certainly can't think in the history of this place anyone winning it from beyond 60th position <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened I wouldn't want to say it officially but uh, it's certainly one for the record books certainly for the six hour certainly for the 12 you have to delve a long way back into the Bathurst 1000 books to find something like this still dealing with traffic for the most part today remarkable and uh, we've got away with a few I think and Tony Alford who was in that red Mustang would probably agree with you and that incredible moment up through the kink of oh. the run to the cutting we thank them for the highlights replays yeah. that they've, <laughs> they've contributed to oh the the saves and the lucky moments and the fact that we've only had half the amount of safety cars I think shows just the quality of of some of the driving we've had today for the size of the field. If you wanted up and down this pit lane before the start of this race and asked people, most would have said, we're going to have a day littered with safety cars. So many cars, the potential for so many incidents, and that really did not unfold, Matt. So there been some in difficult moments, some good driving. Look at these kids on the side of the track there waving. Awesome stuff. That's my concern coming into this event. It's nothing to do with the driving standards. It's just having that many cars on the track at once. But well done to everybody today because this has been... A fantastic day of racing. And Cameron Hill working his way down to the DBA chase. One lap to go this time by. For the Tegra Australia, Cameron Hill Engineering, BMW M2 competition. A brand new race car this week, making its debut. The rotors glowing. Yeah. I just had word from the Schumacher oh. team, they're metal on metal. Oh. No pads left in the Subaru. Hence the moment down at Murray's corner. 6.213 kilometres left of Mount Panorama. 129 laps completed so far. So we'll go one within the record, the distance record. It's over 815 k's of racing. And there's just a few to go for what is one of the more remarkable victories. It's hard to summarise this massive performance. We say thank you to Greg Rust. He's off to host the podium. He's going to celebrate. It's his with favourite the, part of the day. It is. <laughs> because it's going to be a very boisterous podium after that. 
I'm looking forward to seeing Cameron Hill and Tim Slade discuss that move. 20-year-old Thomas Sargent, left of screen. 25-year-old Cameron Hill. They're both national racing champions in their young careers. And this little family-run team have built a monster BMW to put together a remarkable campaign in the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour. What a sight. On this, the final lap, the city of Bathurst and Kelso in the background. The quarries behind the back of the mountain here from this beautiful Pertac drone cam that's brought us some amazing pictures over the last two days of the high-tech oils Bathurst six hour. Just taking his time nice and easy. The marshals of which there's several hundred here this weekend applauding Cameron Hill as he works his way down into the Ford Ranger elbow on the last lap. Gap is at eight seconds. It matters not with just Comrade Straight, the DBA chase, and the final turn, Krause. Big day, and these guys have done it from as far back as possible here. In fact, right around the corner here at Mount Panorama. Sergeant makes his way to the wall along with the Colin Hill team. And here he comes down to the chase. This has been a mighty performance. Thomas Sargent and Cameron Hill. They had pole position robbed, taken from them for a technical infringement. But they have delivered in the most emphatic way after an incredible high-tech oils Bathurst six hour and 130 laps of Mount Panorama. Cameron Hill and Thomas Sargent go from 61st to 1st to claim the 2022 Easter Enduro Classic. What a performance. Tim Slade and Brad Carr across the line in second. They fought them the whole way. And Tim Slade, that is one of the better drives yeah. he has ever produced. And Nick Perk out across the line with Rob Rubis and Shane Smollen. They defend their win with third. And you wait for the emotion along this entire pit wall with all the cars crossing the lines in their respective classes today, of which we had seven. Everybody out of the pit wall. It doesn't matter whether you finished in first place or you're several laps down, Molly. What an incredible day. The feeling must be amazing down there. Oh, it's, it's goosebumps. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, you can see, we know how hard these, these guys have worked. We'll try and grab a word with Tom. Congratulations. A couple of weeks ago, you didn't think this was this was even on the cars, and then you took pole position in qualifying, then with the penalties starting from the back of the grid to first. No words. Well, I've got no words. Look, there's not many words I can say right now on camera, but I'll do my best. So oh, it's just unbelievable. Like you said, we weren't even going to be here a few weeks ago, and even when we knew we were going to be here, we just wanted to just run around and get some miles to the car, let alone a qualifying pole and, and have all those issues and then come from 63rd to 1st. That's unbelievable. It's just a credit to everyone that's involved there. The list of names of everyone who's made this possible is way too long. It's it's just crazy the amount of people that all come together to help us and uh, we're forever in their debt and we're so grateful. It's uh, we're awesome, awesome opportunity and we're on top of the world. <laughs> You've done a great job, as you say. You've had an incredible team working alongside you. In terms of, of your career highlights, where does this rank? Oh, this is pretty high for sure. Last year I come here, I had the Class D win, and we, we sat down, we're like, no, nah, we want to do outright. And to come here in your first year against all these, you know, well-represented teams, uh, that's just unbelievable, that's for sure. And a teammate and a mentor like Cameron Hill? Uh, yeah, a huge thanks to Cameron. He's, he's unbelievable on and off the track, you know. As much as I was nervous there at the end, I had... Uh, I. I probably have the most faith in him out of anyone else up this lane. So he's an incredible driver and, um, yeah, I can't think everyone enough. It's cool. Congratulations again. We'll let you go and get into some celebrations. Class D winner here last year. Did worry about Class C, Class B, Class A. <laughs> they went straight to the penthouse in Class X. And they are this year's High Tech Oils back for six-hour winner. And let the car do the celebrations as they come into victory lane just beneath our commentary position here where we'll crown our winners, our top three here today at Mount Panorama. What a drive from this guy, Krause. Incredible performance. He's the reigning Porsche Carrera Cup Australia champion. He showed why with a champion drive to claim one of the big Bathurst majors. And he celebrates with his team. The Tegra Australia outfit, they're a very close unit, family race team. There's his dad. Oh, that's a special moment. Colin has worked so hard on this car. There's mum watching on. Oh, this is so good. 
And the Bathurst winner celebration. Stubbsy's down there. He's amongst the action. One of the great Bathurst drives, Stubbsy. Krause, you are spot on. We have seen some epic chapters in the history of Mount Panorama. Cameron Hill, that is right up there with them. Pole taken off. He's starting from the wrong end of the grid. Six hours later, you are the victor in the 2022 High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. How good is that? Doesn't feel real. It's a dream come true. Tommy, come here. Man, this team has just been incredible. Tom has just been pulling massive hours in the shop to get this car ready, like all of us. And here we are in winner's circle. Oh, mate, I can't believe it. I tell you what, Tim Slade made you earn that. Across the top there, he was as wide as possible. That was gripping to watch. Yeah, Tim Tim made it as hard as he could for me. We had a tyre advantage, um, but I just had to be patient, you know. I, I could see it where I was strong. Um, and, yeah, Skyline, maybe that wasn't the first place I thought I was going to do the move, but uh, it was the place I did it. <laughs> What about this guy beside you? His performance across the weekend, you haven't put a foot wrong, neither has he. Nah, Tom's drive, uh, driven absolutely spectacularly. He, that pole lap, that obviously got taken off us. That was an insane lap. And, um, you know, the car, yeah, the car wasn't any slower today. So, um, no, nah, thanks. Outstanding. It is Easter. Happy Easter to you. You've got the main chocolates, the one that count. Enjoy this moment, both of you. Cheers. Thank you. Well done, Chris Dubbs. What a fantastic result as we take a look at the highlights of this amazing six hour that started at 11.45 here today at Mount Panorama. The field of 63 set sail for turn number one. And it didn't take long for the drum to start. Our pole sitting car coming to a stop here on pit straight. That flew by and early contenders out of the motor race. It was quite remarkable how the big dogs fell early. The McLeod Mustang was one of them in the fence and Cameron really didn't get to show his potential. This was the battle for the lead, and in just a few corners, Tom Sargent plays his way to the front. Went from fourth to third. There were mechanical DNFs, a lot of single car incidents that you often get in this race. There were some near misses. We got away with so many today, including the go-karts go-car. This was incredible. That car drove away from a crash on the run into the Worth cutting. And this at the dipper. The Lexus managed to make it back to pit lane, and we didn't go safety car there either. 130 laps completed. We're about to see the wildest moment, though. Maybe, though, compared to the pass oh. for the lead, but that was incredible, Nick Perkett. Yeah, he got outdone, sadly. Yes. That was cool to that point. Probably not so for Perkett. This was the hard luck story. The go-karts go-car stopping at the top of the pit lane. The Russells having to push that car out of contention. But this was it. This is one for the ages between the two BMWs. So Hill got him. It was a great run, but slayed out, dragged him up the hill. And then this, just the full send. Absolute maximum commitment at Brock Skyline. I reckon Brock would be proud of that move. He would have loved every bit of it. The king of the mountain. That was remarkable. Metal on metal, brake rotor on pad for the Schumacher car that would limp home. And that was the checkered flag moment for Cameron Hill and Thomas Sargent to win the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour and add their name to the list of greats to have won a Bathurst Enduro. And that's how it finished. Sergeant Hill, the winners of this year's High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. Karen Slade home for second. And Spoll and Rubis and Perkat on the podium there in Class X in third. Sheargold, O'Keefe and Shannon. Big shout out to those guys today. They're the winners in Class A1. Back to the Russells. They're the big story of the day, aren't they? Back there in fifth position. Tony Quinn and Grant Denyer. He's won a Bathurst Enduro. Grant Denyer will get a trophy with Tony Quinn. The local legends team did a great job. Jake Camilleri and Scotty Nicholas win Class C. That's an enormous drive. And B Pro Racing, Brett Parrish, Mitch Wooler, and Jay Robotham get home 18th outright in a Class D car. And they win their category in the Toyota 86. They loved it, didn't they? They have the pace of Fitzgerald, Benell, and Zarafos back in 23rd position. Great jobs to the McGarry's and Wanzek. They changed an engine here on Friday night. Great result there back in 28th position down to Forrest and Rasm in 30th spot. And you'll find the Class E winner there in 34th outright, McMaster and Worrell. The Mazda 3 has done the job in a great battle to the end with the Swift Sport getting on the podium. So they wanted a podium. The Suzuki team, they got there in the end. They got two of their three cars home into the Bathurst top three. Start to see some of the cars that retired late in the race and then now page of DNFs. I thought it'd be a lot longer than that, but some big names dropped out early in this year's High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour at Mount Panorama. 49 finishes, the second most 
in the history of this race. Second furthest distance, attendance record, and an incredible motor race. And that just reaffirms the class winners we were just talking about. Sergeant Hill, of course, won their category as well as winning the race outright. That, it's a giant killing performance from the AMG team. Ram and GWR will be through with that. Ollie Shannon, Dylan O'Keefe and Marty Shegold. Mike Shegold, I should say. Let's go and celebrate this one. Greg Rust is on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the trophy presentation for the 2022 High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. We congratulate all teams that finished today's race and pay a very special thanks to our volunteers for their invaluable efforts this Easter at Mount Panorama. Now, please welcome the top three outright finishing teams to the podium. In third place today for Prestige Connects, Shane Smolin, Rob Rubis and Nick Perkett. In second place, we welcome to the podium for Car Mods Australia, Brad Carr and Tim Slade. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be generous in your applause for winners of the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour for 2022 for Tegra Australia. Give it up, Cameron Hill and Tom Sargent. Now to present our third place trophy today, we welcome Councillor Robert Taylor, the Mayor of the Bathurst Regional Council. We thank Robert and the team from the Council for their ongoing support here. Now to present the second place trophy, we welcome the CEO of MRF Tyres Australia, Mr Vivek Bonasami. And now it gives us great pleasure to call upon Mr. George Gambino, CEO of High Tech Oils, to present our winning trophy. <laughs> Drivers, congratulations. What an epic addition of the six hour. The podium is yours. What a way to end a spectacular day here at Mount Panorama. Congratulations to Cameron Hill and Thomas Sargent. An incredible victory. Brad Carr, Tim Slade, and of course, Shane Small and Rob Rubis and Nick Perkett up there on the podium as well. It's a very, very special celebration at the end of six hours of racing, 130 laps, more than 815 kilometres. We have trekked throughout the course of this race. The High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour has delivered again in the last 30 minutes. I mean, it was a crazy start. Obviously, we had a delayed start earlier this morning with the fog, but that last 30 minutes of that race was as exhilarating as you're going to get around here. Molly Taylor, Chris Stubbs with me. Oh, we were we were watching in the garages and you could hear a pin drop. It was just everybody on the edge of the seats and see when those moves were on, the, the garages were then erupting and, and it was just an incredible moment to witness. The drama started from the moment we got to the track this morning with that pole taken away for the ride height infringement. And we said at the time, it's a long way, six hours, they've got time to work their way back. We had cars dropping left, right and centre in that first half an hour like we've never seen before. And the favourites too. And as you said, a finish that went down to the last handful of laps. Record crowd, you couldn't ask for any more. It's not bad when you're 25 years old and 20 years old respectively and you say, you know what, we just won Bathurst outright. And you know what, we did it from 63rd on the grid. We've gone all the way through the field and we've celebrated a historic victory here at Mount Panorama, uh, Panorama. It's been an exhilarating day, a fantastic day, and these celebrations will continue late into the night. They were here last year, they won Class yep. D and said, that's not good enough for us, we're going the whole way. And even the fact that they didn't know that they would make it here. The midnight oil has been burned by that 
team. That's a new car, the M2, that they've turned around very quickly and made it super speedy. And hats off to them, Molly. And, and how was the battle also with Brad Carr, Tim Slade? Those yeah. laps by Tim Slade were just I incredible. They really put everything out there and huge congratulations to them as well. So that's the end of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. It's certainly not the end of the Speed Series right here on Stan Sport. We will head off to Sydney Motorsport Park, May 28 and 29. We've finished in the dark here this <laughs> evening. We'll be finishing in the dark under lights on Saturday night at Sydney Motorsport Park. So round two also of Shannon's uh, Motorsport Australia Championship. That is the fourth round of the Speed Series and we'll have full coverage for you right here on Stan Sport. So don't miss it. Congratulations to everybody involved across all of the categories. Our thanks, of course, to the Bathurst City Council, always putting on a great show. To the volunteers, to the crowds that have turned up, to everybody who's put all the effort in to make this high-tech oils Bathurst 6 Hour what it's been today. We say thank you. On behalf of the entire Stan Sport crew, I'm Matt White. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next time for round four of the Speed Series in Sydney.